near you. Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on this glorious Saturday morning. Look, I've got my friend with me. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Anyway, this is going to be on with um, Mark Francis at nine o'clock. We're doing this beautiful apron. Um, I've got the cave design wall behind me and I'm going to show you how to use that at 10 o'clock. So that's going to be fun, isn't it? That's really cool. And we've got some cave fabrics as well. Um, we've got a really special early bird for you today, brand new today. Um, but I want to spend a bit of time explaining to it and showing you how it all works. So um, let's just um, go through the menu first. We're going to kind of do it in an opposite way so you can see what we've got coming up. Um, so now at eight o'clock, well, I've got the brand new early bird. I'll show you that in a minute. And we have got a brand new quilt kit for you. It's the Moda Nova Star featuring um, the Meander collection from Neela Hui. It's a beautiful kit. It's a beautiful quilt. All comes boxed up with all beautiful designer mode of fabric. You're going to love that. Um, and I've also got some lovely other mode of fabrics, some starlight fabric. So that's a fab hour. Nine o'clock, we've got Mark Francis in. I've just been having a chat with him about the sewing bee. So I'm going to get the goss from him, see what he thinks about the final, whether he thinks the right person won. So um, I know there's still a lot of buzz of the sewing bee. We're loving that. So we'll have a little chat with him. But he's also going to be showing us um, after that how to make two different items from so different so we've got the lovely apron and we've got a tunic top as well and we've got lots of fabric bundles perfect fabrics all specifically chosen for those garments so that's going to be great so if you fancy a bit of dressmaking this morning do tune in at nine o'clock uh ten o'clock we've got um whole host of sewing room tools including the design wall i'm going to show you how that works if you love designing quilts this is an absolute necessity for you and I've got some cave fabrics as well to show you how it all works and some other really cool tools and some beautiful thimble holders. Loving those, you wait to see them. Um, 11 o'clock, Mark will be back with us. Sussex Seamstress this time. She, he's going to show us how to make a dress and we've got some skirt patterns as well. Again, all of the fabric for these items has been carefully selected so that it goes is the right fabric for the, the dresses because I know how difficult it can be to get exactly the right, particularly dressmaking fabric. Anyway, we've got it all for you, taking out the hard work for you. And at 12 o'clock, it's all about um, more dressmaking fabrics and dressmaking supplies and quite a lot of really good dressmaking books as well. So we've got quite a mixed day, a lot of dressmaking today, but I'm going to move on to the other desk because I'm going to go and show you this fab new early bird that I've just taken out of the box. So um, it is our brand new iron. Now I know we've been talking about the um, Eliso iron for the last few days, which I have bought, still waiting for it to come, but only bought it yet day before yesterday very excited but this is a fantastic iron um, much lower price point but a really really good price really good um, it is a beautiful beautiful iron now the normal price is 34.99 but to you today because it's the um, early bird it's 29 29.99 for this amazing iron now I've only just taken it out of the box so it's even got its cord, so I wanted to show you how it all works for me taking it out. Um, I might even plug it in first. Ooh, ooh, might even plug it in. So, now what I love about it mainly is that it's cordless, and it locks and unlocks, so you can choose. So when you want to charge it, you put it in there. So it means that you can put it, pop it in there to charge it, but you know if you want to um, be able to take it away from the charging base and use it, then you can. It's just fab. Um, so you pop it in and then I think you lock it off and then it comes out. It's just, it is brilliant, isn't it? Oh, let me just take it out again. There we go. Um, it has got a beautiful rose gold features. So let's just look at what, what it looks like for 
beauty first. So it features all black and rose gold all the way around. So it's a really lovely iron and a really good solid one. I might even get the ironing board out before I do this. There we go. Um, it has a very, very long cord all the way here. I think it is, I'm going to just get my box, 3.6 metres of cord which is long. Now this is a very powerful iron. If you have a look when you're buying an iron at the wattage of it, that shows you how um, how powerful the iron. This is 2,600 watts. It means it's going to get hot, it's going to get hot quickly and it's going to retain the heat. It will get hot in 25 seconds. And you, all you have to do is when you want to recharge it, you pop it in and it's five seconds. So if every now and then you, you put it back in, then it will charge. And it will lock and unlock as well, so you can put it in, so you can keep it, keep it in place, and then it will charge as you go along. I mean, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely love it. Let me take it out again. Um, it's got a self-clean function. Now, you can change it. Obviously, it has all the temperatures from um, maximum all the way. So you've got cotton, linen, silk, wool, synthetic. And then what I like about it is you can turn it off. So with the iron that I've got with my iron that's now broken, most irons, you have to turn them off on the wall. And sometimes when I'm, maybe I'm doing a little bit of pressing, then I'm going over to the sewing machine. I think, well, I don't really, I'm going to be probably there for 15 minutes. Don't want to keep it on. Always have to go down to the wall. But this actually has an off button, which um, that's quite a feature for me. Um, it has a lovely filling tank. I have some water here. Because it does come with a little jug. So I'll put some water in my little jug. There we go. Fill it up. You don't need to use anything special, no distilled water or anything, just normal water. Um, and then you can choose whether you can have a spray. You can put it on steam or you can turn the steam off. And then it has a little shot of steam as well. So you can choose. There's the, there's the spray function. You probably won't be able to see that's coming out. And then you have the, then you have the, um, the shot of steam. And then there's another button underneath that is the vertical steam. So you know when you're wanting to um, steam something, maybe you've got a jacket hanging up or some clothes or even your curtains or something, then you can um, give it the vertical steam, which is brilliant. So only 29.99 and it is beautiful, isn't it? Now it's got a 300 mil water tank. So you have a look at your iron and see how much you can get in that. And that makes quite a difference because you don't want to be continuously filling it up. Because it's got the 300 mil, then it will last for a long time. It's got a really nice fine point on the end. And that's really important when you are trying to um, press collars and cuffs, get into the corners of things. Maybe you're doing box bottoms on bags or you're doing, you know, the slight curved edges. Even if you're doing something like um, the top of a curved messenger bag or something and you want to get right in there, it will go in. Um, it's anti-scale and anti-drip, but I think the vertical steam is a really useful function because it's quite often that you need to be steaming something that's hanging up when you all you know when you've got something and it's made of a fabric and you're not absolutely sure about pressing it um, particularly if it's acrylic or something and you think it might flatten it hang it up and I do this quite often if I've got um, things that I've knitted or crocheted and I really want to get it um, I don't want to press it because sometimes it flattens the fibers and makes them slightly shiny um, but it is it's just beautiful isn't it so in the box you get full instructions, seems I've just got it all out. Oh, it also has, which I was quite impressed by, it's got a three year guarantee. I know. So you, you can use it, so I'm using it at the moment as a corded iron, but you can use it as a cordless. So you place the iron on the iron so and slide the locking stitch to the cordless position and then oh, there we go look at that now I have a fully cordless iron so if I want 
So if I want to be able to, you know, I don't always want to be near the plug or maybe I want to be near my, my sewing machine, I can take it away with me. You see, that's magic, isn't it? And I do like the way that it's, um, when you look at it, it is quite a beautiful iron, isn't it? But I do like the, um, the, the fine point on it, so you can really get into the points of things. If you're pressing some fabric, it's gorgeous, isn't it? 2,600 watts. I mean, you have a look around at prices. Then all you have to do is when you want to charge it up, pop it back on, and there it is. If you want to use it, if you want to use it corded, then that's absolutely fine. You just, at the back, and you see there's a little switch. So that's the cord, corded, cordless. That's the corded. So, so if you, um, if you want, it to be called id because you you know you don't want to keep charging it whatever all you do is put the switch down and there's the cord and then if you want it to be cordless pop it back in put the stitch the switch up to the top and there it is cordless it's that easy really simple I mean it, I think it's amazing that it's ready to iron in 25 seconds so you know like running late to work You've got to iron something quickly, or you're impatient like I am, and you think, oh, well, I want to press this now because I've finished sewing, I forgot to plug my iron in, 25 seconds, and it's well It also has a self-clean button so that it will clean all the scale out. And then look at the sole plate, really beautiful. Lots and lots of difference. You've got larger steam points here, because that's where you're going to need the more intensive steam when you're ironing the points of things. But when you need, I'm not going to touch it, it's quite hot. When you want the all over steam, then you've got a really lovely even distribution of steam going all the way down there. And more intensive steam there. It is a be it's really gorgeous, isn't it? Irons really well. We should have a go, shouldn't we? Let me get some fabric. Oh, actually, let's go. Becky's got a nice crease piece there. No point nine. So let's have a go, shall we? Oh, this is a nice bit of cave. Yeah, we've got a bit of cave later at 10 o'clock, if you like a bit of cave. There we go. Give it a little burst of steam. What have I got it on? Oh, I've got it on cotton, just making sure. But look how lovely that is. It's cordless, as it says on this tin, it's cordless and it's effortless. Although I don't know about effortless, I do think ironing is eff does have effort, but if you've got to iron, which we do, sadly, we do have to iron for our sewing, even if we're not going to be doing it for our clothes. It does need to be effortless, doesn't it? So look at that, beautiful. All the creases have disappeared. And then I can just pop it back in to give it a quick charge. And there it is. But you can also lock it if you place it in the middle and then it doesn't come out at all. So that if you want to, which I think is a really useful feature. So if you want to carry this around somewhere and you, um, and you want to be able to carry it around in the thing, then you can lock it into position as well. You know, because if you, once you finish with it, maybe you store it on a shelf or something, it will lock in there, but you can choose how you do it. This is great, isn't it? Now, remember, if you haven't shot with us before, once you put something in your basket, it's not yours till you check out. Now, we only have one postage and packing fee per day. It's 3 95 and it is put onto your basket at midnight. So you don't have to think during the day, oh, well, how many times do I have I checked? Oh, I don't want to check out because I might want something later. Just check out because with loads of our products, they just... They just sell out, and then if it's not in your basket, if you haven't checked out, it's not yours. So put it in your basket, check it out. The PMP will be applied at midnight when your basket is closed, whether you've put your iron in or whether you've put in another 25 items. But at that price today, you're saving a fiver, so that's more than the PMP. So the special early bird price means that you're saving your PMP and another pound five too. So if you're thinking, um, I need a new iron, I want one iron for sewing and one for just general ironing, which I do, because I have a much, I have a much better iron, well in fact I've just bought it myself, the Aliso iron, that um, I demonstrated yesterday, the fab Aliso iron, the one that stands up on its own, love it. 
Um, so I have, I've just bought that one. I have that one for my sewing, and then I have a separate one for normal ironing, just because they're slightly different. But treat yourself. I do think twenty nine ninety nine is a really good price. I mean, I've had, a, I had a quick look round this morning at the places, and I cannot find it anywhere at that price. Can't find it anywhere. Let's give it another little, another little press. I do like the fact that it has the little, um, give it a little squidge of steam, give it a good shot of steam. I mean, and I've had this off for a while now. I don't know how often that you have to um, recharge it. But I guess what you do is you just put it down. But I mean, I've had it on there for a while and it's still working, isn't it? It doesn't actually say on that, does it? It's very quick recharge, five seconds really for when it does. Now the sole plate is ceramic, which is important because um, if you get something stuck to it, it does clean up very easily. You can buy special iron cleaners, but it does clean off quite easily. Not only that, the ceramic sole plate means that it will glide across the fabric really nicely and really smoothly as well. And it's and it's um, pretty as well. And it has 130 grams per minute steam shot. That is very powerful, isn't it? Look at that. It's working ever so well. Has anyone got any ironing? Send me your shirts. I'm quite enjoying this, actually. Yeah, have you got any ironing? Because this is quite nice flat fabric now. I need something else. So when you reorganise all your um, fabric, which I really must do, you can iron it all into little... I have mine ironed into all little squares like this, and then it's full of creases. But it looks nice on the shelf. Oh, we're getting some price comparisons. How much is it, Ben? Right, so we've had a look on the Long River site. Up to 39.99 there. Wow. Oh. And it gets 4.3 stars out of uh, yeah and 180 global ratings so it is beauty it's not just us that think that it's not just me that thinks this is great it there's a lot of really good reviews for it and i really like rose gold i've noticed that beldre have started doing a whole range of rose gold they do sort of steamers um and all, all different things because it's quite a in i think you know the i use the iron a lot use the iron a lot it sits on your shelf it may as well look lovely and it is a really nice it is a supposed to have um, an ergonomic handle as well so when you're going to be doing a lot of iron you need that and it's really simple the, to adjust the temperature just turn it around I do like the fact that it turns off there we go so when you want to um, charge it five seconds and it's done or if you don't want to keep charging it just turn it onto corded Put the switch down and there we go anyway if you've got any questions at all about it do let me know i'll ask you if you want to have a go i'll do it for you we'll get uh, when mark comes in um at nine o'clock we'll get him to use it see what he thinks about it he's already used our fabuliso iron and went what are these little feet why is it going up and down um if you want to know about that i've got it underneath we can talk about the aliso i could talk about that all day because i love it but this is a fantastic i think um with irons i seem to get through a lot of them and i don't know why but i think for this price this is an extremely good quality iron now i haven't had a cordless one before but i can absolutely see why you would because I'm quite often wanting to put something and then I have to um, unplug it and move it somewhere else and I'd love to be able to have the iron right next to my sewing machine and I have got a baby iron that I have near there but to have a, a big one when you need to be pressing other things but you know you have a look at the point of it to be able to get into those collars and those cuffs when you're dressmaking and particularly when you're making little makeup pouches I know that when I line them and, and I want to be able to get the, the iron right inside the lining to press that flat. You need that nice point. It is. I mean, to me, other than your sewing machine, your iron is the second most important piece of kit. Oh, we've got, even got the labels there. We've got the labels. Um, it is the second most important thing and I think you know when people say oh that looks really neat that looks so professional it's all in the pressing well and anyway you shouldn't it's not ironing it's about pressing you sh when you're we always say iron iron it press it but it's pressing when you are sewing 
When you've sewn a seam, don't iron it, always press. Press means not moving, because if you're moving, you are disturbing the fabric fibres. Now, it's fine when you've got fabric and you are ironing out the creases, but when you're actually pressing seams or you're pressing seams open, always press, don't iron, because you will disturb it and you can distort it, and particularly when you've been cutting lots of fabric on the bias, it can all go wrong. There we go. So, if you've got any questions at all, I'm going to lock my iron. It's not really heavy. No, it's not actually. It's a crazy. It's light, isn't it? I think it's amazing that. And also, the three-year guarantee. You know, when you buy something. Oh, there. Good morning. It. It isn't. Look. That's with the cord. So if I take it off, make it cord less. Even better. That is really not very heavy at all. And I'm not a very strong person. Yeah. Charlie says, are you very strong? No, no I'm not. Um, so it isn't, no, it isn't heavy at all. So I'm going to pop it over here and I might turn it off. <laughs> I forgot, it's cordless, it's still cordless. I need to put it in the lock position. But you see, I've put it in the lock position. So now it'll come off. Right, I'm going to turn it off as well so it keeps it nice. Cold. But anyway, if you've got any questions, do ask. Now I've done all my ironing. I just have to put the um, water jug back in the box. <laughs> now, I've got a fantastic quilt kit for you here. This is brand new. Brand new today. Now, the fabrics in this, this it's a motor kit, motor fabric. They're, the fabrics are designed by Anila Huey. Now, do you remember that fantastic fabric collection that we had from her last, um, that was featured all sewing items? There were sort of scissors and pins. It was all in pinks and blues and greys. It was beautiful. Now, her signature de fabric designs are all very gentle and very considered and um, reminiscent of nature and wanderings and her sewing. Um, the design, the actual kit is designed by Megan Buchanan. She, her company is called Then Came June. But the, it features the fabrics from Anila Hui. So, should we get it all out? Should we get it all? Let's get it all out. So, beautifully presented. Got it all wrapped up. We've got the plain orange fabric at the bottom. And it all comes in a nice box. So, you know, it's difficult, isn't it, when you found a design that you like and then you can't get all the fabrics. And I think quilt kits are quite difficult to find. The finished size of this is 54 by 68. So it's a really nice size. You can, it's a really good, um, a really good pattern quilt that you can just use as a bed topper or use it as a throw. So you get some plain orange. We'll go through the design in a minute. And then look at the fabrics in this kit. So the design, the Nova Star quilt, this is designed by Megan Buchanan. Now in the original design, she designed it using a different fabric, but they've used this design with these fabrics and put them together. So you can see, well, there's a picture obviously here, and there's a really good picture on the front of the box of the finished quilt. It's lovely. It's lots of different sorts of blocks all put together. Um, the great thing about it is that when you get the instructions, it actually gives you instructions to make it in three different sizes. Now, obviously the fabrics you get in your kit for the medium size but once you've got the instructions you can then use it with other fabrics so you can make it in a 42 by 54 a 54 by 68 which is this one but it also gives you extra instructions to make it in an 81 by 94 which is a king size bed quilt so we've we had to look on etsy we found somebody is selling the finished quilt of this for 375 pounds which i don't blame them because you know they put all their time into them but you can make this and have a quilt that's worth that now the quilt kit at the moment is 139.99 i think i think we should drop it because it's saturday it's saturday you know it's saturday so i think we should Reduce it just because it's Saturday, and why not? And we want to make a quilt, don't we? What can we do it for? Ninety nine, ninety nine. Whoa, that is amazing. Wow. 
or you can put it on to um, split pay for two equal payments of 49.99. That is interest free. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. It's just entirely up to you if you want to spread the payments. So this is the design. It features two different blocks, which are fairly simple to do. We'll have a look through the instructions in the moment, but let's have a look at the fabrics first. So you get some plain orange, and then these are all fabrics from Anila's Meander range, range, which was inspired by her wanderings in forests. Look at that beautiful pumpkin orange isn't it gorgeous so i think you've got a fat quarter of that pumpkin orange with little foxes because it's very um nature inspired there and fox gloves foxes and fox gloves foxes in gloves then we've got the same fabric with a sort of a peachy background with foxes and fox gloves I'm going to find all the same ones. Then we've got the same Foxy Fox glove fabric, but in a um, like a pale blue, pale blue. Then we have it in um, a navy. So you can see how beautifully all these fabrics go together and how lovely they're going to look in your quilt. Where's the um, where's my postcard? So. The foxes, I mean, I think they're just featured yeah, in some of the strips in all different sorts of places. Some of the foxes are in triangles, some are in the strips. Um, then we have horses. I think these are wild horses. So you've got a nice, nice peach. So you can see the colour palette of this now. We're kind of pumpkins, peaches, pale blue, navy, a little bit of sunshine yellow. So we've got horses in a peachy background. Look at this colour. This is gorgeous. This is like ginger. Look, ginger. Isn't that nice? Should we open that one out? Have a better look at it. Look at that. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So these are all, I think it will tell me in the thing, these are all fat quarters. Yeah, so we have got 20 fat quarters. Wow. So there's the, that's like a ginger background. So the colours are really warm and lovely. But I quite, lo I quite like the fact that it's got a bit of a modern vibe to it and as far as the prints and the colours go. But the blocks that it's using are very traditional. So that mixture between the two is lovely. And I think it, it feels like it would go anywhere. It's not sort of boy or girl or an older or younger. It does feel, it's just a really homely, warm quilt. And then this one, lovely sort of pale bluey gray background with the horses again. They're gorgeous. I like the fact that, you know, you haven't got the same colour backgrounds on all of them, but they all feature. So if you look at the blue background on this one, so the ginger in the foxes is featured of the ginger there. And then you've got the pale pink here, and that's featured in the pale pink there. So although they haven't got all the same background, the colour palette flows throughout. So it goes really nicely together. Um, oh, we've got some text fabric. I love text fabric. Should we see what it says? So it says, um, scrambled up over the bridge, laughing as they went. Oh, hang on, I've got to open it out. What does it say? Um, then it was time to take another look at the binoculars and take out a sandwich. Okay. I'd like to quell the spirits of adventure and the woodland. The breezy morning did little to, oh, to quell the spirits of adventure. This is brilliant. The little chicken clucked its way down through the breezy morning. I like exactly one minute later and there was a knock on on the over the over the car. Oh I'm not sure what that says. There was a knock on the side of the car. Got it. Exactly what I wonder what the rest of the story is. Little blackbirds dancing on the rooftop edge off the porch and saw this is lovely, isn't it? I really like this. And that and that just features just in some of the little strips. So you get a little bit of text. It's really nice. And there's a little sunshine. Off the porch and saw two sweet little blackbirds dancing on the rooftop edge. There we go. So it's kind of, it's because the fabric collection is called Meander, it's like the meanderings through the countryside and all the thoughts behind it. 
Right, so those are all the main prints, and now we come to the um, the kind of background fabrics. So, so we've got a gingham <laughs> in navy. And then we've got the same gingham in like the ginger and the peach. And then a gingham in pale blue. Aren't they lovely? And they're big ones as well. <laughs> look, look. But what's quite nice about this is that the gingham isn't printed straight, it's printed diagonally, so you get a lot more movement with it. Because if you want to have a gingham diagonally, you have to cut it across the bias and then it bias and then it loses its stability. So it's quite nice with this that it doesn't. I do like this quilt. Didn't they let me take it home? Um, so those are the get I'm going I'm making sure I get all of the same prints, right? And then we've got lovely spots. So we've got a lovely um, pumpkin. We're going back to the pumpkin now. A lovely pumpkin spot. Then we've got a ginger spot. And then a pale blue spot. Look at all this. I'm still going. I mean, there's so much fabric in this kit. And then we've got navy spot. In fact, we've got... And then we've got a bigger piece of that. I'll have a look, I think, because I know that the, there's enough fabric in here for the whole quilt top and the binding. Obviously, not the backing and the wadding, so I'm going to have a look in a minute and see which is the binding. Um, then we have this lovely crosshatch pattern. I'm running out of space a bit now. It's just so much fabric. And then we've got like a... I mean, all of this for less than £100, even if you didn't want to make the quilt, to be honest, just have it for the fabric. I think, well, we had to look. The pattern on its own was $13. We couldn't find it in the UK on its own. So you get that in, in here and all of this fabric for $99.99. That's amazing. And if you want to go for split pay, $49.99 today, it gets sent straight to you and then you pay the other bit the next month. But you don't get to charge any interest. Look at that. You, know, you might have even finished the quilt by the time you've done it. So those are all the print fabrics. Then we also have um, a white fabric, but actually it's a nice off, soft off-white. We have a pumpkin and we have a big piece of blue spot. So I am thinking that the one of those is the binding. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look at the instructions now and see how we make it. So, the Nova Star blocks are made using half square triangles, flying geese, rectangles and squares. There are two sets of flying geese and the star set make the star points. There we go. So, it pretty much is quite a simple quilt because it really is just flying geese, half square triangles. So, it's sewing squares together and cutting them across. Really? Um, so, how do we do it? So, you make cornerstones and the binding so which one is the binding i think it must be this blue one yeah it is now i can see it on here so this lovely blue spot this one here that is the binding i think that's lovely because it's quite subtle isn't it but it features two of the colors so it probably pulls the whole thing together and because the main background fabric is this one which is a really um i can't work out whether it's white or the palest of gray it's a very subtle white but it looks beautiful with the rustic elements of the kit, doesn't it? But the, when you look at the binding across that, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Really nice. So you have to make, we're going back to the instructions, you have to make two different sorts of blocks. And here it shows you exactly, well, no, actually, I'm looking at this more carefully, I've got this wrong. There is only one block, actually, just one block. So once you've learned how to make the block, so you've got a square in the middle, You've got flying geese and half square triangles. You've got some ba basic borders and then some flying geese and half square triangles in the corners. So you've got flying geese, half square triangles of two different sizes and then just squares. This is a simple quilt to make. I mean, it obviously will require accuracy in your cutting and piecing. But other than that, this is a simple quilt to make. It's quite good as well that they are doing their half square triangles in fours. So it's much quicker because there's quite a lot of them in there and it explains there's 
there's a really good set of instructions here about how you do your um, the no waste method of flying geese, which is lovely because you you take one big square and two small squares, you sew them together and cut them apart, and then you sew another. Which sounds really complicated, but it really isn't. It's just a great way of doing flying geese without using any waste at all. That's in the that, and then you have the centre star block, which again uses flying geese. Um, and then you have outer units, again flying geese, and then the corner stars are um, just half square triangles. So, so once you've made one block, you can then make them all. And all you have to do is just choose what colours you want to use where. I mean, I, if I was you, I would follow, if you have a look on the box, I would follow. It's up to you, because as long as you distribute the fabrics evenly, but I would actually follow the um, colours that are on here because it would be, then you know that you're going to get it right. Then when you sew it together, you've simply got sashing and it's nice because it's short sashing because they put cornerstones between them. So you haven't got any of those really long sashing strips that you've got to try to fit. You've got the cornerstones. So I think really it's the cutting and the planning that will take you some time, but the actual assembly is quite simple. But it's lovely, isn't it? But it has that really lovely sort of loved, homely nature vibe that's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? $99.99. I mean, it's mode of fabric. You are absolutely guaranteed the quality, aren't you? And it feels beautiful. I love the Anila Hubi fabric because it's always beautiful quality. I love her designs. They're very considered, but it's just really lovely. So, if you've got any questions at all about it, I've got the whole box here. Um, don't forget, if you want to message us, just um, go on to www.sewingstreet.com is the information there, or just message us on studio at sewingstreet.com. Or if you message on the Facebook page, Ben will read it out to me. But remember, when you get these instructions home, you've got everything you can to make the quilt that's 54 by 68. But the instructions also give you two different sizes. So you can make it in the crib size, which is 41 by 54, or you can make it in the big king size bed size that's 81 by 94. So what you could do, you could either use this, if you wanted to make it bigger, is you could use some plain fabrics. Because there are no plain fabrics in this kit. So if you use some of your own plain fabrics, very simply to change where you put some of the strips and the flying geese and the half square triangles, you could make it even bigger. But the instructions are all in, in there for the different sizes. But for all of this fabric, for 99.99, even if you didn't make the quilt, it's an absolute bargain. All of this, and you get all of this fabric and the pattern and the instructions to make three different sizes of quilts, of quilts, which is a bargain, isn't it? I'm not sure packing away this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna just move it very, very gently over onto that table. Okay, so if you love mode of fabric, I've got even more for you, even more, even more. Right, so this fabric is all available individually by the half meter, but we've also got it in a big fat bundle. So the bundle is 97 pounds and 37 pence and you get half a meter free. So the fabric is 7 pound 49 for a half meter because it's mode of fabrics, beautiful quality. Um, and it's really lovely to sew and press with. It's 44 inch width, 112 centimetres, so your normal quilting weight fabric. Uh, yes, I don't know why that one's not on split pay. I think it has to hit 99.99 to go on split pay. So if you buy the whole bundle, then you will get half a metre for free. So you can almost split it into two colourways, into navy and to the, it's like an ivory, it's not bright white, but not cream, it's an ivory. Now there are only nine nine left of the bundle. It's been extremely popular this morning. Extremely popular. So let me go through the fabrics. This is my favourite one. Isn't that lovely? Because that's like a patchwork star. So let me show you what the half metre looks like. Now remember that all of these are available individually as well. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? 
So look at the stars on it. They're just like, they are um, patchwork stars. You, can, you could actually use this fabric to um, use this as sashing between blocks that you use the other fabric to make this star with, like repeat the whole thing. They're lovely. But um, the background, if you look at it, I don't know whether you can see on screen, it's not just a solid navy. It's got quite, quite a mottled appearance as well. And then the actual stars are in a pale blue. But wouldn't it look lovely to create a quilt with the other fabrics, repeating this star, and then use this as the sashing in between? So that's, that's the navy one. Now, they all sort of mirror each other. So I'll just fold that one back up. I'm not going to unfold all of them. So that's the navy one, but it's also the same fabric is in the ivory as well. So on this one, you've got an ivory background, but the stars are in navy and a mid blue. So this is by Primitive Gatherings, which is a collection that Moda um, every year, I think, or twice yearly, they bring out a new Primitive Gathering collections. I like this. Be so good they can't ignore you, Steve Martin. <laughs> so that's the the cream one um, then there's a lovely one that's got this is quite a bigger a bigger print again you've got that lovely mottled navy background and then you've got ivory um, floral prints and swirls all over it isn't that lovely but again see you can see how well they go together and again you could use this one in your sashing if you wanted to mirror those stars. They've all been inspired by the night sky and nature. So I guess this is like, do you think this is like fireworks? Well, that's not really nature though, is it? Shooting stars. That's the navy one. And then this is its ivory partner. There we go. That's lovely, isn't it? I like the fact that it's navy and ivory, navy and ivory. Um, only seven left, only seven left. Remember, if you buy the bundle, you get half a meter for free. So you are getting seven meters of fabric, which is a lot of fabric. If you want to, um, if you're thinking I want to make a, a navy and ivory quilt, this is the one to get. If you want to buy them individually, they are all available there. All you need to go do is go on to sewingstreet.com. Should we go on to that now so I can show you how to shop? If you're new, welcome to our family, the whole Sewing Street family fans. Um, go click on Watch Live. This is how you shop. And then scroll down. Now, there you will see. There's the early bird. There's the gorgeous iron. Very special. On the left, you see it says Today's Show Deals. Those are the things I've already talked about. On the right is pre-order. Those are the things I haven't talked about yet. So all of those fabrics I'm going through now are available by the half meter. So if you don't want to buy the bundle, if you don't want half a meter free, not sure why, but if you don't, and you just want a half a meter, when you buy this, so in the bundle, they're all half meters. When you, if you want to buy them individually, then they will be pre-cut. So say you've seen this one and you think, I absolutely love that, but I want three meters of it. Put six units in your basket and it will be sent to you as a whole three meter piece. Now I know for our regular viewers, you hear us say this all the time, but we have new viewers all the time. And so we have to keep explaining how it works, how our PMP works. And it's really nice to welcome all of our new viewers because basically I would say, Nearly everybody who watches loves sewing. So anyone who loves sewing is very welcome here. We, you know, and join the fan page, Sewing Street Fans on Facebook. They are the best bunch of people. All you have to do is put in a picture and go, I don't know what to do this. How can I find this? Where can I buy one of these? And hundreds of people will answer you. So helpful. Or things like, if you want to buy a new sewing machine, and you say, I can't decide between the Elna 550 and the 560A, Everyone will answer you, go, oh, I've had that one, I've done this, this is great. You know, they're brilliant for, because a lot of our sewers are exp absolute experts and all of our guest designers as well. They're always constantly on the fan page. So if you want any help, or if you've just made something lovely and no one in your family appreciates it, post it on the fan page, because we appreciate it. The, uh, your sewing family will always be there for you. Always. So. Anyway, if you want them by the half meter, they are available. I'm just going through so that you can see what they look like individually. So that's those two. Um, this one, 
that's like a Celtic cross, isn't it? Sort of. Can you see that on there? Is it coming up all right? Again, you've got that mottled navy background. You love the, the cross and the little splashes of paler blue inside it. Um, and then exactly the same fabric, but in the ivory. Only four of these left now. Only four. If it's in your basket, you need to check out. Because we're going to start having... Some people aren't out of bed yet. I mean, and why? You know, it's quarter down on a Saturday. Some people aren't out of bed yet. And those who are, I mean, they might be buying this. So there's only four of these left. So if you want to... If you're thinking, I want to make a new quilt, navy and ivory, all of the colours go together. All Because the, there are different tones and shades of navy. They all go together. It's all the same quality fabric. So it's really well worth it. So 97.37 seven meters of fabric that's those two um like this one this has got little roses all over it there's the roses and can we see and there it is in the ivory it is a bit willow willow pattern isn't it and even the ivory isn't solid background it's got a slight mottled appearance to it. Gives it a very, very naturalistic feel. Gorgeous. Um, then we have this one that's like, they look, that looks like cow parsley, little sprigs of cow parsley. Let me turn it over so the code's not there. If you want to buy them individually, if you go on the website, there are photos of these if you can't remember which one. If I'm going through and you think, oh, I can't remember which one I like, the little photos will help. Then we have um, the same cow pass. It might not be cow pass, but I think that's what it looks like in ivory. Um, then we've got a lovely little um, low volume background fabric, which is just a little check. And we have the same little check in ivory. There we go. And then finally, we've got this lovely, like um, it looks like tire treads. I'm sure it's not that, like little chains. like the little sort of tire treads or little chain but again you know really useful when you're making a quilt or you want to use or anything specific where you want that horizontal or vertical stripe it's really nice and definite isn't it and, and then obviously the same thing is in ivory so that's the whole collection including these two which are my favorite there we go So that is the whole fabric collection. 97.37, you get half a metre free, so you get seven metres of Moda Primitive Gatherings fabric in beautiful shades of navy and ivory. You can also buy all the fabrics individually. So if there's just one you like or one, they're all being um, loaded up there now. But if you go onto sewingstreet.com and click on watch live, you can see them all down there. So if you think I want any, if there's any that you want me to show you again, just message in and I will hold them up for you. Okay. So it's not too, I haven't folded them all back in, but it's reasonably tidy. Reasonably tidy. Um, right, last 10 minutes, because I know there's a few of you have messaged in to say I missed the eye and can I have a look at it? So I'm going to go give you a so. For those of you who've been with me since eight o'clock, I know you've seen this, but we've had quite a few people who've messaged in to say, what, what's this about the iron? What is this about the iron? You had an iron on yesterday. Well, I've got a different, different iron on today. I'm gonna to be known as the ironing lady. Um, so anyway, this is a cordless iron. So sometimes you want to have the cord on your iron. Most people's irons do have the cord on them and that's fine, but you don't always want it. So if you want to use the cord, that's, that's fine because it's, oh, am I oh yeah, I plugged in, just checking. Oh yeah, that's fine. I've done it now. Um, so you use the cord just like you normally do, but if you want to be able to move it around and take it different places, pop it back in the charging station. Um, on the back of here, there is a switch. There's a, even easy to understand, there's a little cord coming out of it for corded. If you want it cordless, push it up to the top and it comes off and now it has no cord on at all. So you want to be able to iron something. 
one of the great features of this is it has a vertical steam function which is the switch that's under the handle so you just simply press that and steam will come out vertically so if you wanted to steam press something maybe it's your curtains or your blinds or it's an item that you've got hung up like a silk shirt or something you want to quickly put it on you can carry this around the house and then you can go and steam I can steam Mark's dress now see yeah and then it takes 25 seconds to warm up from cold that's nothing is it when you want to charge it again so because it obviously won't last forever off the stand you pop it pop it back on the stand five seconds it's fully charged again take it back off and you can use it it feet is beautiful rose gold it features a ceramic sole plate with larger holes for steam at the pointed end because that's where you will need it when you're pressing um, delicate things whether it's collars and cuffs from your laundry or whether it's for your sewing and you are trying to press seams open or to one side you've got larger steam holes here and then you've got a really nice even spread across the rest of it of smaller holes it's ceramic so it glides beautifully across the fabric and um, it doesn't it does things don't stick to it as well and as far as looks go it's a beautiful line it's rose gold and black it has an off function which i love because it means you don't have to turn it off from the wall you can just turn it off here it also has a self-clean function it has a really large 300 mil water tank which is great because you have to fill it up so often and it is oh 3600 i've just got to read that one is it 3600 um, 2,600 wattage, which means, have a look at what your iron is, have a look around for different prices. Irons increase in price depending on their wattage and their features. So now this price, at the beginning of the day, was 34.99, but we have dropped it for today and today only. It's a special early bird price. We've taken a fiver off for you. It's 29.99. So your P&P &P is 3.95. So you've saved your P&P &P and added an extra pound as well. And it's a really nice looking iron. It has, um, it's anti-scale and it has a special self-clean button so that you can easily um, clean it to get all any of the scale out of it. It's a really lovely ergonomic handle. You can do, um, it, it obviously steams all the time. You can turn the steam off. It has a shot of steam button and it also has a spray so that the spray comes out so you know when you just want to spray something to wet it slightly I think it's a really good sewing iron not that it sews but you know if you because it has this very fine point just here when you want to maybe you've been sewing um, patchwork pieces together and you want to and they're quarter inch seam and you want to press them open or to one side you need that fine point to get in there and because it has this intense steam section on this part of the plate, um, then you will get a lot more steam there. So it's fab, isn't it? 2,600 watts. Have a look around. We've had a look. We've seen this on the Long River website for 39.99. We've got five pounds off ours today. Um, but if you need a new iron, you want an iron just for your sewing, remember, it's only one PMP, so it's three ninety-five. So if you've bought this, you're going to get the quilt as well. We've got lots of other things on today. Do put it in your basket and don't forget to check out because you won't get charged extra PMP. The um, baskets close at midnight and then it'll all go on. Then so what a fab iron! I'm going to put it back in its little hole. And then when you want to carry it around, you just put it onto the lock function here. So if you want to. If you want to move it because you need to put it back on the shelf, then it will the whole um, base section will stay with it. So really, you only need to put it on the charger if you're taking it as cordless. You can use that to keep it on for when you're ironing. So rather than um, let's put it on there. So rather than putting it on its side, you can keep it there. But really, this char this plate is only when it's on the cordless function. When you've got it corded and obviously it's got the power, you don't need to be putting it back in there. But my iron certainly doesn't heat up in 25 seconds. I think that's fab. So what a great price. 30, no, 29.99 was 34.99. And what's more, that price will go back up again at midnight. And it'll be 34.99, so don't miss out on it today. So um, if you haven't seen it yet today, if you've got any questions at all, then do let me know. Because it is, it is a thing of beauty. I know. 
because it's quite nice that it looks nice as well because some irons have been I know when I choose nine I mean I do look at the features obviously but I do like I like to have a look at what it looks like as well professional it is professional it looks lovely in your sewing room very professional I like it um, so we have got coming up next um, Mark Francis and he's going to be showing us how to make um, this apron shall I show it to you I'll bring it over it's coming it's my friend my only fr it's only my friend today oh and I've got I have got Ben and Charlie in the studio as well they're my friends but they keep they're being very silly today they keep joking and they keep making jokes and laughing and it's really really hard to concentrate they are quite funny though so look at this great apron isn't it fab it's got a really nice crossover on it and we have got lots and lots of different fabrics for you to choose to make it we've also got a tunic top as well so um also, I'm going to get a bit of a lowdown from Mark about the sewing bee because he's bound to have some insider info, isn't he? I want to know what he thinks about it. Um, he's watched it just like we've all watched it. So we'll have a little chat about that. So don't go anywhere. I will see you back here in a few months minutes' time. And Mark will... And <laughs> Mark's minutes! A few minutes' time. And Mark will be back with us showing us how to make the tunic and the apron. I'll see you in here in a couple of minutes. Hello, my name is Mark Francis and I'm a guest designer right here on Sewing Street. Uh, you may have seen me before. I don't know whether anybody has maybe tuned into the Great British Sewing Bee, but I was there for Series 6 reaching the quarterfinals. I'm now here on Sewing Street on your screens bringing you my very favourite sewing patterns for men, women and children. Uh, for dressmaking and tailoring. Uh, so you can fill your stash and your collection with my very favourite fabrics and sewing patterns, including my very own range uh, right here, exclusive to Sewing Street. Something you may not know about me, now let's have a think. A lot of this has been covered on the sewing bee, but uh, I am a Blue Peter badge winner. I know, I know. I haven't worn it in a while. Slightly too old to get into Warwick Castle these days wearing it. But you never, I don't know, do I pass for 16? I don't know, possibly not anymore. Um, and I'm also, hence the piano, uh, a pianist I've been playing since the age of seven when my school teacher at the time taught me a little under duress from my mother because he thought I would be terrible. Turned out I wasn't, but there we go. Such is life, you never know until you give it a go. <gasps> Have I just invented a new catchphrase? I don't know. You never know until you give it a go. Caption across the screen, please. Thank you very much. So do join me popping up on your screens on here on Sewing Street to bring you my very favourite sewing patterns uh, and fabrics from across the range, including my very own uh, range of sewing patterns from So Mark Francis, um, including this very Turlow shirt. Um, more to come on a regular basis, so do keep tuned for that. it's Sarah Davies here I just want to say you have got to tune in on Monday because it is going to be a big day I'm going to be in the studios and I am taking over I'm going to be on Sewing Street Live from 8 o'clock in the morning jewellery maker from 11 o'clock and then hobby maker from 1 o'clock now when we do one of our big takeover days trust me it is a day you do not want to miss we've got goodie bags we've got some amazing special deals i've got a ton of demonstrations brand new product launches i've got the team in with me it is going to be epic so whatever you do do not miss it whether you're a sewer whether you love your jewelry making whether you love your paper craft we've got something for everyone so i'll see you on monday eight o'clock on sewing street from 11 o'clock on jewelry maker and from one o'clock on hobby maker we'll be there all day i can't wait to see you there miss the live show don't worry we recorded it for you Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. 
Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Town Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street. You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Sewing Street, um, um, congratulations, we've just gone up. We've been here for an hour already. Um, so you've missed the iron, you've missed the quilt kit, but if you've been here with me since the beginning, marvellous. Anyway, welcome, welcome. We've got Mark Francis in the house, who is currently using the brand new iron. How are you, Mark? It's marvellous, look at that. It's I could, lovely. I should have put my shirts in to iron, well, shouldn't I? Well, I was ironing a bit of fabric to have a go, and I said, send me your shirts. It's nice, though, yeah, isn't it? It is nice. Do we have professional ironers? We should have professional ironers here at Sewing Street. Yes, yeah, shouldn't we? Yes, what? Oh gosh, you'd want to be a professional ironer. I quite like ironing. Would you? Yeah. I yeah. actually would not want that job. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an ironer. Did you? <laughs> really? Your mum would get me to do the ironing. So I did, not everybody's, but you know, put mm. my contribution in, earn my pocket money. Well, that's good. Um, nice iron, isn't it? It is a nice it iron. It's got a nice weight to it. I like that, but it's not heavy. And, and now it's got. Oh! Glorious. Look at that. Look, do it again. That is a super shot of <laughs> steam, is, isn't it? That could you, that um, could take your eye out. So that that's could. our early bird today. That's a fiver off. $29.99 instead of $34.99. So if you're in the market for a brand new iron, do it. Um, so today we have got two different um, designs that Mark's going to be demonstrating for us. So I'm just going to go through all the patterns on the fabric and then we'll get over and do the demo. So first of all, we have got this fab apron. So this is the pattern for it, and it's the um, apron that's behind Mark. Are we going to have a, a model? Oh, should we have yes? Yes, you'd look lovely on you. <laughs> Shall I give it a go? Give it a go. I think it just goes over your head. OK, you might have to help me. Oh, no, it's, it's stuck to the mannequin. Well, this one's in corduroy, OK. It's in corduroy, it's just your colour. Just, just my colour. Which way do you get into it? Is like it, that, is it I think. That's it. Have you got littler? <laughs> no, they, someone raised the tables. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, they honestly, <laughs> honestly did you like, raise the tables. You like, Am I, um, you like Peggy Mitchell behind the bar? The yeah. Now. There you go. Get out of my pub. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my sewing room. Is that all right then? Perfect. Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to move my mic, guys. There you go. Right. 
There we go. Oh, I tell you what, I could do one of these when I eat my dinner, honestly. Mind <laughs> you, I was pick, I was sorting through all the um, cave pre-cuts this morning, and I then had bits of fabric all over me. So I actually could do this. So look, isn't it lovely? Um, really nice, really nice overlap at the back as well. Yeah. And it features a very large pocket, which you can't see, but I can put my hands in. And um, it can be made single-sided or you can line it as well. Oh, it's just nice though, isn't it? Actually, if you're wearing this even for cooking, yeah, it's nicer than a normal apron, isn't it? It's like the 21st century house coat. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. But you know when, you, when I wear a normal apron and, and it still gets everywhere, doesn't it? Mm. I, it I was always Toby Mucky as a child. I could mm. have done with something like that. Absolutely, I, I like this because it's really, really comfy. It's nice. Anyway, the pattern for it is is here. So it's by um, So Different. There's the pattern. Now the price for this is always oh, disappeared. It's coming back in a minute. Where's it gone? I don't know what Ben and Charlie are doing this morning. They're just playing. I don't think they're actually doing things. The graphics are there. 13. Oh, it's all going wrong this morning. What are you doing, boys? Right, are we ready now? Right. £13.59. Now, this covers all sizes. Sizes 8 to 18. No, that's not true. Sizes 8 to 26. It's called the Herba Apron. It is a classic crossback design that pulls on over the head. It can be made as a single layer or as a reversible double layer. And there is a large feature pocket at the front. So that's what it looks like and that's what the lady looks like behind with it. Mark's going to be showing us how to make that in a minute so he can explain how simple it is. So that's £13.59. Now I have a choice of fabrics to make it from. Which are here. Whoa. <laughs> Quite heavy it's counting just, all of those. It's, it's effortless. Effort effortless. Did you see that? Effortless. effortless. So this is the fabric that Mark's <laughs> going to be demonstrating with. This beautiful grey 100% um, linen fabric. Now in the bundle you get two metres, which is enough, we worked out, to make the largest size. There's only five of these bundles left. £23.49. It is beautiful. This is the one Mark will be making, so you'll be able to see what it looks like. But isn't it lovely? It's got a lovely linen weave in it. Gorgeous fabric. Lots is it of it. Enzyme washed. Um, this one ends is enzyme washed. It what does enzyme, enzyme wash mean then, Mark? We did look this up. They do something to it. They wash it in enzyme. Yeah. Does it make it softer? Uh, yes, and it stops I think it creasing. That's what it does. And it stops it creasing so much. So it means that you don't need to pre-wash it. So this is your whole two meters. And remember, that's folded in half already. Beautiful, it's a really soft, like dove grey. So, ideal, you, you can use it for, um, when, for when you're cooking, for when you're sewing, for when you're doing any craft activities, or just when you're cleaning. You don't want to get dirty because it doesn't, it looks more like a dress, like a pinafore, rather than like an apron. So, I it's a little bit. White. No, no, oh, lots of doves are grey. Oh, okay. Some doves are white. This I just is... let that sink in for a second. I thought, hang on a minute. Oh, doves I... white? No, this is called dove grey. Oh, okay. I think um, maybe it's the underside of a dove, perhaps. The dirty bit? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is 23.49. There's only, how many did you say of these? Three of these left. Two metres. Um, Right, the next one, I've got the same linen, but in a gorgeous mustard. Look at this one. So whether, even if you're not making the apron, you've got two metres of beautiful mustard linen. There's only five of these. These are very popular this morning. There's only five of this one left. I like that one. I think I'd like that one, actually. It is a very um, 21st century apron, isn't it? You could have one for each day of the week. Oh, you? just well, it just looks like it doesn't look like you're wearing a formal apron. It looks like you're wearing a dress, really, mm. doesn't it? But it just keeps you a little, a little bit tidier, <laughs> a little bit tidier. Um, then look at this one. I love this one. It's um, like a denim background. Okay, let me just lay it out flat so you can see what it looks like. It's a lovely, like lightweight um, denim background, but featuring sprigs of daisies and pink flowers all over it. 
Oh, I've told it up, don't I? There we go. Isn't that pretty? So that's your sort of summer, pretty summer apron. One for each season. One for each season, absolutely. That's really nice, isn't it? My grandmother. But again, you've, this is. She had a special wardrobe for her house coats. No. Yeah, special wardrobe in the spare room, and it's just full of house coats. Just full of them. These kind of nylon, nylon. staticky things yeah. in gingham. Yeah. And she them. actually hung them up. Yeah. She, she could have put up. them in a carrier bag, and they wouldn't have creased. <laughs> These true. would. But this I'll, is lovely. I'll isn't tell it. it. Yeah. No, it's, it's too late for that. <laughs> This one is only 18.99. So whether you want to rate the apron or whether you want two meters of fabric, it comes as a two meter cut piece, but it is beautiful, isn't it? Lovely for um, your summer or you know spring autumn dresses as well. Gorgeous, 18.99. Do like this. Quite fancy one of these aprons actually. I think this is so much better for cooking than a normal one. <laughs> Do you normally wear an apron for cooking? Always. Always. I'm a very messy cook. <laughs> Always wear an apron, and I'm actually quite tempted to wear one when I'm eating bolognese as well. You're not, you're not like Fanny Craddock. Yes, but you're if I have one of these, you see, I'd really like this. Oh, the floral one, there's only one left. One. Been really, really popular. So if you want this one, oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Now I've got also. Is it one. that one? Yeah, it's that one. So you can't have that one. Now I've. I thought this was a denim, but this is the same linen as the grey one and the mustard, but in a navy. Right, the grey and the mustard is only one of each left as well. So there's the navy linen. You can't see it because it's navy, you can't see the linen weave in it as well. But it is a lovely deep navy. Only nine of those. That would be a good colour, wouldn't get dirty. And then very finally, I've got a um, denim fabric like a light denim again two meters of 23 pounds and 49 pence really nice lightweight de denim doesn't have to be used for an apron here it comes these are all really good fabrics for your stash anyway well they are Even if you they? weren't the, the fact the patterns weren't your thing yes um, just for dressmaking yeah so what sort of garments would you use this uh, this linen and denim for well, the linen would be great for some trousers, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Great. Um, or you can make like a, like a, a, a shacket. Like, like a a shacket? A shacket. What's a shacket? A shirt jacket. Have you not seen it? No. It's like a shirt, but it's a bit, it's, the fabric's a bit heavier. Oh, sometimes. okay, and it has pockets. It can do, yeah. You can have more pockets. Yes. You can put extra oh, things on Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yes, I didn't jacket. know it was called a shacket. Well. Oh, valiant. So that, that's all the apron section. And there's the apron pattern. So should we do the apron first? Yes, I have and then been we'll, um, fussing away with it. While and then we'll move on to the, the tunic and okay. cover everything. We'll only get confused. It sounds like a We don't want confusion here. Don't want confusion. Because we've got two sets. We'll, we'll do it in halves. We're both at a funny age, aren't we? <laughs> it, could easily, it could easily go south. So there aren't actually that many pieces to this. This is a nice kind of... I want to make something this afternoon. Yeah, but that's and I what want I'm thinking. Finished. Yes, because I want to make it for when I'm cooking. Tonight. I don't want it to be hanging around for three no. weeks and I get bored of it. Okay. Um, so all you've got, you've got your pocket, which I've been messing around with there. Hey, I've got an overhead camera. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> waiting for one. <laughs> John Scott took it with him on holiday. That's, yeah. what, that's what it is. Um, so I've been fussing around with the pocket here. It is a kind of a half moon shape, but because it's a patched pocket, you can change it to any shape that you like, you want it to be square or half a hexagon or something like that. And I've just folded over this underside and stitched it down. And I'm just folding and uh, pressing under this curve here. Now I've done it by eye, as you might have just noticed me fussing around with it. But if you wanted, you could cut a template of the finished piece out of say cardboard or a cereal box or something like mm. that and then use that as a guide to press around and then you get a nice smooth edge so we'll fix that on first so when it comes to cutting before we do this if we're cutting mm. out is it easy to cut out is it big pieces yes so you've only got a few big pieces let me show you so there's two of the... Uh, Since the, I'm going to make one I would like the full guide to this now, there's so. one of the... <laughs> should I hold it up I think it might be so this is the front is it my colour? There we go. And that goes round to the side like that and it swings out. So you've got, if I turn it upside down, you see how much okay. volume there is on it. That's upside down, so it's a bit easier to hold. 
and then you've got two side pieces like this. What are you giggling at? The side. Ben. <laughs> oh, okay. Saying so which I, I thought this was something pieces. funny then. <laughs> 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 what have I just said? No, just, they keep saying funny things. Oh, okay. Just, and then I think I mustn't laugh. And there's two side, side pieces <laughs> like this. And you can either make a lining for it. Behave, woman. <laughs> you can make oh, a lining so for it. Oh, they're so naughty. Do you want it's to show It's a nightmare working with boys because they're so naughty. Oh, that's why they're nice fun, though, isn't I it? I know. Um, everyone likes a naughty boy. Yeah. <laughs> Flash is your lining. Because <laughs> yours is lined. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Flash is your lining. <laughs> <laughs> I know, don't work with boys, they have a nightmare flashes your lining. There you go, there's there a flash of my lining. Rebecca's is lined. The one I'm doing is not going to be lined. So um, if you line it, you use that for and then you need the same fabric. Two. And is it and what would them. you use for the lining? Uh, well that one is just a plain just cotton. Just plain cotton. That's no, just a plain cotton, which we do have on our website usually. Or you could pick something else that's here. One of the so what's bundles. the benefit of lining it then? It just gives a nicer crisp that's finish. All. Right, okay. it's, it's a bit more durable maybe, um, but it just makes a nicer garment. Yeah, okay. It depends on do you want if you like if you're quite a warm blooded person, you might not want the two layers oh, on. Oh true. So you might want just a single So winter layer. apron. Winter I apron. Think Christmas dinner, apron. right? Would definitely not be lined because it was hot then. It's going to be from Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's roomy for Christmas dinner. Yes, that is true. And then it does, and it comes in various sizes because you it, sort of feel like it doesn't have sizes. It it's does an have sizes. If I bring out a pattern piece, then I will show you. Oh, actually, did I cut a small? No, I cut a small. Oh yeah, because it goes help. eight to it's twenty-six. It's just like a small, medium, large, extra large kind of. Oh okay. Kind, kind of arrangement. Um, but what we'll do, we'll put, we'll nail the pocket on first. Now the pocket can go. Where have you? Oh, that's the wrong piece. That's it's the two sides. I say it's come apart, but it hasn't come apart. It's the wrong piece. Um, you can pop the pocket where you like. It does mark it on the pattern, but for the sake of today, I'm going to pop it there. Now let's find some pins. Oh, pins! I did pins. pins. I've got pins. The pair of pin yes, I noticed I is in the pins. in the green room. Would you like some Elton John glasses? I found these yesterday. Aren't did they you? brilliant? Are these John Scott's? No, I don't know where they came these from. Are, these are John but Scott's they're rose reading colours, glasses, so if you they? want to look at life through rose coloured spectacles. Oh yes, suits you. <laughs> Gorgeous. Everything's gone pink. I know, I found those yesterday. Well, if I had too much rose on. <laughs> they're brilliant, aren't they? I'm going to keep this on for the rest of the show now. <laughs> I don't even know where they came from, they're just the in the The lights are so trailer. bright, darling, I must have my glasses. Yes. These are my TV glasses. Oh, we haven't no. talked about the sewing bee yet. Oh yes, the sewing bait's finished. So, did you enjoy watching it or did you feel sad? No, it was quite joyous. Do you know what was really nice from the finale? Mm. Was that everybody was back in the sewing room again, which yes. they couldn't do last year. Oh, of and course. And it kind of, it's a bit of a shame. It's just what they had to do because of, yeah. of what was going on at the time. But it's so nice to see all the other sewers, the friends and the family, mm. in that room again to, to, to cheer on the winner. Doing it by Zoom doesn't quite have the same kind of thing. Little computer screens yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, but did you, was it sad that you thought, oh, I was there? I was, yeah, and it's so nice, uh, and we, they made us, when we came back in for our series, the, the, the people had been kicked out, <laughs> like, like me, mm. we had to queue up in eviction order <laughs> at no the bottom way. of the stairs. Loser first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, in well, order. Yes. And then we had to go up the stairs in order. Um, it's but a it's, bit cruel, isn't it? I, well, it's just, I don't know, it's just telly, isn't it? It's not, they're, they're not doing it to be cruel. That's quite <laughs> funny. They've obviously thought about this quite, quite a lot. And um, who did you want to win? Uh, do you know, I was, I was happy for most of them to win, actually, in, 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 those in the finale, mm. I think. That's, uh, uh, I think I could have, yeah, there was quite a few people who I think could have won. Okay. The challenges didn't seem quite as tricky as some finals I thought. No I didn't think it did. I, th I mean I wondered why they why they chose a jumpsuit maybe because they just hadn't ever done before. Yeah I think there is that I mean how many times can they do a finale when they make a ball gown? Yeah but they are fab aren't they that's what we want to see I want to see an it amazing is. ball gown. And, and I was thinking back to the finale the final from our series mm. then the, the pattern challenge was a kilt. Oh yes yes and and i was I'd reminded they they had no pattern the to follow uh they had very loose instructions and the they were given a formula to work with 
that would determine the size of the checks would determine with this formula how much fabric they needed oh to make the, it work. And I'm thinking that's possibly a little bit more tricky than doing Esme's amorphous dress. Would you wear the amorphous dress? Yes, I do, yeah. That would you wear it? No, never, no. <laughs> Well, it's exciting. I'm hoping that we get some of them on here. Do you think we will? Well, you never know. Yeah. Well, uh, Richie, who uh, the is in uh, Shrewsbury, oh, is which he? isn't all that far no, away. That's true. True. So, but people travel all over the country. Now, have I got the pocket on straight? It's straight enough. So you could line that pocket as well, rather than turn it in. Yeah, you could bag it out. That'd be quite nice. Have a little flash of something fun yeah, inside. Yeah, I think I would. I think it'd just be easier. Yeah. Now you can, uh, now I'm going to sew this on, now this is a good method for sewing on patch pockets generally, to start okay. it, this might seem a bit odd, start it upside down. Right. Is that your take on it? Start it upside, yes. Start it upside down, do your little lock stitch. So I've got the opening of the pocket facing me. I'm just going to sew up about an inch, mm. turn the corner, do a few inches stitches across the top and then get it as close to the edge of the fabric without running off it that you can muster okay and then follow it all the way around now this thread I'm using isn't grey so it's going to show up every little fault and um, so someone's messaged in to say how long is it because they're four foot eleven well I'm five foot one that's only two inches different isn't you're it? only five foot one Yes, and... Um, Did you not hang off the doors to try and go... Well, taller? do you know what? I was five foot one when I was 11, so I was actually very tall once upon a time. So okay. it comes um, just above my knee. Stand on the desk and show everybody. <laughs> no chance. Um, so it comes just above my knee, but you could easily shorten it, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, the, the usual rules for shortening. So if you take a line sort of halfway through and close up the pattern a bit but this comes it just touches my knee and I'm five foot one so there you go I wonder how tall the model is on the packet oh that's above her knee on there isn't it yeah yeah she's t yeah she's probably tall yeah she's tall and she's got a hydrangea I, got I like a hydrangea I love hydrangeas I've got my garden is full of white hydrangeas Oh, is it? And they're really nice. Except the problem is, is when it gets really, really sunny, they, the petals scorch and then they sort of go brown, whereas the blue, pink ones don't do that as much. But I love white ones. I've got quite a few in my garden. My great aunt Rini, she grew a hydrangea from a cutting. And when I moved in, she gave it to me. Mm. And now it's huge. Really? Yeah, it's huge. It's taking over the future that's next door Hi, to Mark, it. Hi Mark, lovely to see you oh. and your groovy glasses. <laughs> Hope Clive is feeling better. Oh Great yes, demo yes he's had Covid again. Has he? Yeah. Again? Yeah, I that's know, he just loves it. He does. I'm just trying to get Fancy him. Fancy getting it twice. He doesn't really know where he got it from. He got a text saying you've been in contact with someone, but we weren't sure whether that was a scam or not. Or whether they're yeah, because I don't think they send those out anymore, Well, I wasn't they? sure whether they did. Uh, but he doesn't know where he's been to pick oh, it no, up. Oh no, Ben got one. So they... Oh, maybe they are. And has he had it? And did... Yeah, he has, yeah. He had to have oh. a whole week off. So I'm back at the other end now. So rather than just doing a back stitch, um, I'm just trying to get that little tail in. Just go al along the top, about three or four stitches. Yeah. And then just back, back on yourself. Try and match it up to the other side. I'm going to completely eyeball it today. Okay. Don't use blue thread on your grey, use grey. because. <laughs> but, but you can see it really nicely. Oh, okay. And then that bit, that's what strengthens the top of the pocket. That, yeah, that little bit there strengthens the top of the pocket. Let's just... Oh, I'll sew my thread in, look. There we go. Oh, okay. That's probably a better Because you are going to get, you'll be going to be, well, even if you don't put stuff, you'll be putting your hands in it. Sweets, sweets, kids' toys, all I don't know. sorts. And on the pattern, it shows an extra seam running down the middle up there to make two little uh, pockets. Okay. But you know, you can do whatever you wish. So now the next thing you do is put the sides on. Don't need to worry about the notches because it only goes one way. And if you're using the fabric, this ends up, I don't think there's a right and wrong side to this enzyme washed. It all looks 
marvellous from every angle. Some um, fabrics like that, that what, isn't it? Which fabrics have sold out, Ben? All of them. All of them? All of them for the apron have sold out. But oh. we have still got the pattern because you can use your own fabric. In fact, you can make a patchwork one. <laughs> use up everything you've got. Oh, yeah. Very well, you, could popular, do, you could do three panels all differently. You could. Or yeah. you could just join together all the fabric you've got and then cut it out. <laughs> make your own. And as you say, you can make this in an afternoon. Yeah. So make, join up a load of bits of fabric and make the apron. £13.59. Make one for everyone. The whole family are going to have aprons. Just, <coughs> it's just decided to unthread itself. It's a naughty machine. And it's called level, very easy. Oh, well, there you go, you see. So if, you, if you're new, yeah, I thought it would be. Mm. Um, and I was going to say, if you're maybe new to dressmaking but want to make a garment, yes. this was probably a nice one. A really to, good start. Or if you want to teach somebody. Yeah, simple pattern pieces, <coughs> uh, straight stitching, a bit of bagging out, if you, if you do the if double you like. So what, even, if, even if you've got 112 centimetres, so even if you've got quilting weight fabric, which is 44 inch wide, you still just need two meters per layer so if you're just doing one layer but if you are sizes 20 to 26 <coughs> you will need to use the 150 centimeter width fabric and then you need one and three quarter meters per layer <coughs> motorway sewing all the way to the end so what size have you made this one in the one you're wearing yeah this one that you're oh making. this is a small I don't remember what size I made that other one though. The one I you're think that'd wearing. be perfect. So if you could oh. finish it before you leave, that'd okay. be great. <laughs> okay. Then I can wear it home. In the car. Yeah, in, in the car. The then I can eat in the car. In case the car's dirty. <laughs> well, it won't, yes. Actually, my husband's actually cleaned it. It's been cleaned for months. Uh, message for us. I recorded the same beat to watch yesterday, but all I got was tennis. Oh because no. Because they decided to change the channel, they so I missed did. it. If people aren't happy about it. I know, I love the comments. Like, why does everyone think that everyone loves tennis? Totally with them. It's, EastEnders was messed up. It's on every channel, everywhere, it's just all ridiculous. the time. It is, and, and I, it bores And like, me. what percentage of people in the population The only thing I like about it? Wimbledon is the music. It's the theme tune. <laughs> and that's only the beginning and the end. I know, exactly. I don't even know what it is. It's, well, I won't whistle it because I'll probably have to pay for it. Um, mm. And they won't want to do that. I think um, you can do 10 seconds. But it's called Light and Tuneful. It's written by Keith Mansfield in 1975. No, I, I think I'd know it if I heard it. Yes, you will. Okay. You will. It's like a funky 70s kind of thing. Oh, right. Um, but, so that's one side put on. And when you go to sew it at the shoulders, you'll do, instead of it doing that, you're doing that. Yeah. to create the crossover. And that gives you the crossover look. That gives you the crossover. So if I just... Un there we go. So what you look at, because it is all grey on the camera, this is the, the side piece here. Right. That's the front. And you'll take this uh, shoulder to that shoulder. There we go. And if you're doing it lined, you'll just do two of these and then just leave a, a, a gap at the bottom somewhere. And then you take oh, it all so you make so you yeah so it's the final section when you yes. line it. You Otherwise, make the whole thing the same. overlock it and just uh, either you can either bias bind the edges. You can make some bias binding. You probably would might have enough of the same fabric if you did it carefully, or just buy some bias binding and or, do <coughs> or make contrast. your own for using the bias binding maker. Yes, which are on a website probably. Uh, yes, I made some yesterday. Oh, look, did you from K Fabric? <gasps> look at that. Look at that. I won't sew it on there. That's what I, I made yesterday. Look at her. Oh, well now, how nice would that look? A little bit of K found your grey linen. Oh, I think I'd do that. That looks fun, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Mm. I like that. Yeah, there you go. Get the bias binding we maker. Go. Or just overlock <coughs> it and uh, turn it under and sew it down. That's the other way to do it. Should we talk about the, the other one? That we're yeah, so you just sew that one on and then sew the other one on. Yeah, and that's o overlock it. it, turn it under or bias bind it. Perfect, thank you very or much. Or leave it raw, be really edgy. Really edgy and frayy. <laughs> <coughs> right, so that's the apron, pattern number one. Now, pattern number two is the tunic. This is the pattern here. Again, from so this sewn tunic is a loose fitting shirt shift with oh. cap sleeves oh, and careful. integrated side shift. I thought it said shirt, shift. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these boys, they're driving me mad today. Does anyone want to come and swap? So, 
Yeah, Charlie's been quiet because he's... I can almost hear um, Charlie biting the inside of his cheeks. Um, £13.59. £13.59, 20% off. So, it's a loose-fitting shift with cap sleeves and integrated side paddles. It works as either a short dress or as a tunic over leggings and trousers. There is the option of a lower frilled panel. Now, we had one of these and I wore it and it didn't have the frilled panel, but it did Do have... Do we have a clip? Um, hmm? Do we have a clip? Do we have a... Yeah, we should have a clip. I can't we remember what date clip. it was when I wore it. Um, it's a lovely dress because it's that really nice tunic length and in fact, I did wear it over my jeans. What I like about it is it has a different um, side colour. I'll show you, we've got some fabric bundles in a minute, which is very slimming, because then you just get like the front is one colour, and those side bits, which you don't really want people looking at, are a darker colour. So there's the pattern, it's available. It makes sizes eight to 26, there's the picture. You see? Now, the lady in the picture has got the frill round the bottom, but you don't need to add the frill, you, it's simply, um, a shift tunic. It's really nice. Okay, so we have got a variety of fabrics to make it in. Now the one that Mark's going to demonstrate with, I'll start that, is the denim one. So we have in the bundle two meters of dark and one meter of light. So the main color that goes down the front will be the dark denim and then the side panels will be in the light denim. So you've got three metres in total for just $34.99. And there's only four of these available. $34.99, two different colours of denim, and Mark's going to be demonstrating in that one. Right. Um, now, I love this blue butterfly one. So this is the main one. Isn't this... I'm going to open it out a bit, because this is gorgeous. This is a lovely cotton fabric. Feathered Beauty Butterfly. Selling again brilliantly. There's only four of these left. So you get the blue butterfly as the main front panel for the tunic. And you get this gorgeous um, chambray colour, which is a beautiful match for the, the butterflies. And that's used as the side panel. So, oh, you found a video of me wearing it. Okay, I'll tell you whether it's the right one. It was with Adam, yes. There we go. He's there he is. <laughs> there he is, yes, I remember now. There is me wearing the tunic. I told you I'd worn it. Because <laughs> it, um, it was must have been winter time because I had like a really long sleeve top on as well. Oh, it's there always you cold go. in here. There you go. Actually, do you know what? It's not actually cold in here today no, for the not, first time it? ever. Because normally it is. It can be like really hot outside and I come in in a dress and I have to get changed. So that's, he's found, he's found it again. There we go, there's me in the tunic. Yeah, well I had it on a, over a long sleeve top and jeans. So, but if you could be a butterfly. Only one of that one left, I love that one. Um, I like this black one, I think this is very stylish. Now, so you've got these lovely black background with the daisies. This is poppy cotton fabric. Look at that. So this is the main part, but then the um, side panels are in the black. So this is really super slimming. So you get the black down here, and then the front panel is like here. That's very pretty. Look lovely over black leggings, black tights, even, even um, jeans it will be fine over. Yeah, see on there, she's got jeans on. Or linen trousers. You can put the frill on or not, depends how you feel, but it's got nice little cap sleeves as well. So in the summer, obviously, I mean, I, it was in the winter. Well, it was cold anyway when I was wearing that. But in the winter, you can just put a long sleeve top on, so it's very, very versatile. Um, one more, one more. Green, if you fancy green. This is pretty, isn't it? What is this one? Oh. William Morris, excuse me, William Morris tunic. Gosh, that is posh, that isn't is it? That is very super posh, isn't it? This will look wonderful when you're walking around the local National Trust property. <laughs> look at I that. I never got William Morris fabric in my shows. <laughs> Whoa, William Morris <laughs> tunic. The cash this time. This is. 
So 37.99, so you get two meters of the William Morris, which I think I've got upside down. <laughs> Just realized the flowers are upside down. Are the birds flying upside down as well? I don't know, do you know, I've, I've done it again. Right, I'm gonna get it right now, look, there we go. So that's what it looks like, beautiful William Morris fabric. That's the main part. This is lovely, isn't it? There's only 15 of those. And then you get this gorgeous green, let me hold them together, and that's used in the side panels. That's very nice, isn't it? So 37.99, you get a meter of the um, cotton fabric, and you get two meters of the William Morris. Right, okay. That's all the options and all the things. Oh, you've almost finished it for now me. Now you can see why some some people oh, may need the that down the, in, but, yeah. I would sew that down the middle. Beep, like that. That's lovely. Um, that's actually like a Mark Francis original, isn't it? So I can wear it while I'm cooking. Go, oh, uh, you know, my mate Mark. He's on the same just saying. <laughs> I should put my label me. in it, shouldn't I? Yeah, could you please? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it to my line next time. <laughs> right. So where do we start with this then, other than cutting it out? Let me just shift from one um, to the other easy so this there. one's easy not very easy no the other one was very easy this Just one easy. is easy so it's an interesting shape this one it's got some interesting things going on okay and a few of the so different trademarks okay. in what she likes to do now you've got the side panels as we've had a look at now i have made up one of the side panels now hang on a minute let's get the right piece here we go so the sleeve fits to the top. I seem to have a leak from the irons. So I've got water everywhere. There we go. So this is a side panel. And at the top, you have the little sleeve, like that. So that's, the, that's where your arm will pop out, there. So if you, come, if you come here, Rebecca. I'm coming. Put your arm in there. It sits. OK, I, mean, I need to come that's on the then. Oh, yeah? That's where the that's where your oh, that's arm goes. That's nice, isn't it? Nice yeah. fit. It is. It is. I mean, I didn't know what size you were. I, didn't mm. know I was making it for it's you. Shame, so. shame that. Isn't it? If you could check these things <laughs> next oh, time. Yeah. But it is. Yeah, it's nice. It's covering up just enough. So let's show you how to do that. Okay. Now I'm giving you my arm. So the first thing you've got these the sleeves now. Watch the pattern pieces carefully with the sleeves. It does label it all up nicely for you. If I can find that piece quickly, I'll show you what you need to do. Uh, here we go. So the sleeve is cut on the fold. That's the fold down here. And that just means for new sewers, you put that against the fold of the fabric. It doesn't have to be folded in half. You can fold it anywhere. Um, usually just along the length of the fabric, though. This edge here is the outer edge. That's the bit that sits at the end of your sleeve. And then here is the lower edge. Now, I've already turned that up and put a nice clean edge on it. So that's going to be the bit that sits against your sleeve. Now, this is a side panel, which is just a rectangle. And what you want to do is get your raw e your nice edge there and bring it around like that. So these, I'll just do that again. So if you have it like that, what we want to do is bring those seams round like that. And what she and she's done this a few times, it's very clever, is rather than there being a side seam, she brings the pattern pieces around the side of the body. And this is this is also it's a bit of a, a trademark sort of move okay. of of, uh, of so difference is to do this. And it creates these lovely different shapes. Um, and then you just, and then you end up attaching the sleeves in slightly different ways to what you would normally. So you haven't got a flat garment as such; you've got something that's a bit more three-dimensional. So then we'll just sew across one and a half centimeters on this pattern, as is the law. Just sew straight across those two pieces. Because that's a little bit, I think, you might sit there scratching your head looking at the instructions. But actually, when you get your head around it, it's quite simple. There we go. There's the other side. Now, if oh, you look okay. at it from the side, 
that's how you'll see it. You'll see yeah. when you're wearing it, only that part of it, and that's where your arm pops out. But when you look at it from the side, you'll see it. It's like a hood. Yeah. Okay, that's clever. It makes a nice, neat finish. Well, it sits nicely, doesn't it? Yes, yes, I exactly. Like that. Um, now, let's put those to one side. Now, it does have an option for pockets. Everybody likes a pocket. I love a pocket. Now, let's get... I've already sewn in. Now, it's an inseam pocket, which are nice and simple to put in. There are lots of ways you can sew these in. So, on the front piece, I have put one ear on there. Oops, move it up a bit. I have put one ear on there already. So, now what we need to do is line up one of these side pieces to do exactly the same thing. Now I've cut my two ears out of the same fabric if I can find it, but you could sew the other ear out of the other fabric. Oh, In for fact, a two-tone pocket. I haven't got a pair, never mind, it doesn't matter for this purpose. I've cut them, the, not the right okay. way, but it's fine. It doesn't matter, D don't do what I've done. But there we go, so we'll just line it up like that. So you could have a blue one there. That would be a nice touch have a light blue one and we'll just pin this into place like so and um, nail it on the machine now the alternative way to do this is to essentially build the pocket on one side of the garment have you ever seen this rather than have one pocket piece one side or one the other yeah. and just going around the whole lot like that. You build the pocket onto one side. So oh yeah, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, okay. like the front. So you build it onto the front. Right. And then you uh, just all you have to do is to connect the two sides is just to go straight yes. down. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the method has a name, but uh, I believe Jen Hogg Formerly of the Sewing Bee did a, a blog post about it on Juki Club's blog oh, okay. a little while ago. I'm pretty sure it's Jen or Mercedes. So is this an easier way to do it, do you think? Um, this is probably a more straightforward way. Well, I don't know. They're probably as easy as each other, really. Right. It's just different ways of approaching the okay. same thing. And then you'll press that open and then you'll go down and you go around the whole lot and I've realised I put that on the wrong way around. But that's what you'll do. Yes, so that's on the wrong fine. side of the piece. Yeah, no, I know, but that's <laughs> fine. We know what you're doing. So what you'll do... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You'll line up your ears like this and you'll sew around it. I could do it. It just means the seam's going to be the wrong way around. And you'll go... You go all the way mm. around and back up there. But let me show you how this top part goes together, because this bit might fox you. You could just ignore the pockets. If you don't want the pockets, just miss them out and just sew straight down it. Because uh, let's put the front to the back, actually, and then I can show you. Something to be careful of when you're cutting it out, because this foxed me, is the front and the back pieces, although different, are marked up on the same pattern piece. Right. So you do have to be careful. I'll, get, I'll grab the pattern piece and show you. I've not seen it done this way before. It's an interesting way to do it, but I don't want anybody to do what I do and to cut the neck off. Oh, I, yes, I see what you mean, yes. So you've got... So where you have the, to kind of do the front first and then Yeah, you've got the back neckline and the front... So I just went front neckline and cut it out, and I thought, well, where's my back piece? Oh, OK. I, I guess it's a way of saving paper, isn't it? It is. It means you can get it onto, onto less paper. <coughs> and because other than that, all these pieces are these two so pieces. So what you do you do? Do you cut one and then cut it off and then stick I it back together? I think so. Well, I cut <coughs> it off thinking, and then I had to get that back out of the bin and stick it back on again right. to, to do the back piece um, because that, it wasn't going to work otherwise. Um, so that's how I did mine. So, yes, you need to keep that little piece if you want to do it again to be able to make it okay. a second time. So let's sew this at the shoulders, and then I can show you how you get the side panel in. Because you're doing something a little interesting. The frill is optional. Let's talk about the frill. There's a nice little frill at the bottom, isn't there? But you don't have to pop it on, or you could reshape it to your own needs. Right. That would be another way of dealing with that frill. 
Um, so it's, instead of having a gather, you can have a, a straight panel that has an angled edge to it. Yes, I see. So you it mean. just has like a little bit of a, um, like like a bit of a flange. Like a pelmet. L like a pe peplum. Peplum. Pelmets are on it's curtains. A word, isn't it? Peplum. Oh, I love a peplum sleeve. Yeah. So it have a kick. Yes. It, rather than a big frill. I've, I've made one of the so different dresses, and I put a peplum sleeve on it, really long. Mm, do love them. So that would look nice, actually. Yeah. And you could just take, I'll show you the pieces in a minute, and you can just take the same pieces and just resize it. So I'm doing the side now that won't have a pocket if you didn't want one, because ladies hate pockets in clothes, don't they? <laughs> Never. <laughs> ladies add pockets to their clothes. That's fine. You know, look at someone and you think, Am I doing that right? I've had one of those moments. Oh, really? <laughs> but it's fine. You doubting it? I was doubting, doubting myself. Because I got to the top and I thought, well, that doesn't well, look that right. Well, that doesn't fit. Um, but it does. So you need to keep pinning mm. because the top of the sleeve needs to match the top of this. So you might want to mark where the centre, where the oh, fold okay. of your sleeve piece was, which I haven't. But you'll have. You won't be you won't be racing through it like me. Then you have to, so you, are you with me? Yeah, I'm totally. So I've pinned it from the bottom, ignore that piece, mm. uh, all the way up to the top of the shoulder, and then we want to come back down the other side. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you, I guess, because you've made the side with the sleeve in, so you just sew it in all the way round, and yes. then the sleeve is sitting within it, got it? Yeah. It's, uh, I've not seen a shape like it, but it's very clever. Well, it's actually, yeah, once you understand, <coughs> once you've read the instructions and understand it, it's, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So it's quite nice. It is. It's nice to do things that are a bit different. And it's quite a nice adaptable pattern, I think. You could do lots of things. You can mess around with the colour, with the colour placement of your fabrics if yes, you wanted that's true. to. Um, yes. You could do it in a block colour. Um, or you could have it all in stripes and have the stripes all running in different directions. Oh, that's true. That might be fun. Yeah, so once you've sort of worked it and you've got, got the size right and it fits you, you could make lots of I mean, You could make it longer as well. So if you didn't yeah. want it to be a shift dress and you wanted it to be a bit longer, you could. But having that um, side panel in, it's like almost wearing a T-shirt underneath it. Mm. It is. It is. I did something like... And it's like, slimming as well. Well, I did something like this on my um, tennis dress I made on the sewing bee and I panelled it because it was a 70s pattern I used and it did have panels okay. so I panelled it in different colours I did a black and a hot pink mm. but I instead of doing it repeating it the same on the front and the back so you'd have like black and then pink on the sides mm. or whichever way around I did it like a like a humbug so, oh, so okay. it was alternate all the way around oh nice just to, and you could do the same with this you can have yeah a, like blue light blue and, and then sort of alternate and it. And alternate it all, yeah, as, would as look lovely, around, actually. Or, or create more panels. Well, I quite like the denim look with this, with the alternating denims. I think that's lovely. There we go. So, so this is what you'll have. Let me just open it out so you can see what I've done. I haven't quite fitted it in properly yet. I need to do a bit more jiggery-pokery to get it to fit properly. But ignore that. Yeah, that see, those colours do go, <coughs> do go <coughs> together really well, don't they? So what we're looking at is uh, the back and the front and the side panel here, which has the little sleeve fitted in at the top. And you need to make sure that crease of the top of the sleeve is on the top oh, of the that seam. Seam, oh, okay. seam up there. That's why I say you need to check your, maybe mark with a bit of pen or a bit of chalk or whatever, yes. where that fold is on those sleeve pieces so you can get that. And then once you've sewn it all in, it's only pinned at the moment. Ooh, you'll have that nice. nice. No, that is a lovely colour work. That, that nice effect. It works really well, doesn't it? Mm. And you can always see where the stripes would go. You can have stripes that way, stripes that way. Yeah, that's And then true. this piece is on the fold. And it's slightly angled, so they would go off at the angle slightly a bit more like that. And also that sleeve piece is different. Is a separate piece, isn't it? Yes. So that could be a different colour as well. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's not the same piece. It's almost like that dress, the white one with the coloured panels. What's it? Do you, know the, do you know what I mean? It's like a 60s thing. Yes, yes, yes. Someone will tell us the name, won't they? Some clever person. Um, 
Yeah, I know exactly the one you mean. Where it's black, white, white, black. Yeah, that kind of thing. That was the one that the um, Queen of Spain wore. Is there still a Queen of Spain? Yes. Oh. Have you ever seen the classic photo? I saw <coughs> I mentioned it on air. So the Queen of Spain was giving away awards to all these prominent people, like um, awards for sort of science and literature and things. Mm. And she had this dress on, absolutely beautiful, black, white, white, black. And then this lady who was a professor of something came up and she was wearing the same dress. No. So the two of them were on the stage. And they're very, very striking dresses. Put in, have you got the picture? Queen of Spain mango dress, you have to Google. Look. How? You've got to show us. I did make, I did. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> that is, <laughs> which one's the Queen of Spain? Yeah. And, they, and it's a dress which, for mango as well, so it's like 50 quid or something. So which I one's think the Queen of Spain? Then? The one on the left. Oh, the one on the left. But can you imagine, you know, you go to something like that in such a striking dress thinking you are the only one and then the person, you're sitting there in the audience going, oh, gosh, she's got the same dress on as me. Oh, no. But it's a mango dress for, yeah. for 50 quid. Yeah, I know. So I mean, after that. I suppose that's, uh, it shows that she's... Exactly. She's and then it's sold out. 10 grand on a dress I or know. whatever. It's just hilarious though. But you imagine being in the audience thinking, oh, no, I can't go home and change. And she's got the, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Oh, what about fella? Funniest things, funniest things. Um, okay. Should we, should we talk about the, the frill? Yes, at the, the bottom, frill. The, the, the frill film thing. So it is designed as a frill. I've sewn it together. So what you get is this, if you do it in the right order, is this big. Oh, so the frill is in a double colour as well. It is. Well, it doesn't, match. Have, it doesn't have to be, but it is. So the idea is, according to the pattern, is that you match the side piece, if I just move that up like that, you match the side uh, bits of the frill to the side pieces of the dress, but of course you could switch that over, and so that's, a, so you need to gather it up, so you need to gather it up into that kind of size, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to, you could take this piece, and if you angled it, so you would, if I get the pattern piece actually. Yeah, so how do you turn a frill into a peplum? Uh, have I just lost the pattern piece over the edge of the table? I think I might have done. I'll have a look. I think I've, let me just... Uh, oh, sorry, I've got it. I've got a pen. I'm loving the apron. Is it useful? Is that all that fell down? Mm. I thought there was something else. It's very useful apron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would like a central line on my pocket because mine's pocket's flapping a bit. I was going to draw it actually, but I don't know whether you'll see this pen on my paper. Um, well, I can provide you with another pen. Oh, is that what colour? How about that? a laundry pen? A laundry pen will do. <laughs> so at the moment, your <laughs> graphics in for the laundry pen, please. Two ninety nine so permanent what, pen. So that's what your panel looks like at the moment, and then you'll run a gathering stitch all the way along there. But if you changed it, so it was that kind of shape instead maybe have a slight curve at the bottom, then you wouldn't have to gather it and you could just fit the dress straight in like that. So do you make the bottom the same width as what it is now? You'd need to make, to do this, you'd need to make the, the middle, the panels the same width as the dress. Yes. But then you have the extra width is on this bottom but piece But would you here. make the same, it the same width at the bottom as this? Or would that be too wide? Only if you wanted to gather it. Oh, okay, but you if couldn't you have it, it as wide as that no, for you peplum. Need it. Okay. You, you'd need to make it smaller. So if that was the dress, that would be the... Um, and does that bottom one have to be curved or is it straight? It doesn't have, well, I would curve it. I have tried to do a slight curve on there. Okay. But, and that would give you a nice uh, kind of right. all the way around. And then you just do the same to these side pieces as well. So you'd have the side piece rather than it being, that's what the side piece is now. Mm. And what you'd actually do is cut something that looks a bit like that. Okay. So then that, so that's a ch what you can choose. Yeah, that's just a bit of pattern hacking. Don't tell Laura from So Different, she'll murder me. Yeah, I know, but you can do that. Yes, you won't. Pattern desi designers love seeing their patterns hacked, they really do. So if you do hack it, or anybody's patterns, do still tag them in and tell them. Tell me if you do one of mine, because I love seeing what people do with it. And if you wanted to lengthen this to make it into a longer dress, where mm -hmm. would you lengthen it? Well, through the middle is you roughly is usually there aren't any lengthening guides on this one I don't think or maybe there are. I haven't got the piece. Of, yes, there might actually be, but where you're going to be lengthening it. If I look at a whole dress, 
Have I got that pan? Well, I've got the pan. I've realised I've got pattern pieces under my dress, under my dress. Look, that's why I couldn't see them. Oh, so have you, oh you've got them there. <laughs> uh, yes, so it's, ru it's roughly through the middle of the pocket. So um, oh, that's, that's really where handy. the pocket goes there. And that dotted line is the... Like that. And this dotted line here, you might not see it, it might be a bit faint, but that is where you can cut it in half and either shrink it down or, oh, okay. or make it bigger. There he's coming in, he's coming in. He's coming in, Look he's like, he's he's like, like a little um, drone, isn't he's, he? He's like a, an RAF fighter pilot, isn't he? I've often thought of Charlie as an so RAF fighter well, pilot. usually one summer, that's the line you'll need to cut and either uh, spread apart or bring back together. So that's so. So for this one pattern, thirteen fifty nine, you know, you can make it with a frill, without a frill, with a pail mitt, full length, neck, mid length. There's yeah. a lot you can do with, with it. With the pockets, without the pockets. Without you can the add pockets. a collar to it. And a collar. Add a collar. Even. Just grab a collar from another pattern. So there's no fastenings on this then. Well, that's the yeah. That's the good thing about uh, so different dresses. Mm. Yes, I think I'm right in saying she doesn't do any fastenings. It's all just. Wow. No zips, and no buttons. I don't think I've ever seen a button or a zip on any of her patterns. Um, well, we have got two other of her patterns here. Should we check those? Should we check those? So we've got the Reva jacket. Again, this is from the Layer Up range. So this range from So Different is a collection of contemporary patterns that work together for a layered look. And all of, and this one's sold out. The Reva jacket sold out. Save your breath. No fastenings on that one anyway. What about the other one? And before I say it, Aurora, there's the Aurora there. Oh, we have got this one. So again, this is the Aurora, Aurora jacket. So you can see this is all from the same range because in fact, the lady who's wearing the apron on the front of the apron pattern is on the front of this one. So it is, they, little... all of these work together for a layered look. Oh, and there's a little picture of them all there. So this jacket is a boxy unlined jacket, ideal for wearing over a long dress. It has slanted lower hemline that drops down at the back and darts at the bust. There are generous facings and the option of full or three quarter length sleeves. So I tell you what this would be, if you're fancying that patchwork jacket thing. That's that, the one. That's the pattern, isn't it? It is. Because there's no fastenings. <laughs> well, and that's, because that puts people off yeah, sometimes. Puts, yeah, definitely. You're thinking, oh no, I've got to do a zip, I've got to work some buttonholes uh, or rouleau loops or whatever it might be but it's not always essential. Well, and also this is easy as well. So look, there's the picture at the back of it so you can see what that looks like. But if you wanted to do your patchwork jacket, this would be ideal for it. Absolutely. So that one is 13.59 as well. So what were they before? Or were they reduced? Yes, yeah, so these all, the patterns were all 16.99, but we've got 20% off today. Oh, fabulous. Just off these patterns. What a treat. What a treat, especially what for you, treat. especially for you, Mark. Yeah. So, thirteen fifty nine. Whether you want the Herbert apron, the Aurora jacket, or the Solis tunic, um, all of the fabric bundles for the um, Herbert apron have sold out. But we still have the fabric bundles for the Solis tunic left. All on the website, sewingstreet.com. Just click on Watch Live and scroll down from there, and you will see them all. And if you've got any questions or you want to see any of them again, just let me know. I can send them in. Um, I'm going to go for a break now while Mark needs, needs a little rest Don't for an hour. Don't leave me alone here. Oh, yeah. no, I'm going to get yeah, and you can carry on for an hour and I will see <laughs> you back here. Yes. Mark is going to go for a break. We're both going to have a couple of minutes break. I'll be back with you and I'm going to talk about the design wall and um, April I will answer your question when we come back. And I've got lots of other sewing tools and fantastic thimble containers. You are going to love these. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you back in a couple of minutes time. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. 
Hey guys, it's Sarah Davies here. I just want to say you have got to tune in on Monday because it is going to be a big day. I'm going to be in the studios and I am taking over. I'm going to be on Sewing Street Live from 8 o'clock in the morning, Jewelry Maker from 11 o'clock and then Hobby Maker from 1 o'clock. Now, when we do one of our big takeover days, trust me, it is a day you do not want to miss. We've got goodie bags, we've got some amazing special deals, I've got a ton of demonstrations, brand new product launches, I've got the team in with me. It is going to be epic, so whatever you do, do not miss it. Whether you're a sewer, whether you love your jewellery making, whether you love your paper craft, we've got something for everyone. So I'll see you on Monday, 8 o'clock on Sewing Street, from 11 o'clock on Jewellery Maker, and from 1 o'clock on Hobby Maker. We'll be there all day. I can't wait to see you there. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes 
all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Town Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PP all day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Sewing Street, I hope you enjoyed that last hour. I've had to give the apron back. Um, but luckily, I think Mark seems to have left the sample he's made, so I think I might have that. Um, if you've only just joined us, you probably wonder what I'm on about. Anyway, this hour is great. We've got so many tools here. It's lovely, but tools and products are nice, really nice, They're quite unusual things as well. I'm going to start off with these because I absolutely love these. So. We've got three. They're, th they're called thimble holders. They're not for holding... Th well, you could hold thimbles. You need quite a lot to put in it. Um, I've just filled mine with this. So with, there's a rose gold one, a gold one, and like a opal opalescent sort of pearly one. That's a big word, isn't it? They are... I'm going to find a tape measure one moment. Oh, where's the tape measure's gone? That's all right. Oh, it's fine. We have a tape measure. I'm back. I'm back. So, just so you know how big they are, they are five inches tall and at the top they are like four and a half inches diameter. So you can fill them. Like I've put in mine, I've put scissors, rotary, rotary cutter, laundry pen. So these are six, now that's called white, but it is like open. 
it is like um like a pearl it's got that kind of pearly feel to it um so if we have got a special deal though so you can buy them at 6.99 each which means they would be 20 pounds and 97 pence for all of them but we're gonna have a bundle um they're really lightweight so they're not like they're not like sort of ceramic heavy i think they must plastic but they're really solid they're not like you know they're not bendy at all brilliant for putting on your sewing table i've got three pairs of scissors so look at that oh i've got a pointy thing now 17.97 for all three so you save three pounds they're gorgeous aren't they so if you want all three you can have them all in time so i've got um a rubber bucket a similar size this sounds odd doesn't it but it is a rubber bucket and i keep all of my um I've got a scissor rack but I keep other things like the pens and the pencils so I have a mug on my desk one's got all of my marking pens another one's got all of the smaller tools I've got one that's got my point turners and pokey tools and that kind of thing so great to have all three of them but also get what get all three because you're saving three pounds keep one and give them away so they look they do look like thimbles so like you've got the one at the bottom, I'd take the sticker off the bottom because uh, you can and then underneath it's just flat. But it looks like a thimble, it's just lovely isn't it? You could put um, a succulent or a cacti in it, look quite nice wouldn't it? But they're so pretty. <laughs> yeah, so Ben Ben owns 31 houseplants, so you're going to need quite a lot of these bundles Ben, to be honest. But they're so lovely to keep stuff in. Fill it with sweets, put it in the middle of the table. But they are ideal for your sewing room. Just to keep, you know, at the end of the day when everything's a right mess. And this is why I have quite a lot of storage in my. I've got the, I've got the scissor wheel thing. Can't remember what it's called. Is it the scissor caddy? The circular wooden thing. Um, so I can easily put all of those away. And then I have several mugs and my rubber bucket that I just put all the stuff in. And it's so much easier to get hold of. Because the problem is... When you put it all away into boxes and stuff, it's not easily accessible, so that you, so you end up... I've just realised that iron's still on. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it was ticking. You know, iron's tick. So you can buy them all individually if you just want one, but we, just stock update, we only have seven of the bundle left, and you are saving three pounds. But if you're thinking, right, gifts, who would not love one of these? You could fill it up with a few things for them. You could even get... Um, a few fat quarters rolled up and put inside nice little present for someone but they are they are really solid but luckily because they're not china they're not going to break if you drop them and you can really fill them in and look you see i've put in a lot of stuff in here big things and it's and they're not toppling over but lovely way to keep your sewing room tidy but in style Brilliant for pens as well. You could have some in the kitchen with all your, you know, the pens. Could never find a pencil in my house. So I've tried to keep a pot of, in the kitchen, I have like kitchen scissors and pens and pencils all in one pot. But they are lovely, aren't they? I well, I, the reason we did them as three with a special bundle because it's quite hard to choose. I don't know. Maybe the rose gold one I like the best. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, the rose gold is the most popular on its own, actually. So... I mean, even at six ninety nine, that's a good price, isn't it? But if you really like them and you can't decide, but they're just lovely storage items. There we go. Fill it with all your scissors and rotary cutters. Actually, I do have quite a large collection of rotary cutters, so <clears throat> I do have one pot that just has my rotary cutters in because you can never have too many. Right, if everyone who's got them in their basket checks out, they're gone. So if you got them in your basket and you really want them please do check out but they are still available on their own it's just that special bundle right so i'm going to do the k facet design wall so if you've never seen this before you might think what is that gray square hanging up behind you it's designed and used and and <coughs> developed by k himself and he uses it when he's designing quilts so you know when you want to see what fabrics look like so you might get on your hands and knees and lay them on the floor and then you can't really see them properly with the design wall you can stick the fabric to it so it is actually like a brush cotton it's printed in gray with this grid so that it's easier for you to line up the um the pieces it comes in a box <clears throat> you can see it's definitely cave's design so it comes in here's the k facet design wall 
Um, the size of it is 115 by 150 centimetres and the grids are two inches. <coughs> now, April sent me in a message earlier and said, I want to join them together, I want a bigger design. Well, how should I join them? Well, April, what I would say is that you need to feel the grain of the brushed cotton. So if you straight your hands down, you can feel it going. That's down, like, like a fur or velvet. And if you go that way, it goes up funny. So you need to join them so that the, um, the brush cotton goes the same way. So you could either join two side by side or you could join them one on the end. Depends how, what you wanted to do and what sort of size you wanted, but just make sure, so it doesn't matter which way you join them, that they're going downwards so that the brush cotton goes down. Right, so this is what you do with them. I'm gonna use a um, charm pack, which we do have as well. This is a K facet charm, charm pack. So say I'm trying to think, right, I'm gonna make a really, really simple quilt just of squares, or I've made some half square triangles ready, but I want to know what it will look like. So I'm gonna use the lines to hold it up, to follow it, and then you just, yours will be hung on the wall, so it'll stay up a bit better. So I think, well, shall I put that one there, and that one there, I almost need two hands to stick them on. <coughs> right, and then I'm gonna put that one on. And then you see the grid, you can see, oh, that one's falling off. You need to press it, you need to press them on. You do need it a flat, not, not hanging, that's a bit annoying, once you give it a little press. So then I think, oh no, actually, maybe I want, oh, there's a stripey one. Shall I put that one next? Um, yeah, you do need it against a flat wall, not hanging in space. And then I put the, I've got a pink one here, and I put that one on. So now I can see what they look like. I and mean, this is to give you an idea of fabric. So then what you can do, maybe you stick a few of them on. Um, once you give them a press, they do stay on it because it's hanging. Stand back a bit or take a photo and then you can see whether you like it or not. So this is 27.99 and Ben has said we can have a one-off deal today. Just today, he's gonna give, <coughs> take the PMP off. So we'll take the PMP off, £24.4. So if you buy this just today, it's like free PMP because he's just taking it off. Oh, thank you very much, Ben. That's a fantastic deal. So free PMP on this, really, isn't it? Because he's taking it off. And on anything else you buy as well. So I've put that up there now. If I stand back, I think, oh, those two colours together, that's no good. So, right, I'll pop that colour there. Um, it's right, and then we'll put, oh, that one looks nice. So because you've got the grid, you see, you can really see in their two inch squares, you can really place them exactly. Stand back, have a look, see what you think. You could then take a photo of it, which often gives you a better idea of the look of it. I mean, I'm using quite big squares here, but you can use this menu. And he uses these all the time. Because I've I, um, seen him using them as well. When you've got it hang, all you need to do is have it hanging somewhere but not wafting in the wind because it needs a little press but i like the fact that it has the grid and the, that he this is something he uses all the time so like if you see in the picture here he's put hexes on here so because you've got the grid you can really lay it out and get it right but it is a very good visual way of very quickly seeing if something goes together. So maybe you've made loads of pinwheels or half square triangles, or it is just squares, or it's hexes. Stick them all up on there. Um, don't forget that that special price, £24.4, is Ben's special offer, where he's just taken off the P&P. So if you want the design wall, um, and obviously, you know, this is for this size. If you wanted to see what it would look like for a whole quilt, then you could buy a second one and put them side by side or one below the other. And then you'd have a really, a really big quilt size to really lay it out. What it means as well is that when you come to piecing something together, stick them all on here. You then don't, you can take them off row by row. So, you know, when you're making a quilt and you've got like, I've got to sew the top row together, then the second row, then the third row, take the top row off, sew it together. You could stick it back on. Take the second one. It means you don't need that big floor space. And also you don't need to pile it all up in labels. And you can very easily see, I made um, a rainbow quilt from half square triangles and it took me ages. I was trying to get a nice graduation from one corner to another rather in rows. It took me ages of crawling around the floor, picking one up, moving it there, swapping it over. But on here, it's so easy. You can just keep sticking them on. You know, and also, if you had a quilt, you could see how it would look in a, in a specific room as well. So, 
There we go. But you know, if you were making quilts for people or you wanted to, they wanted to see how it looks, because it is just a visual thing. Or maybe you're trying to decide the size of something. So like now, now I've got a cushion front. Do I want a 16 inch? Do I want an 18 inch? Would it look better? And sometimes it's so much easier to peel one of these off and move them around. So that's fab, isn't it? Fab. And don't forget that is your free PMP de deal, which won't be available after today. Oh, no, that's a special one. At midnight, that's going back up. We have sold loads of these in the past. Um, you have a look, see all the reviews, see what other people think of them. They are brilliant. Right, I'm going to put another one. Oh, bottom screen. Brilliant value money and so useful from Caroline. Well, it is even better value for money. Now it's free PMP. I could do this all day. Actually, I would have them. I would actually be quite careful. I'd have them all lined up and nicely across the grids. Very simple idea, very well executed. Will help to take a better overview of quilting blocks and any attempted designs. Thanks. That's a great review, Christy. I think it, I mean, that is really valid. Second purchase, highly recommended for quilters. It really is. And another course, there's loads of reviews. <coughs> great idea. The quality is what one expects. Thank you from Amanda in Argyle. These, the FIFO ones, are totally independent reviews. They don't have anything to do with us at all. So we know they're good. But they, when you have got to decide, so like the quilt kit that I was showing at eight o'clock, and I explained that um, you just need to make sure all the fabrics are evenly distributed. With that, you could create all the flying geese, the half square triangles, cut out all the sashing blocks, and then assemble the whole quilt. And then immediately you'll know if you've got a ginger fox in the wrong place. If you weren't watching at eight o'clock, you wonder what I'm on about ginger foxes. It was one of the fabrics. <laughs> there we go. Now, obviously, you look thinking like these, but they do, they really do stick. You just need to, you just need to press them against a solid wall, not, we've got mine hanging in the thing. So anyway, that's the design wall, the design wall. So if you, um, if you've got any questions about it, or if you've had one and you've got any reviews, let me know. Um, right, should we go through the K fabrics then? Because these are fab. Um, have, have we got any of the five inch ones left now, um, Ben? And the code on it is SOUI72. Because I know we were low in stock of the five inches. Okay, it's gone now, it's stuck on the wall. Um, and what about WAUI85? Okay, I'll leave that there. I'll have to put that one back or I'll forget. Okay, um, we have the 10 inches though. So these were brand new um, just the other day when they CZ UI 06. What day was it? So um, these are brand new, brand new CAFE, oh, brand new, very recently brand new. Um, Cave um, charm pack. So this is a 10 inch charm pack and you get 42 pieces in here. Um, this collection is Neptune. So it's nice sort of blues and greens. Look at these. Absolutely gorgeous. Like you've got tealy petrol colours. You've got some of this. I love the, um, the stripe. I think it's called something like regimental stripe. It looks like ties or regimental ties. You've got water lilies. You've got that lovely, um, almost like a slice of fossil or gem. Flowers. I mean, it's very, it's from the Cave Collective. So they are designed um, by Cave, Philip Jacobs and Brandon Mabley all together. They do a few each and then the colorways all put together. So this one is Neptune. So you've got blues and greens and the Cave sort of signature violets. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the rainbows in there. Aren't they lovely? Again, that's like um like a gemstone cut in half. Um, big fat spots. Feathers. So that's lovely. So $44.99 and you are getting 42 10 inch squares. Extremely good value for money. Actually, it's better value to buy a 10 inch charm pack than a five inch. Shouldn't say that, but it weighs. If you work out, because you're getting four times, you're getting four times as much, but there's not four times the price. Mm, I will tell you, but 
it's always better if you like them to buy the 10 inch because you get more fab because you're getting four times so much fabric now we've got exactly the same charm pack but this one is called mars so again 42 10 inch squares for 44.99 um similar fabrics but it's just a different colorway so you've got lots of reds and pinks we've got rainbows we've got big flowers so you've got that same print i showed you but the really lovely purpley backgrounds this is very warm this is kind of hot summer isn't it absolutely lovely um perfect for your cave patchwork jackets all you need to do is pick up the pattern from the last hour buy the charm pack you can make your own patchwork jacket. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Look, love that one. It's like cabbages. So that's that 10 inch charm pack. Um, now, fat quarters. Fat quarters. Just gonna move them out of the way. Should we do, is that one Neptune? Yeah, so Neptune. So in here, you've got 20 fat quarters. So a fat quarter, if you don't know, is half a metre of fabric cut in half. So you've got 50 centimetres down, 20 inches, and 22 inches across. That's one fat quarter. So let me show you the ones that you get in here. I'll just open one out so you can see what it looks like. Now, obviously, this is free spirit fabric, it's beautiful quality, quilting weight cotton, and it's designer fabric, so it is beautiful. It's very, very soft. It's quilting weight, but it's extremely soft to use. So that's what one fat quarter looks like. I love these. These are great. You can use them, make yourself a whole quilt, or just keep the fat quarter thing, right, well, I'm going to make three new cushions and a tote bag. I'm going to use the other one for lining. I want to make a little zip purse for, um, to a friend or something. So loads and loads of different things that you can do. So this is the, um, the Neptune fat quarter pack, all of these different lovely fabrics, same ones as I showed you that were in the charm pack. $89.99, fantastic price for that. Um, and then we have the same charm pack, um, fat quarter pack in, um, in Mars. So the same colours that I showed you in the layer cake, but they are fat quarters. So you've got pinks and oranges and ochres and greens. So if you wanted fat quarters rather than the, um, the, layer, the 10 inch layer cakes, then that's the one for you, $89.99. Um, and we've got the same two in design rolls. So these are two and a half inch strips cut across the full width of the fabric. And there are 40 of them. So this is the Mars one. Now these are ideal for very, very simple strip piecing. Just join them all together in rows to make a really simple bag, cushion, quilt, jacket, whatever. Or join them end to the end, use them for binding really 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 nice for using as a lining for something and i've often used design rolls just join them together to work, make one big piece of fabric and they look sensational and you can really ombertone them as you, when you join them together or just go completely random uh, then we have the um, neptune design roll again you've it's blues and greens just exactly you can see on the end it's all blues and greens again lovely to join together again really good for patchwork clothing because of the colors and then you can move the colors up so you can start with the dark and move it all the way through or just go completely random loads and loads of different patterns around just put into pinterest jelly roll quilt jelly roll cushion you'll find loads of different patterns ideal for a tote bag because so easy to join it, them together, press the seams to one side, you've got one big piece of fabric and it looks sensational. So that's the K fabric. Should we do my, can we do this light? Because I love this light. Look at this. This is called reverse lighting. Now this is very stylish, would look lovely on a bedside, look lovely um, in an office situation, but equally very good for when you're sewing. You could just put it, because it's, um, it's very lightweight and durable, you can, you can put it um, just on your the arm of your chair when you're sewing. So this is what it does. It's got a little handle, okay, got a little handle, it's very lightweight. It feels very smooth, almost velvety. Um, you can increase, the light 
um, brightness <laughs> by just pressing it. So, but like this, this is warm light. So this is lovely to have in your study or on your bedside table where you want it really soft. But I'm going to turn it upside down. And you watch. Look at that. It has now become daylight. So if you're sitting there in the living room, you're doing a bit of sewing, a bit of knitting or something, or you're beside your machine, you can't see colours properly, you can't see very well, you just turn it, you choose whether you turn it over and then you can just press it and it will turn off. And then when you press it back on, that increases... Look at that. And then you press it here to increase the brightness up to you. It's got, in fact, it's got lots of them. Six different ones, yeah. Um, it's really lightweight as well, so it's really good if you need to take a proper light away with you anywhere. And the fact, look, we turn it over, and then you can see the light, the warm light. What have I got in front of that? That. That. There, you can see the warm glow coming up, and it has a little handle. Now, carry it around. Yeah, be like so actually be really good. So it's um, it has a plug to plug to charge it, charge it. So you just plug it in, charge it. Uh, yeah, it would have been really good. Yeah, it'd be really good in your tent, wouldn't it? I'd like this. Yeah, should have taken that with me to Glastonbury. It'd been brilliant, wouldn't it? Because it's you just plug it in, you charge it, so it doesn't need to have power with it. So it's it'd be very ideal. You need a little torch, wouldn't it? But I think because you can have that warm light and because it's actually a really attractive, sleek design, then it looks lovely to put in your um, office or your work, or just somewhere where you need a little bit of extra light. And then when you want some daylight, there we go. You can sort of see it. It's like one of those lava lamps, the daylight arrives. Now it's 63.99, but it's available on three split payments. So you can pay 2133 today, have it sent straight to you, and then um, next month pay 2133 and the month after. It doesn't cost you anything, it's totally interest free. It just allows you to spread the cost if you want to do that. When you order, it will ask you how you want to do it. But if you need some new lighting, you want something that's a bit sleek, or you know, you want to buy a present for someone, you think, oh, I don't, oh, I don't know what to get them. Um, you know, sometimes particularly like, teenage boys and men really hard to buy for I had to buy my nephew a present they nightmare um, but who wouldn't like one of these I love that okay um, right should we do I've got two kits here two kits um, these are from Amanda Little from the Little Quilt House Wide flower cushion and scented sachets. These are so lovely. So let me show you. In the kit, you get the instructions to make the um, cushion and the sachets. Um, Amanda is a fantastic quilter. All of her instructions are really good. So she explains in detail exactly how to make the cushion and then how to make this, the sachets as well. But this is the panel that comes with it. Look at this panel, it's beautiful. So, actually I'm gonna lay, I forgot, I've got an overhead here, amazing. So this is the cushion front, and it says, may your fields always be filled with wildflowers and your heart with love. So that's the cushion front. This is very, very, sim very simple. Then you've got the cushion back top, and the cushion back bottom. So it's um, it has a zip in it, but it's divided into thirds. Obviously exactly the same print as that, which is lovely, isn't it? And then this is the scented sachet, hanging loop, hanging loop. And then this is for binding the cushion. So you put that, if I show you in the picture, you put the binding all the way around the edge of the cushion. Um, Charlie made a crash cushion yesterday. Can you believe it? He finished off Delphine's poppy cushion. So now you need to make this one. But isn't that lovely? So this is from Amanda and it is gorgeous. I love that. It's very simple. I mean, that's 1998. You've got the instructions, the exclusive printed panel, and it will make a whole cushion. 
and we've also got another colourway I'll show you in a minute. But what you could do as well is you could make two cushions from this. So you could use that for the front of one and then you could use that for the, the other one. And I like the fact it's got the binding on it as well. It's a really, really nice panel. And then the lavender sachet is a lovely um, coordinating purple gingham. But you've got fronts and back, you've got three of them. So you make three sachets or other things, coasters. So that's the lavender version, but there is another colourway as well. Right, this one is the sage version. So exactly the same um, instructions as with the other one. But this was just sage rather than lavender. So you've got the same um, print here. May your fields always be filled with wildflowers and your heart with love. So this is the same as the other one, but the binding is in a lovely soft shade of sage. That's hard to say, shade of sage. And the scented sachets have um, like a sage gingham. And you've got the hanging, three hang loops. So you make three scented sachets, a cushion, or you could use one for the cushion front, so you can make two cushions if you wanted. And then you've got the cushion binding all the way around the edge. 1998, that's fantastic, isn't it? It's the sort of thing that you see already made in a garden centre, isn't it? But what I would do with it, I would really embroider it. I think it, was, it would look beautiful embroidered. And do it before you make up the cushion. Could be machine or hand. But even if you were going to machine, don't even need to, if you, even if you don't want a free motion embroider, you can just do some green around the lines or echo along them. Or just by hand, do some running stitch around them. Use a few lazy daisies to do on top of the flowers. But it would look beautiful. Or you could even add some beads to it or buttons to really embellish it. But it's so pretty, isn't it? 1998 for that one. Great price. Um, Let's do a couple of books next. A couple of books, love a book. Ben likes a book, but he loves a bar of jello. Let's introduce Ben to the world of bar jello. Well, we've got two. I have got two bar jello books. I'm going to go um, braided bar jello to start with. Simple process dynamic designs. Now, if you've never heard of bar jello, it is a system where you sew together lots of strips of fabric that are cut to different widths. You then cut those strips the other way and then you join them all back together in a different order, which sounds massively complicated and it really isn't. There's a lot of maths involved in the people who design it. When they design it, you just follow the pattern, you cut the strips, you join them together. Look. So this has, um, Look at all of those quilts. So these are bed-sized projects. I mean, they are stunning, aren't they? I love the name. This one's called Hoses in the Shed. Um, um, here's the project, all tangled up. So isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's absolutely stunning. And it explains exactly how to do it. So if you've got jelly rolls or you've got scraps of fabric or you've got plain fabrics and you're not really sure what to do and you want to have a go at learning so else. I mean this quilt is 89 by 96 inches that's super king size bed and it does I mean I know look you look at it and go that's really complicated well someone has done all of the maths for you all you have to do is join the strips together like this then you cut them the other way and then you join them all back together and they are absolutely so let's do you like clove hitch and isn't it, I like the fact that it has coloured um, and numbered diagrams. That makes it a lot easier. Flip-flop. And you see, depending on how they're joined back together, I'm liking hoses in the shed just because of the name of it. I can see these are the hoses. Maybe that's the shed on fire. <laughs> that's why you need the hoses in the shed. But you see, there's a mixture, all different sorts of fabrics here. I mean, they work brilliantly. If you saw, we had bat new batik fabrics on air yesterday, it'd be brilliant for batik fabrics. Jewelry box, sneaker laces. Yeah, I'm not sure why that one's called sneaker laces. That's lovely, tackle box for fishing. Tangled angles. 
So these are, these are big quilts as well, 98 by 105 inches. I mean, this book, 14.99, how many projects have we got? 16, that's less than a pound a project. That's wild. If you've never tried Bargello before, honestly, this is fantastic because it does explain exactly I like that. My friend once told me that Bargello Quill should be set to music. Mine would be Overture to the Marriage of Figaro, obviously. But it does explain in detail. What music would yours be then, Charlie? Look at that one. Striped background fabric. Oh, nice bit of piano music there. That's lovely. And then these are a little bit smaller. So smaller scale, so this is a smaller quilt. So you could even start with the smaller ones if you wanted, if you wanted to get the idea of how to do it. Bar Jelly Jord. Right, then, if you want some more ideas, Bar Jello Quilts in Motion. This is actually by the same author. So I think this might be her first book. Yes, yeah, so this is probably the more the introductory book because there's a lot more information. So if you're new, if you're new to um, Bargello, this is probably the one to get. Batikiello. Oh, I like that one. So loads and loads and loads of designs in here. If you've wanted to have, have a go at Bargello, either of these books would be great. This is probably better for beginners because there's more intro, but just lots and lots of different designs. Hopefully that's given you some Bargello inspiration. Right, let's have a quick look at this machine. I'm just moving my iron. Oh, oh, I nearly, I nearly took the lady out then. Nearly took the lady out, there we go. So, this is one fantastic machine. This is the Elna Excellence 680 Plus. This is Charlie's favourite machine. Why is this your favourite machine then, Charlie? Ah, oh, it's because he started sewing with this machine. It is lovely. It is quite often one that a lot of our guests, when the guests come in and they're on air, we say, which machine do you want? A lot of them choose this. Because this has got all the bells and all the whistles. So, just to go through a few features for you, if you are thinking, I do need a new machine. Which one shall I get? Shall I go bottom of the range, top of the range? You know, you can buy a lot more expensive machines than this, so this isn't super, super top of the range, but this does everything you're ever gonna need it to do. It's a computerized sewing machine, so it does the thinking for you. You don't have to work out, have I got the tension right? Have I got the stitch width and stitch length? It will work that out for you. You can obviously override that and change things. But if you've only have, if you've never used a computerized sewing machine, it makes it sound like oh, it's computerized. I won't be able to understand it. Actually, the the whole point, and I would always recommend to people to buy a computerized sewing machine, is that you have to think less because it works it all out for you. It follows your movements and it's extremely robust. So you set what fabric you're using and it does it for you. I mean, it has got ridiculous. It's got 170 stitches. 170. Now you think, do I need 170 stitches? Well, yes, it's, they're not all just pretty flower stitches. A lot of them are utility stitches. So you've got 10 different buttonhole stitches, for example. You've, probably, you've got a lot of um, stitches for working on jersey, stretch fabrics, jeans, all different sorts, whether you want to do overcasting with them, whether you want a stretch stitch. So a lot of those stitches will make your particularly dressmaking a lot easier when you are using um, at the fact, even if you're using thicker fabrics like jeans, denims, canvases, fleeces, it's got the stitches that will do that. It's got an extremely large sewing space. That makes a difference when you're quilting. It also comes with the, um, the table the extension table. So you've got a large throat space here, but you've also got the extension table. So when you are quilting something big or you're working on a larger item, falls onto the floor and then that puts tension on the needle, won't happen because it does have the extra space there. Um, it has the sewing plates, which are brilliant because it, you can, it has all the different markings on them, even the angles as well, which a lot of sewing plates don't. So you can see what angle you're going on. It comes with loads of different feet. 
and lots of tools as well. So you've obviously, it comes with your standard um, quarter of an inch foot, but it also comes with the, um, the, the quilting foot. Gosh, dear, how does that go out of your head? The walking foot. So look, these are the accessories it comes with. Obviously a standard hood and a zip foot, you'd expect that. But it comes with not just a satin foot, but an open toe, toe one, an overlock. I mean, there's loads and loads in there. Comes with a darning foot, so really good for free motion embroidery. But it also has, when you want to do free motion, it's got a closed toe, an open toe, and a clear view. So that means when you're doing free motion, you can choose what sort of foot you want. It's got three different ones and it comes with the walking foot. Um, obviously, all of those other things, it's got a semi-hard cover, it's got the foot control, it has all of the things that you would expect it to. And the extra wide extension table is 150 by 30, it's a really, 50 by 30 centimeters, it's a really big space. Um, it has the guide bar for when you're using the walking foot so that you can quilt parallel lines. So whether you're dressmaking, you're home sewing, whether you're, um, doing curtain making, whether you're doing lots of upholstery, this is a fantastic machine. And it's just all the little things. So obviously, I mean, it's got the thread cutter, but I like the little things that it's got like the extra foot lift. So on the back, when you need, when you need to raise the foot a little bit more, and obviously you put the foot down, but and that's it up. But when you want to raise it that little bit more, because maybe you're hemming a pair of jeans, or maybe you're doing some embroidery where you've got your fabric stretched into a hoop and you need that little bit extra lift. It's just that kind of little extra lift that's on the leave on the back. So there's down, there's normal up. But having that little, I mean, it's just little features. But because this is the top of the range sewing machine, pretty much, it's got all of those extra features. So on the front of it, you can see it's got the, um, it's got the thread cutter. You can go slow and super fast with it. It's up to you. Um, you can choose with these machines, which I think is great, whether you want to use the foot pedal to start and stop or whether you want to use the button. And for a lot of people who have mobility issues or maybe you're in a wheelchair and you don't want to be using the foot pedal, there are issues with that, then having that start stop button I think is brilliant. It also means sometimes, I often get with my foot pedal, it gets sort of jammed under the table and I'm like, oh, I can't get it out. And you can really quickly stop it with that which is fab. Anyway, have a look at the reviews on our website, ask questions. It is a considered purchase. Don't expect you to throw into your basket straight away. But if you are needing a new sewing machine, you're thinking, I'm going to invest a bit more. This is ext extremely recommended. So I'm going to move out of the way. There we go. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's do, should we do a bit of yarn lane? because this is one of the best things. Every time we sell this on Yarn Lane, it sells fantastically. So there are two sorts of wool winders. There's the, um, the big bamboo one, which I do have, the, the wooden one, not bamboo, beech one. And then there's the, um, the smaller, more value one. Hang on. I'll have to get scissors out of my thimble pot. My handy thing, we should keep these thimble pots actually and they could look nice on the shelves. What, this one? Right, there's only five of these left. Now, these are fab. So you think, now why do I need to um, rewind a ball of yarn? Two reasons. If you're using hanks, you have to rewind. You cannot knit from a hank because it'll all get tangled up within seconds. Hanks of yarn tend to be more expensive because they often wind them into hanks when they're pure wool and you do not want to be wasting it. So you do have to rewind. If only I had a ball of wool, but I haven't got one. Right, so it has a clamp and you clamp it to your table. And as you can see, this is like kitchen work surface depth and it clamps onto that. I have one of these at home and I always use mine in the kitchen. I'm not sure why really. I think maybe because the work surface is higher and I find it easier when it's a bit higher, whereas my sewing table is a bit lower, but it will clamp to that size. Um, then you pop this on like this. Just push it in and then it has the arm. So what you do is you put your ball of yarn um, here or on the floor or in a box and then you um, wind this and it rolls it 
Oh, look, Becky's found me a ball of yarn. <laughs> very, I'm looking like, oh, it's a very knotted ball of yarn. Shall I cut it with some, do you think it's a bit tangled? It's a bit tangled. I'll have that end. Yeah, now, and this, and so that was number one reason why you need to rejoin, re, and this is number two reason, because this is what happens to yarn when it's not. So you know when you're knitting with a ball of yarn, when it's not wound, it flies across the floor, goes all over the place as you're knitting or you're crocheting, doesn't stay in one place. Also, at some point, it starts collapsing and then you need to rewind it. So I'm going to have to cut this off or I won't be able to do it very quickly. And let's hope that goes through. So you wind it around here, you put it around there. What I d tend to do, because it's really important to have the end, because you're going to you're going to be knitting or crocheting from the inside. So I put I'm going to put the end in there, and I'm just going to wind it a little bit to hold it in place. A bit like you know when you're winding a sewing bobbin, okay? Because you need to hold it in place. Right. So I guess you could use a bit of tape or something, but I just find if you just wind that, then right, then you just wind. So you just move that. Now, can you see as it's going round, it's sort of going round at an angle. And then, so if I always wind every single ball before I use it, because then you get this lovely, I'm going to only do a little bit, it will do, because this is really tangled. Even, be, even with this, like, even if it's like a 100 gram acrylic ball of yarn, then I will rewind it. So what happens is, I, don't, I can't rewind all of this one because it is really tangled. When you've done it, you will fill the whole thing and it will be a big ball. You just slide it off. You've then got a pre-wound little, it'll be bigger than this. It sits next to you, it doesn't move because you pull out the yarn from the centre and you knit from the centre, not from the outside. So this is fantastic, this one. Um, we have lost the price for this. Oh, okay. So it takes, I would say, five minutes tops to rewind a ball of yarn. These are extremely good price, $29.99. It means that if, whenever you buy a load of yarn, rewind it all. Also, it will sit on your shelves in nice little bundles. Um, and they are brilliant. There's only three of these left. I love, I mean, I've actually got both. I've got that one and I've got the beach one as well. Full instructions explain exactly how to use it and as you can see I didn't have time to do it but that's what it will look like. You just get a beautiful ball of yarn and also I think you know you've spent the money on the yarn you don't want it falling apart particularly if you've got cats. And I used to have cats I used to run off with it all the time and puppies. They do that as well. So it is a wonderf wonderful wonderful bite. That and a um, blocker is my favourite gadget. Oh, how long have I got? Oh, not long. Um, I'm just going to show you this one, but I'm not going to demonstrate it because we haven't got long. If you want, if you love the idea of a ball winder, but you want to buy the best, and also if you want to be winding, um, so you can do like a double knit and an Aran on that and on a four ply, but if you've got thicker yarn or lots of yarn or you're doing a lot of winding, I know a lot of people who make up their own kits or have shops. This is amazing. Shall I take it out? It winds faster and better and um, is extremely heavy duty. And... and an absolute treat as well. So I, I'm going to... Oh, it's all... Maybe I won't go. Oh, yes, I, I thought it was all stuck together. I just want to show you, because I have both of them. So it depends. If I'm in a bit of a hurry and I can't bother to get it all out of the box, I use the other one. But um, there we go. So it's beech wood, works in exactly the same as the other one. It comes with this lovely, the, um, the rubber band, which you have to remember to take, always retention. You can buy replacement ones as well. That's the only thing that can go wrong with this. Um, so you put your yarn through here and you wind. Your yarn goes through here and it winds onto here. 
but it just flows, it's beech wood. It comes with a clamp if you want to clamp it to a table or you can just hold it flat. But it winds absolutely beautifully. It will wind bigger balls and thicker yarn as well. It's 87.99, but honestly, if you rewind, particularly if you always knit or crochet with Hanks and you do a lot of rewinding, this is beautiful. You can also buy um, the Swift, which we have on the website that holds the um, skeins like this. Have a look. So that's that one. The, that's the, two, the two levels of ball winders, both of them I can highly recommend. Um, shall we just do these two pieces of fabric to finish? Because um, I quite like these. So I've got two really, really nice, um, they're like a canvassy weight fabric. So they're, they're thicker than your, than your quilting weight. You know the fabric that we've had that's got all the animals printed on? They're, they're that, kind of, that kind of weight. So they're a t it's like, um, like a linen effect on the back, but it's a tartan. So this one is a grey, well, a check. This one's a grey check. So this is heavier. It's brilliant for bag making, really good for cushions, covering chairs, nice for curtains as well because they've got that really nice weight to it. But I'm thinking, you know, I know we always sort of move into like doing Chris Christmas sewing. If you're thinking about your autumn projects and your autumn sewing, this is ideal. So that's your... Um, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> The graphics are not behaving very well today at all. So there we go. Five ninety nine for half a meter, which is amazing. Highland Dove Tartan. It's really good price, isn't it? And um, it's wide as well. I think it's 140, 150. Super wide. Um, and then finally, we have it also in another color. So here it is in... Um, like a rust autumn it's like a rust color i'd say there we go in a rust color so it's lovely if you're thinking i want to make some new cushions or really really good for bags that's quite nice isn't it 5.99 for half a meter pop it in your basket lovely um so thanks for joining me for this hour um i'm going to have a break for a couple of minutes and i'll be back with mark francis who is going to show us i'm turning around in circles how to make this gorgeous dress we've got loads of dress making fabrics as well that are absolutely ideal for it it's got shearing elastic in as well so i'll see you back here in a couple of minutes with mark who's going to show us how to make this dress Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harborough. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes, it's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Hey guys, it's Sarah Davies here. I just want to say you have got to tune in on Monday because it is going to be a big day. I'm going to be in the studios and I am taking over. I'm going to be on Sewing Street Live from 8 o'clock in the morning, Jewelry Maker from 11 o'clock and then Hobby Maker from 1 o'clock. 
Now, when we do one of our big takeover days, trust me, it is a day you do not want to miss. We've got goodie bags, we've got some amazing special deals, I've got a ton of demonstrations, brand new product launches, I've got the team in with me. It is going to be epic, so whatever you do, do not miss it. Whether you're a sewer, whether you love your jewellery making, whether you love your paper craft, we've got something for everyone. So I'll see you on Monday, 8 o'clock on Sewing Street, from 11 o'clock on Jewellery Maker, and from 1 o'clock on Hobby Maker. We'll be there all day. I can't wait to see you there. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Welcome back to Sewing Street and we've got another fab dressmaking hour and this time it's all about a dress and it's the Sussex Seamstress. So um, Mark's here and he's going to demonstrate how to make the Petworth dress. Dressmaking um, a dress, who would have thought? I know, that? but when you think dressmaking and it's not for not dresses. I know. But uh, why well, is it called dressmaking Well, then? Jen Hogg calls it garment making. But that would be make more sense, but no one else yes. does, do they? No, well, yes, this is it. It's always dressmaking. I feel a bit, as a man, I feel a bit odd, because people say you're a tailor. It's like, no, not really. That's, I'm a dress. That's, that's a whole other, but I'm not a dressmaker, because I don't really make dresses no, apart from here. apart from here. Yeah. Yes, because a tailor's kind of different, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a whole Is it like a chef or a cook? Yeah, exactly, I think so. A, a tailor is a very specific mm. set of skills. Yeah, so it is odd that it's called dressmaking. So we're garment making today garment making but we're making a dress in our garment making show so I'm going to let Mark <laughs> show you round the whole the whole dress so can you I'm going to put this with you um, yes. before we do the patterns so what are okay. the key features of the Petworth dress now, I've made this before <coughs> right and it's a really lovely one mm. excuse me <coughs> uh, so I've made it out of this beautiful fabric it's really light and really what is uh, it a is, is, it, it, is it a viscose? I wasn't sure. I wasn't. I can't. I remember. think it is a viscose. I think so. Uh, but you could do it out of so many fabrics, and it's so uh, versatile as well. You've got beautiful designings on this as well. On the sleeves, you have rows of shearing elastic, which we will, I will do shortly. Oh well, that would be good. Um, and that's a really beautiful detail. If you don't want to be doing with a cuff, yeah, then you can just pop this onto any end of any sleeve. And is that easy? Yeah. It's not okay. at first like, oh my god, I've got, to put, I've got to put elastic through my machine, but it's fine. You can do it by hand, 
but, but just do it by machine. No, I'm not going to show you that. And it's quite a nice finish, isn't it? Because I thought they look really tiny, so I had to go. But actually, mm. it fits really nicely. Depends on how you tighten it up. Yeah. So you can adjust it for your but own needs. But it gives needs. it a nice look, doesn't it? it feels yeah. Quite yeah, and it's got a nice wide sleeve here mm. as well. So there's lots of fabric. So you can billow across the countryside with fields of daisies you and can. sunflowers. You can, and you can put more can layers and make it billow even more. You can, you can, until right. they're dragging on the floor behind you. <laughs> You've got nice gathers all over the place, around the neckline here. You've got some nice gathers. And on every layer of the dress, because the dress, you can't see it's under the counter, but there's another layer on the dress as well. And um, no fastenings either, no zips. No fastenings. You've got a piece of bias binding, which I've made out the same fabric, but you could make it out Very of true. something else, like your K-facet binding that you, that you whipped out earlier. So is it, it, what sort of length is it then? It's not full length. Is it like midi? It's not a maxi. I'd say mm. it's somewhere, uh, yeah. It's, midi. But you can shorten these. You couldn't okay. miss a hole. Because if I lift it up, excuse oh, me, missus, miss there's a hole of the layer underneath here so there's a whole layer here but if you want to you can miss that off and you'll have a much shorter yeah that's true but it's very dress. flattering his dress because <coughs> this gather is just below the bust it is so there's no waste business going on this at is all. It. or you could if you wanted to just pop a belt on it oh yeah that's and then that's it's completely true. different again i pop this onto my friend laura or my mm. neighbor she's ever so lovely she <laughs> should be a model huh? and there's a nice it's a nice footage of her swishing in it i oh, don't know whether they have that um i'm sure they we'll can find it. Can we find that? Up. Um, that's like a, but we'll show. Hopefully, yes. No, they found it. They're going to show it. it. Fab. Good news. Right. Well, let me go through the pattern while you find the swishing photo. So this is the pattern. It's by Sussex Seamstress. Now, if you've used or seen her patterns before, you know how good they are. They're very simple to understand. Very easy to make. Also. If you go onto um, the website, she has um, YouTube tutorials for all of her patterns. See. So Oh, here's the, here's the swishing video for you of the dress. Oh, that's lovely. That's the previous version I made here for Sewing Street, but it just shows us off so beautifully. Yeah. And she's wearing it with a belt there as well, which just really oh, nips that's it gorgeous, in. that's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. It's very flattering. Yes. And she's, yeah, and how she's did very she swish that slowly? <laughs> 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 she has different <laughs> gravity in her house. It's Kenilworth House, you know, it's posh. <laughs> we can afford these luxuries. So um, this, this pattern is, <laughs> there the will be, is, is brilliant, isn't it? The will, there's a YouTube video which shows you exactly how to do it. But they're very easy fit and easy wear patterns. Well, I've seen quite a few of them, but they are, then they're, they're not sort of super fitting. They're comfortable in the right places and they are beautiful. We had um, the lady from Sussex Seamstress on air and had to talk about the whole sort of design concept and that is the point behind them is that they are easy wear so the pattern is on the screen now 12 pound 40 and it comes in sizes 8 to 22 so that's a in what everyone said to be 84 to 116 centimeter bust um, and the length of it is 1.2 metres from the shoulder to the hem, but obviously you can shorten and lengthen that. Now, we have a choice of five different fabric bundles. You need four metres of fabric, whatever size you're making. And all of these bundles are four metres. So I'm going to start with this one because I love this one. It's like a rust-coloured background and it's floral. Now, it says on the pattern that you can use... Any lightweight viscose, cotton lawn, muslin, crepe and crepe de chine. So obviously it needs something with a little bit of drape on it. So I think this one is a viscose. Oh, there's only two of these left. How lovely is that? Just two of these left. So if you want the um, rust floral, I mean, I think $22.99 for four metres is an amazing price. And it is gorgeous. Um, right, same fabric. But this is amazing. Look at this one. They are lovely, aren't they? They are really lovely. And it's got such... Let me hold it up so you can see the print of it. It's got like a petrol teal colour background and then mandalas in um, mustard. That one's sold out. Oh, no. We liked that one. Take it away. You could have a piece of fabric touched by Rebecca Reed. <laughs> yeah, that's gone now. Yeah, and I'll get Mark to stroke it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry. Right, then I've got a lovely... <laughs> <laughs> he's got the giggles over here. Oh, dear. I know. And he's making him Save cough as well. Save that for the Christmas show reel. Even funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one oh, dear. is like a raspberry. Gosh, I thought it was like, it was a jersey. It has the feel of it, but it's not. There's no stretch in it at all. Um, oh. But it has that feel. It's very lightweight. I'm going to give it a little swish. Give it a swish. Go on, this swish This is definitely going to have a swish. So it's like a raspberry colour, I would say. A dark raspberry, though. And then it's got all these lovely um, white paisleys on it but look at the look at the swish of that it's beautifully lightweight and flowing it'll be absolutely perfect for this dress 22.99 for that what a steal that is a steal and there's only how many left 12 of these bundles remember there's four meters in the bundle so even if you're not making that pattern but you need you know something i think very specific dressmaking fabrics are hard to find unless you can get to the shop they're not easy to find are they and this is ideal for this dress because it will flow beautifully and do you know what perfect for your holiday this does not crease roll it up and you've got a beautiful dress because mm. it doesn't crease at all and just throw it casually in the throw bottom it of the wardrobe. casually into your suitcase right and then i have also two plain colors so the dress that Mark has made is in this lovely shade of lavender. Again, this is a beautiful, or is it called mauve? Mauve. Could be mauve or lavender. Well, Again, it's beautifully <coughs> swishy. This is $38.99. Now this is a Visco chalet. So it's exactly the fabric you need. It's beautifully soft and um, flowing. Got a lovely drape to it. $38.99 for the four meters. It's a very flattering color because it's very soft against the skin. It's nothing sort of too bright and bold and it does suit most skin tones. Also, it's really easy to accessorize this color. It looks really nice with navy and black as well. Um, then finally, exactly the same fabric, but in mustard. <laughs> but in mustard, same fabric but in mustard. Again, this is good for navy and black, isn't it? <laughs> really good for accessorising with. It is. It's a very fashionable colour as it well. It is, isn't it? I, I love, love it. There's loads of stuff in the shops made mm. of yellows. Lots and lots, isn't it? I mm. love mustard. I think it's gorgeous. So if you fancy a really splash of sunflower colours, <laughs> um, $38.99. And there's only seven of these. Oh, this one's called ochre. It's not mustard, it's oh, ochre. It's not, oh, it's ochre, okay. What's the difference? Yellow. Yellow. It's yellow. yellow. It's brown and yellow. Do you want some scissors? I do. I'm just preparing. I was trying to do it subtly. And there's Rebecca again. Do you want some scissors? Do you want some scissors? <laughs> just say, can I have some scissors? <laughs> they need to be subtle. <laughs> um, also, you, the other thing that you will need is the shearing elastic. You know, it's those little details when you get everything home and you go, hmm, I haven't got any shearing elastic. Uh, 199 um, This is more than enough. Shearing elastic is... Charlie's just said what's showing last year. You put it in the bobbin of your sewing machine and you sew with it. I'll demonstrate to the bit. And um, Mark's going to show you. So those gathered cuffs on that dress, they have shearing elastic in them. My okay. grandmother loved doing shearing. She'd sit there and just, you know. Love it, love that shearing. Add it into everything. Everything. We had to do it. They've come up on the sewing bee before as well. but um, Have they? Bit yeah. of shearing? Well, not proper shearing, but kind of that kind of... Feel. the feel to it mm. right so I've got some other Sussex seamstress patterns we'll do those at the end um, but let's get on with making the pet worth dress any questions please do message us in remember Mark is a sewing a garment making expert and he will oh. be able to answer all your questions everything, everything. I know everything right so <laughs> uh, where do we start after we've cut it out after we've cut did it you out. get the instructions back right I did yes Marvelous. now there's some interesting shapes uh, going on here uh, the bodice which we will work on shortly. You have a front and the back. I will show you how to make the lovely opening it has. It's a nice, easy way to create an opening. The skirt sections are large rectangles, more or less, um, but the sleeves are a beautiful shape. Have a look at this. Can we get a nice? Can we get all of that in? Does that does that fit onto the telly? Can that fit on the telly? Does that fit That's on the toe? So what is that bit? Is that so the sleeve? This is what creates this extra bit down here. So that's your sleeve head. That's where the 
that fits into the shoulder and this <gasps> is what you have going into the cuff. that's wow, why wow that's it why has you get all this beautiful that's effect. why i was thinking that doesn't that looks like the bottom of our apron we just made <laughs> It does, doesn't it? So that's why you get all that beautiful gather. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. So uh, you've got to, it's, it's probably a proper name. I want to call it a bishop sleeve shirt. It's something along those oh, lines. Okay. I'm sure someone will tell me what the real name is for it. Um, I should have looked it up. Oh, I don't um, know. But you're going to put your, your shearing elastic all the way down. There's all this extra volume. And you could, if you wanted to, you could mix and match pattern pieces. Um, you could pop these sleeves onto something else if you liked the, the look of them. But... Let's work on the facings first, on the, not the facing. There isn't a facing. There isn't a zip. Yeah, loving it. There's no loving buttons. It. You could put buttons on. Oh, is this, how difficult is this? How easy is this, I should say? This opening. No, it's, no, the dress uh, in the, total. In general, uh, it's a nice make. Um, it's something you're going to enjoy doing. Intermediate, it gives, says. In, yeah, I think so. There's nothing particularly complicated. Um, the the shearing elastic might fox a few beginners, uh, but it's not difficult, I can assure you. Hey, if I can do it, I promise. So I like the description. Rel flattering, relaxed fit that suits every body shape. On trend and perfect for spring, autumn transition wear. I That's think nice. so. Yeah, my friend Laura modelled it. She mm. said she would wear it. Uh, loose with a hat on the beach. She said she'd love it on the beach. Yeah, um, that's and true. And she also modelled it with a belt on as well uh, to cinch it in a bit more at the waist. You could put little belt loops if you oh, wanted. Because want, it says just light just enough for side. warmer days. Wear it with a cardigan for the slightly chilly ones. Relaxed and comfortable. It works just as well at the office as it does for an evening out or a country walk. The with office. your wellies. Called slip in. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that might be I actually have to take some Let's clothes Let's get off Rebecca them. to wear everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> everything. I've worn the apron. So what I've done, there's a little marking on this pattern piece on the front here. That is where you're going to cut a little slot. And you can move that wherever you like, to be honest. I mean, if you wanted a, a little less modesty or a little oh, more okay. modesty, you could move it. Um, wherever you feel works for you. And that one, oh, that would be, that's quite useful actually because sometimes you get dresses that I've got a few where I have to wear like a little vest top underneath. Not a vest, yeah, a vest top. A vest, yes, I know, like a little camisole yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, because that front bit is a bit too low and you think, hmm, too See, revealing. My, my mother always wore a petticoat with every dress. And Did skirt, she? Yeah, always. Was she constantly full of static? Do you like a walking electric thing? <laughs> Not that I was... She didn't mention it anyway. Yeah, anyway, she goes, I'm just full of no. static. Did she But then always? I have seen ladies... Yeah, always. But then I have seen ladies... Hang on a minute. Why isn't it futting at me? Oh. Oh, well, no, it should be charged. Hang on, it's plugged in. Oh, it's not. It was slightly pulled out. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll wait for a second. Um, Only takes 25 seconds to warm up, though. One of the oh, it's, features. Oh, it's hissing already. Like I told you, 25 um, seconds. Special deal I'm today. I'm sure she had these petticoats for about 40 years as well. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I say. So, yeah, I have seen ladies wearing skirts and dresses, and I think, should have worn a petticoat with that look much better. What, because they're not see-through, or...? Well, there was a particular instance where, it was when I was at college, I used to play in a wind band, play the clarinet, and there was mm -hmm. a lady, and she always used to sit on a stool to conduct, I don't know why, it's only for an hour, she could have stood up, frankly, but this particular skirt used to stick to the back of her legs, oh. all the way down the back of her legs. I was like, you should have worn a what petticoat, petticoat and it wouldn't do that. You should have said that to her. Well, I didn't like to. <laughs> I thought she might... So yeah, I hope you don't mind me saying, but... Yes. Schoolgirl error. Anyway, does anybody wear petticoats? Do you? No? I Is don't. Not, I, don't, I have a feeling it's not really a thing that's... I don't know. I, I would line something. I don't think right. I even... I tell you what, I own a petticoat that's all tulle. Oh, you know, fine. A net one for wearing under a specific dress. Or crinoline or paper. Yeah, no, no it's like black net because I've got oh, a red okay. spotty dress and I bought it specifically. The two went together. When you're cosplaying as Minnie Mouse? Uh, no, it's just a, like a 1950s dress. And Happy then it really nice. sticks out when you wear the petticoat. It's amazing. So that would not work under anything else. No. <laughs> so anyway, back to the plot. So what I've done is I've just, down to the snip, I've just folded it under twice and just a little tiny, little tiny hem, a, a little tiny turn rather. And I'm just going to sew this as near to the edge as I can muster. There we go. It's 
there we have the nice seam there and if you press things once you've ironed it you'll find it will set the stitches nicely into your work. I may not have time to keep doing that this morning but you get the idea. So now make sure you make yourself a pair because I've done that before and I made two two the same way around which doesn't work in the slightest. Oh, funny. Um, so sometimes if I'm doing a, things like this that has two sides I'll make them as a pair like pockets or pleats or, or, or things like that. I'll do I'll, or cuff plackets. I'll do the left and the right simultaneously in the different stages. Oh okay Would so that you know that it... So I know I've got a pair and I'm not, and I'm not oh, making... Okay. And I'm not oh okay. Oh I see me. I mean I always do that when I'm doing patchwork or something just so that I know just because it's quicker, but I guess with that way you know that they work the same then, don't you? Yeah, and sometimes it's, it's a, it can be a little quicker to do it maybe. And you don't get lost, you haven't got to think so much. Where's my thread gone? Have, you haven't got to think so much. Good Hang morning on. all, I am new to dressmaking and loving all the demonstrations and fabric. Thank you Mark from Julia oh. and everywhere. Oh well that's great, that's brilliant. So when you're new to it, it's fab. Someone like Mark, he knows everything. These are Good morning, I sometimes wear a petticoat. I had thinking of making a half slip in lining fabric to save lining winter skirts. Would that work? I, I don't see why not. Yeah, it's the same principle, isn't it? You're just making, it's just an underskirt that goes under us. You don't see it and it just, Yeah. it's like a, a lining you can transfer from Yeah, so a transferable lining. Yeah, that's essentially what it is, what I suppose. What do you do, put an elastic in yeah, it? Yeah, Mum's just had elastic. Oh, okay. Right. I love a petticoat and always wear one. Many years ago, who petticoats were a thing from Bombwin and Caffilly. There we go, Bombwin. Well, maybe the petticoat is the answer because I have to say, I often get my dresses and skirts sticking to my legs, particularly tights do that. So maybe, maybe we just need to make one because I did line a dress I made recently. It does take time, although I think a dress looks better if it's lined, doesn't yes, it? I, I think so. I think With a lot or of things without look... a petticoat. Yes. I suppose the... the the benefits of the petticoat is it helps the skirt do what it's supposed to do and not just cling around yeah, the legs true. all the time. And actually when you wear a line dress it feels better. Mm. It sort of sits against you better, it sort of, it just feels more luxurious. See I imagine, because Wendy Gardner wears a lot of dresses and I think, I think she only ever wears dresses and skirts mm. but uh, I imagine she lines everything. I well, I lined it because it was patchwork and I was worried it would all fray. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. But it actually feels, and it's just, I mean, you know, it's like a satin, whatever, polyester yeah. line, but it just feels nice on. You could buy silk. Could have, but I didn't. I bought bright turquoise. So now that we've got these two halves, put them right sides together, like this, and that's, you see this little step? That's what we're going to sew up to. Do okay. pin it. I'm not pinning it, but, um, but do. Oh, you little machine, you behaved yourself beautifully all morning. And now it, you've upset it. It obviously needs a cup of tea. Yeah. Well, I would like to say don't we all, but um, Ben's just made me one. Oh. Mm. I know. I'll tell you what, John Scott doesn't get one made for him. You should be lucky. Does he not? No. No, oh, well he's obviously not behaving himself. No, that's what it is. Mm. He Wait. needs to put... I didn't even ask either. Ah, oh, we see. That's because he's a nice man. And you want you to sew up to the edge of your little turn that you've sewn. OK. And then when we open it out... I guess this fabric doesn't fray, does it? Does it fray? It's not, but not particularly. It does a little bit. Yeah, so it's not. But it's yeah. Not non-fray. But no, it's not horrendous. But it's not horrendous. You would want to overlock it, I think, just to make sure yeah. it's, it's not or zigzag, or you could, if you wanted to be really posh, you could get the old uh, bias binding out and. Uh, Hong Kong seams. Hong Kong seam. I'd pink the and lot it. of it. I'm the laziest sewer. I'd pink and shear it. You're pinking your shirt. Yeah, I love a pinking shirt. That's what they used to do before the days of overlockers. Well, do you know what I call it? Crocodile scissors. Crocodile scissors, yay! That's what <laughs> yes, I'm going to rename mine. Our crocodile scissor it. And that's that's how you make the opening. It's nice that it's in a seam because I've seen it done before where it's not in a seam and yes. you always feel like it's going to tear. 
Yes. Well, you could change this. If you didn't want to do that method and you are more experienced and you have done other forms of openings, mm. you could do this, remove the seam allowance, have it as one piece yeah. and make a facing oh, and use the facing. True, true. And all you do is you just cut it out so it kind of fits this mm. shape here and it has a bit that comes down oh, there. I quite like the seam. And then you just yeah. sew down, up, down and around and, and cut true, into it. True, true. It's a nice, easy thing to do as well. Yes. Um, so you could change it around, or you could put a zip, you could put rouleau loops in it. All, all sorts. You could have buttons going all, all the way, way down, down the front. Oh, you could actually. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Mm. Just sew them on. Yeah. Not real ones. Well, fake ones. Yeah, sew them on. <laughs> we, when I was at uh, the bank, they had this particular fabric, and it was designed in a way that everybody's dresses would look different because of the obviously different shades and patterns mm. within the same fabric. It's like quite wide design, quite a big design. And, uh, and they had buttons went all the burkons went all down the front of the dress and my colleague sat at the till and didn't know why she was getting so many looks on the chapter she realized all her buttons would come open all no. down the front of the dress oh how we laugh how we laughed <laughs> and I bet you laugh for ages about that as well she wasn't laughing no it's the sort of thing that you laugh about particularly when some of the customers that have come in that morning as well days and weeks <laughs> later they're still laughing actually I'm seeing her soon I'll be able to remind her yeah oh, do do I will so that's how you. And that you've told everyone on TV about it. As live well. on TV. Mm. To them, I haven't told them her name though, so I keep that. I keep. No, that we've got another message. If anyone's oh. underskirt was hanging below their skirt at school, we would whisper, "It's raining in Paris." To let them know. Oh, Julie, I love that. It's raining in that's Paris. That's solidarity. Doesn't that is. Doesn't it always? I know, but isn't that nice? Rather than saying, "Oh yes, petticoats hanging down," it's raining in Paris. How lovely. When my sister was at school, she didn't do this because she was too much of a tomboy. But they'd all roll their skirts up at the yes. waist to make them shorter. See, that's what you should have said to your friend in the bank. It's raining in Paris. <laughs> We had other passwords. Oh, that's lovely. I think that's so nice. We used to have a code we'd say if we thought we had a fraudster. They don't do this anymore. So mm. it, it's, we had to make up a phrase locally that we could just pop into a sentence to alert a colleague that uh, someone decided it would be Geronimo. But then I wasn't quite sure how I could get Geronimo into a sentence, sentence. without the customer realising yeah, I'd said yeah. something odd. So you, we'd say all kinds of nonsense like, can you pass me the pink credit slip or something? Which and that means was, there wasn't such a thing. That and, we had um, a Ford. One of the at one point the password was, "Is Barry in his office?" <laughs> because Barry used to be an old bank manager of ours, and we, when he'd retired, so we used this for years. And occasion, but we never had to say it. Mm. Um, and someone said once, "Is Barry in his office?" Go, Barry, who the, who's Barry? I don't know who's Barry. So no, it's Barry in his no, office. Oh, because you hadn't <laughs> used it, and they didn't realise. <laughs> Oh, that's so fantastic. Funny. He's Barry. Oh, no. oh dear. Right, right. Shall we move on to sleeves. That's yes. more or less the front of the opening. Uh, you'll then put the shoulders and the sides together mm. and you can set it to one side and then you can move on to looking at the sleeves. Just one sleeve will do, Mark. I need the board back. I don't know why I put it down. <laughs> there. So, what we need to do, for, again, you're working in so a pair. So, the sleeve's just in one piece as well? The seam's in one piece with just a side seam. It just goes in. You actually will sew it in in the round rather than flat yes but that's because we've got to put the the, okay. the the elastic into the cuff so the first thing we need to do is to create a little hem uh, now you can do this I, I won't do it all because just for timing I've got plenty of time actually um, so just fold and I'm gonna do it this method but if you wanted to you could get if you're if you want to get your rolled hem foot can out. you do it with the rolled hem foot yeah you can do it with the rolled hem foot I've not really used them very much, so I, I haven't actually, I wouldn't be the person to show you. It doesn't really come up in there. <laughs> I've never so. used one, actually. I no, know oh, I you should. haven't either. I've got one, but I haven't used it. They do quite often come with machines, I think, don't mm. they? Or you oh, can buy do. them separately. What Someone the said size? to me, oh, could you give us a demonstration of old hem foot? So, uh, no. 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 What's the size of the pattern? <laughs> um, Annette, the pattern is, let me just pinch marks. Mm. The pattern is size, it's coming, um, 8 to 22. And that's, well, they haven't got it in inches, but in centimetres, that's 84 to 116 centimetre bust. It is a generous sizing as well. Yeah, it is. It's not, I mean, she it's, says on the pattern, doesn't she? It's, um, it's a flattering, relaxed fit that yes. suits every body shape. So, I mean, that would even fit you, wouldn't it? I think that would even fit me. It might be a bit longer than that on me. It'd be dragging on the floor. Dragging on the floor, like but Dan, hey. Like Diana Ross's dress. Yeah, but it was a lovely dress. 
Do you reckon she, she made it? No. She had like this big, um, when she stood up like this with her arms out, she looked like an angel because her sleeves were like massive rectangles. Oh. And then she came in with this whole cape that was had feathers and fur. It was unbelievable. It was a very Liberace kind of was. move, wasn't it? And then, um, but... Do you remember what he used to say? No. He, he'd walk along the front of the stage in this, in this like a mink coat. It'd be real fur in mm. the 70s, of course. And he'd go, uh, go untouch it, you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And this is when we go home. Oh, oh, and they'd be there, grabbing his grabbing his oh, fur coat. Oh dear! I know. Anyway, what? Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, well, oh. she just looked fat, but I loved the dress because it had like rectangular sleeves. I meant to ask, were you in a in a tent? Yes. Really? Yes, I camped for five nights. Did you get spotted? I've seen you on Sewing Street. No, I did go and find Mandy Shaw though, because she was there. Oh, was she? Yes, yeah, she was has a stall there called Camp Bunting. And with all um, old singer set, hand singer sew machines, and you can go in there and pay what five or something and make bunting. There's a is craft field where you do all of that. Is she related to Mandy Shaw. Hmm. Uh, Debbie Shaw. No. Ah. No, it's spelled different. Ah. She's S H A W, and Debbie Shaw is S H O R E. So I've done my double turn, or you could do a rolled hem if and you, you wish. Just try, okay. I think I might have to have a go. I think that should be your mission. You need to learn how to use the rolled hem foot. I do. I would like to. I just kind of shy away from yeah, it a little too. bit. But maybe we need to do that. Now, it does. you are doing this round a corner, so if you are doing the double fold like me, just take your time with it. Susan Barrett says, we used to say, Charlie's dead. You used to say what? Charlie's dead. That's much worse than his Barry in the office, isn't it? <laughs> Charlie's dead. How would you get it into a conversation? Yes, I wonder what, um, in what context was that? Was that your petticoat showing or you've got a fraudster in the bank? <laughs> oh yes, it could be either, couldn't yes. it? Yes, Charlie's dead. <laughs> what well, if you knew someone who was called Charlie who had died? That could be a very confusing. Isn't that funny though, that you couldn't say to somebody your petticoat showing, you had to say something else? Yeah. Because obviously a terrible thing. Because that's where girls kept their handkerchiefs as well, wasn't it, in their petticoats? I've no idea. I told you I've never had a petticoat. They used to have all-in-one ones, didn't they? Like, with, you put your arms through and everything. Like a whole full slip. They did, well, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, in the railway children, didn't they cut up their petticoats the wave at the, um, yes. at the, at the driver? Anyway, let's move on. Oh, it's a new film. Ooh. So shearing elastic. Right, yeah. Now, this is so you've done the hem, top yes. stitched it. So, yeah, I've done the hem, I've, I've finished the end of the sleeve. Now, uh, uh, you need to wind this by hand. Now, they did do this on the sewing bee. Mm. They seemed to make a bit of a meal of it, and I wasn't quite sure why. OK, maybe they hadn't done it before. Now, they were wobbling on about tension. Now, on this machine, this is the Juki NX7, I just pop it in, and it does it. Right. But whether your machine will behave the same way, I don't know. So it might be worth having a little test first, just to make sure. But when you're winding it on the bobbin, just do it. I'm not stretching the elastic at all. Do it nice and gently so it goes on in, so the elastic itself is in its relaxed state, not taut. So does it sag on the bobbin at all? Sag? Yeah, because you can't stretch it. Does it no, sag? No, you can't stretch it. But it, you can't sag it either? No, it's got to be, so if you, I don't know whether on. you can get in on that, but it just looks, uh, if I hold still, Oh, should we do it on the overhead instead? There we go. Oh. Oh. Forward. Forward. Perfect. There we go. There we go. So it's, it's, it's wound nice and relaxed. So it's, it's wound firmly around the bobbin, mm. but it's not stretched. And, and you it's fill not it loose right either. Up. Yeah, that's all I happen to have on it, because I have used this bobbin already. Um, but fill it right up. You'll probably use most of it. Oh, OK. But that will be more than enough because there's yeah, oh, 20 metres oh, on there. Oh, but you, you'll have this for dresses and dresses. Oh, OK. Right. Um, so keep your matching thread on the top of the machine and in the bottom, drop it in and load it as normal. Now, keep one finger on the bobbin so it won't move and just make sure the elastic is pulled through all its usual little channels and then you'll have to probably cut it. 
So you do have to give it a bit of a tug to make sure it's through. So do you pull it out through the top? Uh, well, normally a lot of machines will just pick up the bobbin yes, these days and just go. Yeah. It don't rely on it doing that because it might not like it. So we're going to do this the old fashioned way. And if we just turn your, your thing and give it a tug. Oh, hang on, it didn't quite work. Oh, that was if your slip was showing, you said Charlie's dead. Hang so on. the other lady said they'd say it's raining in Paris, but Susan used to go, Charlie's dead. Let me try that again. It didn't pull Love it up. That. <laughs> oh, that was for the petticoat, yeah. was it? Oh. Now, look, I bet it's, it's never done this. I bet it's going to play up for me now, isn't it? It happens when, you, when, the, when they press that live button. Hang on a minute. Let me just, it's gone a bit, a bit weird. But you'll, you'll need to pull it up the old fashioned way. So by using the crank handle on the side of the machine. Oh, nearly cut my tie then. That would not do. Let's just try again. There we go. It's up now. I love this one from Julie. A lady in a beautiful skirt walked past me in the supermarket and her skirt was caught in her panties. So I just debated how to tell her and ended up saying, would you like to check your skirt hem? She was so angry, not with me, but the people who'd let her walk down all the aisles like that. Oh, no. Which is fair enough, because why, you know, I would be cross that people hadn't mm. said anything. Yeah. She should have said, Charlie's dead. This one would go, who's Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we have the elastic. You might just be able to see it popping up round there. It's just underneath. Yeah. So the elastic's underneath. Mm. The matching thread's on the top. Now, no back stitch because it won't it won't do it. So just okay. straight at all, and you need your longest stitch length. Like like super longest longest. Five on this machine. Right. Okay. And you'll see it will, and go nice and slow. You don't want to be. Now you should see it will start curling up almost immediately. So do you have to hold that down? It should be okay now. It doesn't get caught. No. Yeah, just make sure it doesn't get caught, but it shouldn't. Don't, you it's can't do motorway sewing with this. Gina said we used to say it's snowing down south. <laughs> well, actually, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Because white yeah. petticoats down south. I can understand yeah. that. The rain in Paris. And Charlie's dead. I'm not sure. You see, <laughs> generation doesn't know it's born, do they? I know, these generations go, pants are showing. Oh, they should have one of those for boys. You know when they have those, like, they always have to have their pants showing. Oh, well, at the top of their, their trousers? trousers. I've never done that. I know, it's horrible, isn't it? And you have to have, like, really thick pants, bands, with the designer logos on, and they have to be showing. Or well, they could make it yourself and have a lattice as mum made this. Mum made this. When you get to the end, mm. lift your foot. OK. And just, oh, hang on, I've still got the needle in and pull it out, cut it, there we go. and you'll see, ooh, look at that, you've got your first line of elastic, that's amazing, and it stretches right out, and then all you do, is do another one, so don't get things caught up, try and get it, decide what distance you want, I just keep doing it each time, a foot's width away, that's what I do, but you could do whatever distance you like really so no no is it harder is the second line harder well what you don't want it to do is to keep it too small so you've got to kind of pull it out a little bit but uh, just remember no locking stitch at the beginning no back stitch at right. the end it's got to stay because you have because guess this time you haven't got a nice flat fabric you've got gathered fabric so yes the danger is that it gets smaller and smaller and you can't get your wrists in it so you, you just have to you Pull it out to... I'm just pulling it out a little bit, just so that it okay. doesn't... Okay. Because you can later pull up the elastic and just to tighten it to whatever size you need it, whatever your, your wrists are. But just remember, don't go too quick. And maybe have a practice. Susan Barris says she's been sewing for over 70 years, but she loves watching you. 
Ah. That's because he knows loads. That's nice. He knows isn't it? loads. Do you know what I'm doing after here? What? I'm going off to play for a wedding. Are you? That's partly why I'm so dressed up today. But also, it's just nice to dress up. You're going to a wedding? Where's I'm playing for a wedding. Playing? Oh, on the clarinet? No, no, I don't play that anymore. On the piano. Oh. And, um, but it's a bit of a... That's why I'm rushing off, because it's a bit of a tight time scale. Right, where's the wedding? It's in, uh, it's in Ulster. In Bills oh, if you're getting yes. married at Billsley Manor, it'll be me there later. And but what are you playing? You shouldn't be watching this anyway. You should be getting ready. What are you playing? Oh, I don't know. I'll decide. I just for like a reception, so it'll just nice. Just gent. Oh, nothing yeah, amazing. Nothing specific. Yeah. Um, Play. I will survive. I'll give you some requests. <laughs> I had <laughs> someone come up to me once and he said, "Can they play the theme from um, Back to the Future?" And I went, um, "No, no, I don't have that with me. I'm afraid because I don't play it from my head. I have to have music." Yes. And they came up later and he said. Can you play E.T.? And I thought, oh, okay, there's a theme going on here. <laughs> I said, no, I haven't got my John Williams book with me. He said, oh, you can't play anything, can you? <laughs> it's like, well, it's oh, not your I wedding. I think we should do <laughs> piano <laughs> music wedding requests for Mark. I think I will survive, it's good. The strangest thing I was asked to play, and I didn't think it strange at the time, they said, could you play the theme from The Incredible Hulk? And I, as we leave the wedding, I thought, oh, okay. I thought, what well, is that? Well, it's, it's an Akabilk piece. It's a very, that melancholy, clarinet piece okay. back of Belk you might remember from the 70s and I, I mean that's all I thought well that's the only one I know of anyways so that's what I played and I was playing it in the moment I thought this isn't this is not right this is because the mood just went poof, straight away it just dropped because it was such a melancholy piece of music so, I mean it's what they asked well, for that's so, their own and they never said it? to me it was from a specific this that or the other that <laughs> anyway, is funny it made a funny moment so you've done two rows because we, two. we're getting sidetracked the, here. So you've done two. The pattern calls for four. Right. You could do it all the way up the sleeve if you want. You could. I've only done three on that okay. one. Okay. Yeah, you could do low. I mean, you. I don't know. That's still fashionable. But you on the outside, the way up, didn't you? You'll see. You can't. You just got the yellow thread on the outside. Right. So Jan says, does the elastic not try to ping along the stitch? Like, but on the you inside, don't, you'll see the. If elastic. you don't back or lock stitch it. Will it try? No, you have to hold it. So you'll see I do have my tails. So I do have to make sure the tails don't disappear. Those will get secured when you sew the side seams. So what you could do uh, is bring, when it's brought round like this, because you'll sew the sleeve up next once you've got all that done. Uh, I've overlocked it on that purple version, um, but you could also tie them together in little knots. If you want to make yeah, sure that I suppose don't... what I would be thinking when you're doing the second row because you're then pulling it. Yes, yeah. you need but, to make but, sure. But because you've got enough length, it doesn't. Yeah, you do have to hold it with your fingers. Okay. But it's a really lovely method. I could do some more. Should I do another one? Oh, come on. I've got loads of time. Well, I know it's really nice to see this um, this technique. So just again, uh, you put your needle in, no lock stitch, and just off you go. And just. Let it just pull out the elastic over. You don't have to stretch it out completely, just enough so that you don't need Barbie-sized wrists to get through it. <laughs> Oops. And you can do the same method on the front of a top, around a neckline. Maybe not a hem. Maybe not. Well, it depends what the look you're going for. Unless you're going for that kind of... Um Round the bottom of trousers, you know, for that. What yes, are they like a cuffed appearance. Those, what are they called? Those trousers where they're gathered at the bottom. Trousers with a gather? No, like they're like big. And they wear them in, you know, Morocco. Oh, like um, harem pants. That's it. That's mm. what I was thinking of. There we go. That's, That's three rows lovely. now. That's lovely. I like that. They're quite straight as well. Actually, they are. Because we did fake kind of smocking on sewing me mm. when I was there and they we were making a little girl's dress and we had to sew four rows of gathers just on a regular cotton pull it up and then sew over it with a decorative stitch but it was so lumpy and bumpy it's so hard to get the machine to go in a straight yeah. line it's a bit of a, a, a cheaty way of doing it but this is nice because this it's got is all the proper stretch. this is proper but you can do it by hand as well if you really wanted to <laughs> No, that's really neat. No, it gives an, I think by machine you get a nice even look then, don't yeah. you? Should we, talk, should we move on to the next stage? So the next bit you'd do, yes. you would put the sleeve in half, you'd sew down the end of that sleeve, 
all the way along. You can overlock it, make sure you secure that elastic either tight to itself or see if the overlocker, that, that should hold it as well. And, and then you'll pop it in the round into your bodice. Then you can move on to the next bit. Now I thought with this, this is quite loose and relaxed and that's mm. the feel. But if you wanted something a bit more fitted, you could put elastic around the waist. Oh yeah, that's true. Just some clear elastic yes. or just any old elastic. Just a piece of thin elastic. Just a little. And that will just, uh, rather than having gathers, it will actually mm. pull it up if you wanted something a bit more... Yeah, that's true. Sort of yeah, that's true. That just Without having to alter the pattern at all. Yeah, and it would automatically put the gathers in. As, I know I would have to put the gathers in still because mm. you're gathering up the pieces. Uh, so with the gathers, oh yes, the, and actually before we do that, um, we must talk about the neckline. So it has this nice piece of bias binding here. Now I've made out the same fabric, you could buy mm -hmm. some bias binding where you might have some in your stash. Um, I've just started to make it here. It gives measurements as to how long this needs to be. Okay. Good. So you can just follow those measurements or if you want something different you can make it much longer if you want a bigger bow or thinking something else and upside and sort of uh, hacking it a little bit, you could have a pussy bow on there instead. Oh, God, like yeah. a like, like, like yeah, a big pussy bow, uh, which I've done that kind of thing in my Baker Boy hat pattern has a Lavalier cravat in there. Oh, okay. And you could use that as an example. Yeah, that's true. And instead of adding that on, you just pop on that on instead. Nice. So yeah, nice. there's loads you can do with it. You do. We do sell bias binding makers, but if you're doing it without one, without one, yes, if you haven't then got one, you just need your iron. Now, what I, the way I do it is I fold it in half, first of all, and then you're bringing those edges yeah. into that midpoint. So it does give you recommendations as a four centimetre piece wide and about a metre long, depending on what size you're, you're having. But you can make this as wide as you want. Of course, the thinner it goes, the fiddlier it is. And you'll just work that all the way along. The advantage of buying it, of course, is it's made by a machine and it's all nice and precise for you. But that's how you make your bias binding. Well, I'll show them in the next hour. I'll show them how the bias binding work, and then you can see. Oh, you've got to make. Are you doing a? Maker? I'll show them how to, to do. Yeah, because oh. then you can see like the point of why you would have one. Cause yes. It's so much quicker. Is that a fancy machine? Does you just press the button and goes? Does yeah. it? Oh. Yeah. Magic. You thread, you know, you get the bias binding makers, the little tool. Mm. You put it through that, and then it goes across a hot plate that oh, irons it, it, and it comes out the other side. So that I, this green was made. I made it on oh, air. You just threw it, thread it through, and it comes out the other end like that. I, I do you know, I'd stay and watch, but I can't. I've got to go and play for That's a wedding. That's fine. You can what you can watch back. <laughs> it is a, the best thing, and it comes with four different width binding makers as well. Now the skirt section. Now you could have fun with this, because it's a panel dress, you could have different colour panels. Oh, you could, couldn't you? You could look like a rocket lolly if you tried. Do you think? Yeah, it could be a rocket lolly, couldn't it? Yeah. Red. <laughs> or traffic lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you could actually look lovely colour blocked in like navy, mustard, yeah. orange. Or different shades of the same fabric. Oh, that like would be nice, Like different shades of like it? blue or red or yes. something. Sort of getting lighter or, mm. getting, or whatever way you wanted to oh, do it. Oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, or plain top and sleep patterns. Yeah. Isn't Good idea. Full of them, aren't we? We're yes. full of them. Um, Julie said, a fashion I thought dreadful were the puffball skirts. So unflattering. And they were gathered. Remember the puffball <laughs> skirts? I'm not sure I even had one. I had a Rava skirt. Oh, did you? That's mm. very racy. It was racy. And a... And a Frilly blouse. You had to have a rava skirt and a frilly blouse. And he did. Yeah, obviously. And he did look like in a lemon sherbet. And then I had leg warmers in the winter. <laughs> well, they're practical. Very practical, I especially was... if you don't want to turn a heel. But you think you're on fame, you know, because they were yeah. they were popular because of fame. But we all wore them over our trousers. It's ridiculous. Do you know, when they recorded Fame, the music, the, the film the fame song wasn't finished. So when there's they're dancing to it all around mm. the streets, they weren't dancing to fame, they were dancing to something else. No, mm. that's cheating. Mm. It's one of those little facts. Oh, it's one of the best it's TV series cheating. ever. Maybe we should have a Sewing Street musical. Shall we? Mm. We could have... I'm actually really bad at singing though, so I'm not gonna do any of the singing. Well, we could do Grease, so maybe... Uh, John could be John Travolta's part. Yes. With a quiff. 
I think he would make a great John Travolta. Oh, and, and Hayley could be a... She could be Olivia Neutron Bomb. <laughs> neutron Bomb. <laughs> 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 or, uh, no, or, uh, oh, do you know, I couldn't do another, I couldn't have done another row if I wanted. <laughs> I ran out. Oh, that was the <laughs> end of it. How close is that, eh? Now, where's me? Now, just remember, don't forget to change your bobbin back. I know, have you ever not? I bet I would. Uh, yes, and, oh, there it is. You could, you could be Rizzo, is it Rizzo? Oh yeah, Rizzo, yeah. With a perm. Mm. Call it Grease 3. <laughs> so it's a one centimetre seam allowance on this pattern. Okay. Which is, oh, now, also 20 stitches. Yes, back. see I was just about <laughs> to say, I would definitely do that because I never ever remember to turn my stitch length back. Or I know. Take it off zigzag, for example. Never remember. Occasionally, I'll have the straight stitch footed, or Clive will have changed it to the straight stitch foot, and then I try to do a zigzag in it. He doesn't do it. I found out a few times. So what I'm doing now is just sewing together these skirt sections so you get big hoops of skirts. Because we need to put gathers in these as well. OK. now that we're and now what I like to do is to actually do it in little stages rather than putting a running stitch all the way around the whole thing I'll, I'll do the two separately I mean it's just a personal preference it doesn't make an enormous difference it just means it's a little easier to to do it and also I've got a nice little trick so let's just pin this other side Yellow is nice. You can use it to line things if you wanted to have a posh lining. Yeah, it is. Well, it's got a beautiful drape to it, hasn't mm. it? I've used this kind of stuff for waistcoat backs as well. Oh, okay. What, well, rather than your rather polyester satin? Yeah, that kind of rather than that kind of stuff. Well, it's an also. I think it's good because it doesn't crease. It doesn't Make what? It, sorry. It doesn't crease. No. It's ideal for a slip. Or waistcoat so back. I just sew down the other side. And you'll want, you'll want, once you've made one of these, you'll love it. You'll want to, honestly, you'll want to make one in every colour. Mm. Well, I can see it's like, like if you were going out like on a country walk or just, you know, just for mm. an afternoon. It would look lovely with boots, but it would look lovely with sandals. Now, do press the side seams open. Mm. I'll skip that bit for the moment, just so we can get this done. Now, we're going to put the, the rows of gathering stitches in. Now, this is my personal preference. You probably will have your own. Okay. So I'll just crank up the stitch back mm. to long again. Oh, I'm about to lose the, I'm about to lose the thing. We don't want that, do we? So within the seam allowance, Although, it doesn't matter if it pokes out, you can just unpick it. But try and get it in the seam allowance see if you can. Yeah, okay. And we're just going to run a 5mm stitch. And you'll see, it does actually start to gather it up a little bit already. Which does help. So is this fabric nice to work with? It does handle really nicely. It's not okay. too slippy. It's got a nice weight to it, mm. not too fly away, which can sometimes make it difficult. Um, it is light though, so do make sure when you're laying your pieces out that you're laying them out um, with the fabric flat right. and not uh, stressed. If it's hanging over the edge of the table or something, because you end up with these, particularly if it's a square piece, you notice it more, it kind of all droops off a little bit to one side. So keep it I all think, flat. Yeah, okay. try, and, try and cut it out so the fabric is not under any stress or pressure. Now leave some tails at the end. I'll, I'll just do one side to show you. Now what I usually do is get the next piece that I'm working to. Uh, which I think is this, uh, no it's not that one, because they're, they're slightly different sizes. That's a sleeve, that's a sleeve, that's a bodice. Oh no, what have I done? 
I've Have lost you not got all of I've the pieces? The piece. No, I thought I had it all. But. I know it is that one. It is that one. Panic over. It's the only piece left. It, must, that one. it must be that one. <laughs> so then what we we want this to fit that. So we can actually we've actually, actually gathered up a bit too much. So we can kind of stretch that out a little bit. And then you just want to spend some time just mm. orga organising your gathers. Have I got enough gather on it? Have I done too much? Is it only gathered on the... F oh, no, it's gathered all the way around. It's gathered all the way around, yeah. So just, just take some time And to is it got to be evenly gathered all the way around? Ideally. Right. Or is it can look a little bit odd. <coughs> OK. But no, I just wonder whether there were some bits where you didn't put gathers in one bit, because sometimes you see patterns and they, they gather in some well, bits, but the, the <coughs> not The gather gives others. it that nice kind of swish, doesn't it? Yes. There we go. So we're getting there now. So we want it to, so it fits that, that next layer. So the gathering is actually quite... Oh, look. This is somebody, um, Anne has sent in a picture of her dress. Enjoying the show. Here's the dress I made. Wasn't sure if I could do it, so I used extra wide backing from Sewing Street, which was a cheap way of trying something new. I followed all the video instructions and did it. Oh. Thank you. That's lovely, Anne. Brilliant. That looks fab. I mean, it is a good idea, to be honest, that if you're making something the first time, is to not make it from your best fabric. Yes. If you're not I sure. know it's hard to do and that. You can use anything. I, she just used some cheap backing But fabric. that's lovely, Anne. I think you've done a fantastic job. She has. It look, and she did just notice she put a, a, a tie around the mm. waist. Just to gather yeah, it in it at the waist a yeah. little bit. I think it looks um, lovely. Yeah, there you go. She's got a, a, a tie around the waist there. And I think the top is a different fabric. It's a, is that a, a solid fabric at the top, perhaps? Mm. I think it's a great way. I mean, that otherwise, you, if you, rather than using your expensive fabric, it's just hard, isn't it? Because you just mm. want to get on with it. You just an old sheet. Yes. Calico as well, of course. Uh, that can be a bit stiff mm. if you're doing it. You have to bear in mind it behaves differently to your first yes. fabric. So yes, it can true. look as if you're in like a... Yeah. <laughs> But you're not, it won't be like that at all. Oh, that's a lovely photo. Thank you, Anne. But th there we go. You just gather, you'll ease your gathers in. Mm. You spend some time just getting them all nicely even. And then you can sew it to the next layer. And Fantastic. then attach it to the dress. And then that's it done. And then you yeah. do the next layer and... Yeah. And the next layer isn't as gathered, is that right? Well, it, the piece is smaller, but it's yes. going into a smaller opening. So it's probably... Well, I've just done that bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's gathers on both layers. Well, that's fab. Thank you. I'm just going to go back to the pattern. So if you want the pattern, that's on screen at the moment. The Petworth pattern, available in sizes. I've already said this, but I can't remember. Eight to. Is it twenty two? Twenty two. Eight to twenty two. I'll check. Everything you need is in oh, there. Oh yes. Eight to twenty two. You need four meters of fabric to make the dress. Um, remember, if you go onto Sussex Seamstress's website. There is a YouTube link for full video tutorial of this, and you can watch Mark's back as well. So if you haven't tried it before, and you say, oh, I really like that side, like, give it a go. Just give it a go, take it slowly, use some other fabric before you start on your main one. Um, if you want to buy the fabric, the purple one that um, is in the dress that um, Mark's made that's behind him, there's four metres of fabric in here. There's only one of these left. That's Mo Visco Chalet four meters, which is enough for the biggest size. Just one left. Um, do we have any of this one left? Did this one go? What about the raspberry paisley? And the ochre? Is it a sellout? Those have sold out. There's five, there's five of the oak, and that's the one that Mark was just working with. Thirty-eight ninety-nine. You're getting four meters of visco chalet, which is absolutely perfect for this because it drapes beautifully. And there's only four left. Um, if you love Sussex seamstress, I have th um, three other patterns. This is the Horsham dress, which is a lovely shift dress. Again, they're always relaxed fits. Not you haven't got like waistbands. But it's a really lovely um, sleeveless shift dress, £12.40. Uh, we've got the Boxgrove skirt, which is a really nice wrap skirt. And I like this where they've used, she's used a different print and then a plane for the tie. £12.40. And then the Southwark, I suppose you say Southwark skirt, which is like a denim skirt that's got quite, um, I think, deep pockets. 
down either side. I love the coloured buttons on that. But that's just your wardrobe staple, isn't it? 15.50. And remember, if you want more information about them or you want to see the videos, they're all on her website. Um, so thanks so much for today, Mark. Pleasure. Viewers have loved you. I've loved you. It's Aww. been great. Thank you for my new apron. Fabulous. Been I brilliant. I worn on air next time we're I will. Together. Well, I just, I think it's great. I'm going to wear it all the time. <laughs> um, when are you back? Uh, uh, in August, I okay. believe. Um, I should be having a pattern launch of mine. <gasps> I know that another one. That is very exciting. First time I've announced that, but yes, new Ooh. pattern. New pattern. Very exciting. Well, have a lovely wedding. Thank you. Have a lovely wedding. In fact, somebody said you should play fight the good fight. <laughs> <laughs> My mum wanted that at her wedding, Is she? but her mother wouldn't allow it. <laughs> she wanted fight the good fight and normal Christian soldiers. I love that one. <laughs> well, you, I hope you have a good wedding. It's been lovely to work with you, and Thank I will you. see you back here soon. Marvellous. Hopefully. Um, I will be back in just a couple of minutes' time. Um, oh, I'm going to show you the bias maker because you're going to love that. And we've got some other tools and books for you too. So don't go anywhere. Next, I've got some really good things for you in the next hour I think you will enjoy them. Hello my name is Fiona Hesford also known as So Girl. I'm based in Worthing on the south coast of England and I work in my lovely garden studio which is where I am right now. So uh, my sewing journey began as a child. Uh, my mother used to had surround the house with Laura Ashley fabrics and wallpapers and I used to patch together some of the scraps and uh, make little quilts for myself and uh, dolls clothes and things like that. So one of my top tips in dressmaking would be to definitely make a toile before you start. Uh, sometimes uh, if you're using expensive fabric it's a good idea to make some make the garments in a sheet or a cheap fabric just so that you're absolutely sure of the fit. An interesting fact about me is that I used to be a knitwear designer back in the 80s and once I made a jumper for the singer Sade which was really exciting. Uh, I worked in Paris for six years and when I came back I fell back in love with fabric again and I started working with magazines and books and writing projects for them and that led eventually on to me designing my own collection of dressmaking patterns. Uh, my philosophy is that I love comfortable clothing every day, things that are easy to make, easy to wear. I like modelling my clothes myself and I wear pretty much everything that I design. So I always think that if I feel good in them then other people will. I've been working for Sewing Street since it's been, since, almost since it began and I love it there. We're like one big family and I'm on the show about every two, mo two months and so I look forward to seeing you on the next show soon. Bye! Hey guys, it's Sarah Davies here. I just want to say you have got to tune in on Monday because it is going to be a big day. I'm going to be in the studios and I am taking over. I'm going to be on Sewing Street Live from 8 o'clock in the morning, Jewelry Maker from 11 o'clock, and then Hobby Maker from 1 o'clock. Now, when we do one of our big takeover days, trust me, it is a day you do not want to miss. We've got goodie bags, we've got some amazing special deals, I've got a ton of demonstrations, brand new product launches, I've got the team in with me. It is going to be epic, so whatever you do, do not miss it. Whether you're a sewer, whether you love your jewellery making, whether you love your paper craft, we've got something for everyone. So I'll see you on Monday, 8 o'clock on Sewing Street, from 11 o'clock on Jewellery Maker, and from 1 o'clock on Hobby Maker. We'll be there all day. I can't wait to see you there. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. 
We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media and pick up some top tips from us too. And welcome back to Sewing Street. I hope you enjoyed the last um, hour with Mark. It was fab, wasn't it? Learned so much. Um, I want to make an apron. I want to have a go with shear elastic. I want to do it all. Um, but he was saying he, would re he wants to have a go with this buyer's tape maker. Unfortunately, he's rushed off to his wedding. So I said, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then um, you can get your own because he was... Did you see how long it took him to make it by himself? All that folding and stuff. So um, if you haven't seen this before, I did show it yesterday, but... I know we do know that every, not everyone watches every day or all hours of every day. So anyway, what you get in the box, here's the box. So 124.99 and this is the box, this is what you get. Everything you need is in there, it's so neat. You also get some free gifts as well. You get this from Simplicity, so you get um, a couple of Simplicity patterns and you also get um, some haberdashery items. They are mixed, but you do get free gifts with them. Just so in case when you get yours, you wonder why. Um, so it comes in all these little box, and it all opens up like that. I need to turn it around, though. Um, <coughs> now, it comes with a UK plug, as well as a, um, for some reason, a European plug. So in case you want to take it on holiday, or you live in the Europe, it comes with that as well. I guess it must be a European thing. Um, 
So you plug it in, and um, it comes with in in here. You've got oh, I'm on the overhead. <laughs> oh yeah. See, when I'm on the other desk, I forget we haven't got. We haven't, when we're here, I forget we haven't got one. Um, it comes with a spindle, and this is for winding everything up with. And this just sits in here, and you set it up like this. So it's all easy. It's all nicely stored away. It also comes with all of these tips. So there are four for making the normal bias binding, and they are labelled so you know what they are. There's quarter of an inch. Now, when it says the measurement, that's the measurement. Let me show you one I've already made. When it's folded. So when it's actually folded, that's the measurement across there. So that's called, that will be your single fold. So what you have to remember when you choose which size you need is that when it's folded then in half and you're binding something, it will be half of that measurement. So that's the flat measurement. So when you cut your strips, you have to cut the strips twice this measurement. When you fold it around something, it will end up half of that. So you'll get used to it. It will make sense. So you've got a quarter of an inch you've got a half inch, you've got three quarter of an inch, and you've got an inch. So you can choose. There are also two um, wider ones. Now these are used for, these are quilt binding, and these will fold the fabric in thirds, and they are an inch and an inch and quarter. So, and you can use them. They, they work in the same way, they just fold the fabric differently. So, it's called a bias tape maker because normally when you make bias tape you cut it on the bias which means you cut it diagonal to the fabric so fabric is woven with the warp and the weft and that's where the solid bit is so normally we cut our fabric straight vertically or horizontally because it's uh, more stable but if you want fabric to curve round an edge maybe you're binding a neckline or um, a curved corner of maybe a shoulder bag or something then you need to cut the fabric diagonally across the fabric because it has more stretch um, if I have like this, let me show you here. So this fabric I've cut horizontally, so there's no stretch there and no stretch. But if I pull that diagonally, you can see the stretch. I haven't cut this one on the bias. If you're binding quilts, which is what a lot of people who buy this will do, you don't need to cut it on the bias because you're, you're going straight. So although it's called a bias tape maker, you can use it because I've tried it with both. I've cut fabric straight of grain and I've always cut on bias. Works in the same way. <laughs> what did you steal, Ben? Okay. Oh, Ben stole a few of these. What to have a go? Fab. Yes. Mm. Wow. So Ben had a few of these and he gave one to Wendy Orlando to have a play with and within five minutes she'd worked it out. I loved it. Well, everyone loves it. It's brilliant when you have a go of it. So what you do is choose which one you're going to do. I'm going to go with the three quarter of an inch. Um, so you have to cut one and a half inch strips because you have to cut it twice the width of this. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's up to you. I would say when you have a go, have a go of all of them. I've tried all sorts of fabric. This is quilting weight cotton. I've tried polyester satin. I've tried cotton lawn, silk. Um, I, canvas was okay. Needle cord was a little bit more of a struggle. So just try different fabrics, but the normal cotton fabric is fine. Now the beauty of making this yourself is it's easy. It's a great way of using up your scraps. If you want to make a scrappy binding, you can join all the fabric together and the seam will still go through. So when I did this one, I joined, can you see the join? So there's the join. So always when you join your fabric, join it diagonally um, and then it, it distributes the bulk and it's less hard to see. But there's the join and I'll show you that it does go through really well. Um, and also it means you can then make loads of it. I've seen lots of people on Etsy selling like Liberty Binding, Cafe Binding, Tula Pink. Make loads of it and sell it with all your fabric scraps. But if you've got some scraps left over, I mean, if you've got some ends of jelly rolls or thing, make it into binding and keep it. If you're making a quilt, don't buy bias binding. Use the scraps left over from your quilt to make it because you need sometimes like five or six meters. So you may as well do that. So take your binding maker, choose the one you want, and it simply clips in there, really simple. Now I'm going to turn it on. You're not supposed to turn it on until you've wound it all up, but it does take a good sort of five minutes to heat up. Um, then you need to set it. So it has various different temperatures, minimum, acrylic, nylon, terylene, I'm not sure what that means, 
wool and cotton okay do set it to the right one i did some satin nylon satin and it melted because i had it on cotton but as soon as i turned it down and it had cooled it was absolutely fine but do set it to the right one so you start off take the wheel thingy and then i'm going to wind it around here you just pop the um there's a little metal clip and I'm going to wind it round here. Now, by winding it round here, it means that you will get a better tension for you when you're for your finished thing because it just comes out a bit better. You don't have to do it tight or anything. I'm just winding it round because it's you can kind of leave it alone. Then I mean, I always start. I don't walk off and leave it alone. I like to see it coming through because especially when you get the seams, you need to make sure it comes through fine. But it just if you've particularly you've done loads, so if you've joined loads, you can wind it all round here. But it, it is better for that little bit of tension. Okay, now put that on there. Right, what you need to do now is find yourself a pair of scissors. A pair of scissors. Oh, I pinched all the scissors earlier, didn't I? Because I put, oh no, they're this end, because I put them all in my thimble pot. But it's fine, fine, I've got them now. Uh, then cut one end diagonally just because we're going to thread it through the thingy. Um, oh, I haven't got anything today, have I? I'll try, these are quite pointy. So what we're going to do now is thread it through there. And then you can either use a pin or a seam ripper, all these little things I've just found, something pokey pointy that you can just push it through. Now, this is the iron that is very hot. So what you should do, don't do what I've done, but I didn't want to wait for it to heat up. You should do all of this and pull it through and then turn it on. So you need to pull it all the way through and see that it's coming through properly. Then put that on and then turn it on. But I didn't want to wait. So it will go green when it's ready. Oh, mine's nearly ready because you can see, okay. Oh, it's ready now. It goes green when it's ready, so wait for that to happen. Right, I'm going to move over a bit, so you, otherwise my binding maker is crashing. Um, and then you just press run. So what's going to happen, it's going to come over here, round there, through there, and I'm going to hold the end to start with to make sure it's guided through correctly. So um, I like to guide it a bit, just to make sure it's coming through straight. Because I think, because obviously where I've, because I've got quite a lot here, this is extra wide fabric and I've got two widths of it. So obviously where it's um, wound round, it might not always come straight. So I do like to guide it through. But I'm not, what I'm not doing, and I'm just stop it now. What I'm not doing is pushing it through, I'm just guiding it. So this, I've stopped because the seam is just coming up. The seam is on here. So I wanted you to see that go through. So I'm not doing anything, I'm just, watching it, making sure, because it sometimes can stop a little bit. You can just give it a slight nudge, and now it's come through. So the, ste the seam has now come through, and if I turn it over, whoop, can you see there? <coughs> Actually, if I undo it, you'll see better. So there's the seam, and that's folded beautifully. You wouldn't even know. So that does mean that you can join. So let's just carry on. So all I'm doing is just, like, I'm not m pulling it. I'm just letting it run and guide a bit. And you know, you think of the money you're saving and the time. So if you have one of these bias makers and you've got an iron, you've got to f pull it through, iron it, and it's just coming through beautifully all on its own. Right, last bit, almost through. And then when it's finished, you when you've, you're done, you just press run to stop. Da, 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 there we go, and turn it off. Um, when you finish with it, you can then pop all the bits away. All the um, little bias makers can all be stored inside. Um, what I would say is that don't shut the lid before it's cooled down. It doesn't say that, but I kind of feel like maybe you shouldn't. It's sort of, I, I just put mine to one side somewhere. There we go. And there's the bias binding maker. Right. 
got loads of fabric around now. Uh, right, what should we do next? Uh, right, I've got a load of interfacing here. Now, these are kind of your basic staples that, although you think, oh, it's basic stuff, really annoying when it runs out. So this is your medium weight iron-on interfacing. It's a metre square, 3 99 so extremely useful, really good for, obviously, for dressmaking when you're doing collars and cuffs and you want a little extra. I use it quite a lot if I'm doing maybe a bag base and I want it to just have a little bit more thickness and stability. Or if you've got a fabric that's quite thin and you just want to have a little bit, um, a bit thicker, it's really useful for that and it's extremely annoying when you run out of it. But it is very useful for... Um, it is really useful for just general home sewing, to be honest. So that's a metre square, and it's medium weight, so it pretty much just covers everything. Three ninety nine. Um, right, fabric stabiliser. Now this is iron on and tear away. So this is brilliant for machine embroidery. So when you're doing machine embroidery. Um, you need the fabric needs to be a certain weight otherwise it will pucker in the machine particularly if you're doing free motion um, and what I often do with my machine embroidery is I tension it in a hoop but you can't always do that particularly if you're doing machine embroidery on on a piece of fabric or maybe a ready-made cushion cover that you can't do but if you iron this on what you do is you press it onto the back of the fabric you do all your machine embroidery the fabric has got a really nice weight and stiffness to it now and then when you you finished you tear it away at the back so all that's left is the um, the stabilizer that you have sewn onto and everything around the edge is gone so that the fabric doesn't retain any of that stiffness but it gives it at the time so it's 349 90 by 50 centimeters absolutely brilliant for machine embroidery um, right heat and seal so this is the same as bonder web but so the um, the the trade no, the technical term is fusible web, but we often call it bonder web. But that's the Vlyseline project. Heat and seal is the hemline project. So if you want to do um, some applique where you want to bond two things together, then this is great. Now this one is called ultra, which means it's for much lighter fabric. Let me just check. Yes, so, ah, oh, right, now I know. So, Ultra is for thicker material. Ultra is the thicker one. Um, okay, and Light is for the thinner one. So, when you get Bonderweb, Bonderweb is just one thing. Well, it was only used for one. Whereas the Heat and Seal, you use the Ultra for thicker fabric. So, what it says, it's good for thicker material. It's got a greater bond strength and it has a medium stiffness so when you need that kind of thing this is because there's the there's the little table that tells you whether you should have light or ultra so if you want if you're doing like just a plique with a cotton fabric the light will be perfect if you're using heavier weight fabrics maybe you're appliqueing um, denim fabric or canvas or maybe you are sticking bonds together because it isn't just used for people um, it isn't just used for people, it's because I just read that. That's interesting. So it says for a strong bond to leave to cool overnight. I didn't realise that. So you use the wool setting, you then press it on in place, and then you peel off the paper backing, put it down, you guide the iron across it for 10 seconds, let it cool, and then if for a stronger bond you leave it to cool overnight. So I'm guessing therefore that the ultra is for better, for more permanent bonds. Um, and then the light one, this is pretty much the same as Bonderweb. Now, the size of this piece, 599, is 74 by 69 centimetres. So, if you want to have a go, if you don't want to buy the big roll of Bonderweb that we sell, and you want, you know, this is like a, almost a square piece, that's, that's a really good price. 599 for 74 by 69. Right. We need an iron, don't we? We do need, need an iron, and we've got water, which is even better. That Mark was using the iron. He was, he was showing how the steam works, and it all ran out. And it all ran out. Now, your iron, when you buy this, does come with a jug. But um, I've got a cup. 
let's get the the iron i feel like i want to put this on something so this is where's his base gone there it is can't have a show without the base so um this is a fab eye. Now, I showed it at 8 o'clock, but I know there's not many of you watched the whole time, so we're doing it again. This was the early bird. The original price is $34.99, which, for an iron of this quality and features, is a fantastic price. But because it's our early bird today, because it's brand new, we're reducing it to $29.99. Now, let me show you around. I can't... It's hard to say what to start with. I think... It's, I will talk you through the fantastic... The, the best feature of this is it's cordless because particularly it does a vertical steam sometimes you want to have the iron next to you on the sewing machine sometimes you want to go and you want to steam your roman blinds or you want to steam your curtains or a silk shirt or something because you don't want to press it you can use this cordless now it takes 25 seconds to heat up 20 that's amazing isn't it normally i put my iron on then go do some sewing and then come back again 25 seconds to heat up now if you want to use it as a normal cord so you don't want the recharge element you just use it like that it's normal and it lives in there as its little cradle but if you want to use it cordless on the back oh so ben has found it somewhere else on sale for 34.50 look at that on sale 34.50 and we've got it at 29.99 so Put the little switch, because the switch there with the cord coming out, we don't, we, we want cordless. Move it to the top and then it comes out and now it is a cordless iron. So you can take it round. When you need to um, charge it, it takes five seconds. And obviously the charge that it will hold will depend on the heat you're using and how much steam you're using, because obviously it will take more power. But it is a five second charge. Um, it's got, it's got steam, you can change the temperature and you can turn it off, which is really useful because with my iron, I have to turn it off on the wall. Um, it's, you can also lock it. So if you want to be able to carry it around on the stand for storage or whatever reason, you can lock it on there. Um, <clears throat> it has a 2,600 watt which means that's a lot of power. It gets very hot. So I gave it to Mark this morning and said, have a go with this. He said it gets very hot very quickly. It's fantastic for when you want to be doing that. I mean, 25 seconds and it's ready to go. It has a vertical shot of steam. So if you want to steam things upwards for removing creases, it's got that in there. Um, it has a very, very long cord and it's got a 360 degree rotating cord end which means you can get around all of those corners. <coughs> and it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful rose gold colour. It's lovely for sewing because it's got a really nice sharp point so you can really get into all of those collars and cuffs. And if you look at the base, ceramic base plate, which means it glides easily and is less likely to get things stuck on it. You've got a lot of large concentrated steam holes in the top which means that you're getting more steam in the areas you want them because when you're um, pressing things on this point, so maybe you're pressing some applique pieces into place, you need extra heat there, or you want to just get into the edge of a bottom of a cosmetic bag and press it, you've got more concentrated steam here. Whereas you've got a lovely, nice, smaller coverage of steam holes around the bottom, which is much better for an even distribution when you're using, because obviously it is not just a sewing iron, it has been developed for normal ironing as well. But it's also got a spray, so you can spray if you want a bit of extra. And then it's got um, the sort of shot, it's got the extra boost of steam on there as well. Fab, isn't it just lovely? Right, I'm going to turn it off and I'll put, lock, lock it back in place. But any questions, let me know. Should we do fabric? Ben's missing fabric. Now, what I've got here this time, because we've done loads of. Um, quilting fabric we've got dressmaking fabric because it's so difficult to find the right dressmaking fabric the right sort for specific patterns so we which one are we starting with which one is that one then it's not there oh, okay we haven't got the yellow one We'll get a picture instead. So that's a nice ochre sweatshirting fabric bundle. I haven't got that one. Can we choose another one? <laughs> Can
Can we have the cherry blossom one? Oh, so there's the ochre sweatshirting bundle. So there's three metres in that. So it's that love, lovely shade, really popular at the moment. Oh, we found it. It was in a big plastic bag. I don't know, it was hiding at the bottom of a trolley. Look, it's been found. <laughs> she puts a hooker in the corner. Somebody left it in the plastic bag. So this is your sweatshirt in fabric. So you've got smooth on one side, lovely fleecy on the inside, perfect for your sweatshirts, jogging bottoms, quite nice for bags as well when you want something, um, you want something that's quite thick and furry. Lovely for cushions, because obviously if you're making a sweatshirt with it, it's really nice on that side. But if you're making cushions, use the inside. Um, there's loads here. What is it, three meters? And um, let me find, does it say the width or do I need a tape measure? Now I had a tape measure earlier. What did I do with that? No, I had it earlier because Becky gave it to me. I don't know, I've lost it. Oh, and no, I found another one. This isn't, now there's, oh. Yeah, that was all the um, point turners are just fallen on the floor. I'll pick them up later. Um, so this is, 60 inches wide wow 60 inches and you're getting three meters so you've got that normal sweatshirt and then you've got the fleece that is a fantastic price 35.99 for a 60 inch that's 150 centimeter width absolutely loads of it oh the gray sweatshirt fabric that one was languishing in about oh this is nice this is like that is it what's it called sheep there's a name for this one isn't there not gray <laughs> gray no there's a name for this where it's that um uh, it's like a sheep like a fleece boucle or something like that anyway can you s there's only three of these so again this is three meters but it's got like the um it's like this sort of the, the sheep fleece, isn't it? So you've got just a plane on one side. But I love that. I mean, honestly, just not just this is obviously a dressmaking fabric, but lovely for homewares. Lovely if you wanted to make some big floor cushions or bean bags or something. Sherpa. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. I knew I just could not get the word Sherpa. That's what it's called. Three meters. It's a lovely um, bluey gray as well. Be nice for cushions and things. <laughs> Scarlet is could, right. What's the code? AGL. Is there another? Is there any more bags? Is it Scarlet? No, that's grey. No more bags. No. We've got a picture. So that's a three meter scarlet gabardine fabric bundle. Oh, I don't think I've got that one. Mm -hmm. AV, no. I think you've got a different list to me, Ben, because we've got different things. So right, Becky's coming, she's coming in. She's going to sort you out. You've got a different list to us. XBLJ32, because I like this one. <laughs> oh, that is true. Yes, we might have different codes. Oh, dear. <laughs> Can we go by pictures? This one's Cherry Blossom. <laughs> have you found this one meter and a half yes okay this is your favorite charlie so this is a um jersey one and a half meters this is lovely for t-shirts or um, summer wrap dresses. So you've got a metre and a half. Let me just, that's really, it's a nice, um, it's a lightweight 
um, t-shirting but it's not it's not super thin and lightweight it would be lovely for t-shirt making we have a few patterns actually have a look on the website for t-shirts but this is beautiful and th again not the easiest fabric to find um, that is 140 centimeters wide isn't that lovely So isn't that lovely? $19.99. That's a really good price for a metre and a half. And obviously that's going to make several t-shirts. Or if um, I'm thinking that it would be really nice for a little wrap dress for the summer, metre and a half. Right, can we have this one next? Um, it's lovely. It's it's like a visco chalet. Okay, so actually this would have been ideal for um, the, top, the dress that Mark just made because it is like a viscose. It's lovely, this one. So how much do you get in, in this one? Two and a half metres. There's only three left of it. Um, let me show you the width. It's, it's a wide fabric. Look, look at the drape on that. So that's lovely. It's really soft. It is a viscose. Beautiful for your summer dresses. So if you've um, if you've had any seen any of the patterns that we've had early, because these were so popular, these fabrics. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful. And the background of it is a lovely steely grey blue, and then you've got these little sprigs of white pumpkin and black flowers. Really like this. And there's quite. Well, how much is in that? A two and a half. That's good. That's lovely fabric. And look, you can see when I give it a little waft, it's got a really nice air and drape to it. Just settles down. If you did that with fa cotton fabric. That's that one. Um, now I've got some plain fabrics. I've got a red. Oh, is this the Scarlet Gabardine? ZHR598. Okay. Is that the one we were looking for? Yay! Three metres of the Scarlet Gabardine. It's not the Scarlet Pimpernel. I'm just... Yes, that is so bright, isn't it? Lovely. Again, you know, it's got a really, really nice drape to it. I'm just seeing what the width is. <clears throat> Lovely for dresses, blouse, even summer trousers, lightweight jackets. Because that's... It's a, a lovely, it's quite a nice weight, but it's got a really good drape to it. There's only four of these left, so limited. This one is, um, ooh, my tape measure's twiddled around. Uh, I'll go, yeah, 150 centimetres wide, so 60 inches width. So three metres there. I'll tell you what it's good for, because that's such a good price. You know when you're doing like, a bit of fancy dress and you need like, to make loads of red kings capes and things for that bundle, that's brilliant. So if you're having to make um, clothes for something like that. Um, we've got the same fabric, but in pink. This is the Cerise Gabardine. We're on a roll now. We've got it worked out since Becky stormed in, sorted them out. Mm, she sorted them out, these boys, honestly. Yeah, it's all about labels, so now we know what we're doing. So this is the Cerise. Right, there we go. <laughs> the, um, this is a great colour, isn't it? It's like, um, it's lipstick, isn't it? Fuchsia lipstick. I love that. That would... That would look very nice, actually, um, as a dress, because it's a beautiful colour. It's like real hot pink, great for the summer. Beautifully accessorised with black as well. So if you've got a little black cardi, pair of black sandals, perfect. No, Charlie, you don't have a little black cardi. <laughs> right, and then we've got the next fabric, ASR538. So what is this one? Is this gabardine? No, no, that's this one. Ah, 
Ah, you've got that one wrong. That's that one over there. This is a gabardine in like um, a peachy mink. Mink! Mink, yes, because I was trying to think what the colour is. Mink is a good colour. It's like a peachy, rusty colour. But it is mink. So, again, you've got three metres. It's 150 centimetres, 60 inches wide. That's a very flattering colour as well because it's very soft. It looks lovely a lot against most skin tones. It's a really soft, a warm colour. And I always think um, it just... Sometimes it depends on your skin tone and your hair colour, but when you wear warm colours, it's always very flattering. I always think it looks a bit classy as well. There are only six of this one. Only six. Fifty-one ninety-nine for three metres. Only six left. Right, I've got two more fabrics, so now I can do the red one that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. This one... This is like a cotton chambray, isn't it? Oh, this is nice. It is a cotton chambray, but you know how we always think of chambray as a colour, but chambray isn't. It's a fabric. It's a cotton fabric, but slightly lighter weight. Lighter weight than your quilting weight cotton, but not like a lawn. So it drapes really well. Very nice for summer clothing, or, I mean, you can use it for homewares as well. But this is, in the same way that chambray has blue one way and white the other. Can't remember which warp and which is where. The red one has got red one one way and white the other. It's lovely for shirting. Very nice for blouses and lightweight things because it is lighter than a quilting cotton but thicker than a lawn. It's a lovely fabric to use and again ideal for using for linings um, or outers if you were using it for bag making or something but you would need to stabilise this a bit. Um, and then the final one we've got is the grey chambray. And I do have no others other than that. There's no polka dots. No, the polka dots didn't arrive. Grey. Oh, the, well, actually, it's called black, I guess, because you've got black one way and white the other. So this is your black yarn day dyed cotton chambray, two and a half metres. That's lovely. And I like the fact, because it's got the, the colours one way and then the other, you get a really nice effect to it. You've almost got a bit of a slub in it. And you don't normally see chambray in other colours, but it is lovely. It's very, it's lovely for, um, for shirting. It's quite nice actually for lining because it's a little bit different, isn't it? Um, where is my quilt? Oh, there he is. Right, we had, thank you, Becky, we had a lovely quilt kit at 8 o'clock this morning, but obviously we, we often forget that we, we put things on now and go, well, that's it, everyone's watching all day, and, and they're not, so we put it back again. This is a beautiful quilt kit and is an extremely good price for the size of the um oh my lord look how neat that is i gave this to becky in piles and it's i know i'm not going to do that again i'm going to get it out just the same and it's come back really neat so the design features 20 different fat quarters it's called the nova star quilt designed by Be megan buchanan and it features the meander collection from an anila hui now this is a fantastic prize the um Quilt measures 54 by 68, and I said you've got 20 fat quarters in it. It's easy. It features flying geese and half square triangles. There is one block, and you just repeat it all the way around. The instructions are fab because they, although the kit is for this 54 by 68, the instructions have um, measurements and instructions to make three different sizes, the crib, the throw, or the full king size bed quilt. So what you can do is you can make it using this, or if you want to make it bigger, you can use some of your own plain fabrics. But this fabric is gorgeous. Anila Hui, who designed it, is very inspired by nature and walks and all her meanders. Well, it's called meanders. Um, it's lovely. I'm going to keep it folded. So we've got this lovely horse design in ginger. We've got the horse design in peach. Love the fox, the fox and the fox glove design in grey. I mean, you can see, look, how these colours go beautifully together. I love the text fabric. 
that's really nice um, and then we get spotty fabrics again we've got shades of ginger we've got foxes in pumpkin spots in pumpkin the, there's enough fabric in here to make the whole of the top of the quilt and bind it and the binding is in this um, navy spot um, there isn't the fabric obviously for the backing and, and the wadding but everything else for the top but look at the colour palette now so we've got the horses in this um, lighter blue we've got um, gingham in blue this lovely cross hatch in blue and in rust more foxes in peach little spots but this is like a very sort of pale palest grey background with little spots all over it and we've got more gingham and spots and horses and then you have this is your binding fabric that's in there you've got pumpkin fabric plain because a lot of that is using the borders and then lots of this it's the palest shade of grey it's not bright white it's just very pale because it's it suits all the fabrics, it holds it all together. So isn't it beautiful? Look at this pile of fabrics and you can see the colour range in here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, this should be 139.99, which for the size of the quilt and the amount of fabric you get, I think is fantastic. But we're doing the special offer today, and only today, it's 99.99. That price will go up again at midnight. And this is all the fabric you're getting inside. And then let me show you the, um, the box so you can see what the quilt looks like it's gorgeous it, and it's and i've read through the instructions it really is flying geese half square triangles with some sashing but it has a lovely homely warm nature feel to it and because of the way it's cut here and there you'll just see little pops of you know there'll be a little fox a little horse you'll get a bit of a check a bit of a spot but the colors are beautiful aren't they they're soft and gentle and warm and what a beautiful traditional quilt as well um, and you get the full instructions in here as well now we've seen these instructions um, on a website for $13 just on their own now obviously you can then use these instructions and it does say it's fat quarter and scrap friendly so if you want to make it again use your scraps if you want to make the quilt bigger so it's so easy because in the instructions it gives you layout guides and you can just use some plain fabric or choose anything from your stash. So look, there's for the there's for the throw size, which is the one you get in here. It explains about how many blocks by how many blocks. If you're making the um, king size bed, it shows you how many blocks. So it's very easy to upsize. It also tells you what how much fabric you need for the three different sizes so in this you are getting the pattern for three different sizes of quilt and you're getting all these fat quarters and the plain fabric oh yes yeah, so ben found on etsy someone have made this and it's 378 pounds 74 so if i was you get the kit right get the kit sell it on etsy sell the um the finished quilt that's amazing isn't it well, of course, it, I actually think for the time you spend on it, I think that's quite a good price. So there you go. What well, it is beautiful though, isn't it? What a lovely kit. Anyway, the, that price of 99.99 will only be till midnight. So you've got till now at midnight to check out, obviously. Put it in your basket, get it checked out. Obviously, I can't guarantee we will have any left because once they're gone, they're gone. But if we do have any left, um, then the price will go up again. So, um, right, I'm going to, I won't, I haven't unfolded any of the fabric, so that's something. I'm going to gently move them to one side. Right, let's go to the um, cave design wall, in case anyone's wondering what this grey curtain is hanging up behind me. Because um, Ben lowered the price. Now, the cave design wall, have I got, is the box somewhere? Becky, oh look at her, She's, she reads my mind, she knows what I'm going to say. Um, so this is designed and used and developed by Cave for all of your things. So it's actually a brushed cotton, a grey brushed cotton with a white grid line printed on it. The grids are printed at two and a half inches intervals and then what you use it for, you can see from the photo, you just stick pieces of fabric to it so you can then easily 
decide how you want your finished quilt to look. So you, so you can put all the different fabrics on it because it's a brush cotton, it sticks. You can move them around. Now, normally, what was the price for this before? So, because Ben did a special deal for us today. Right, it should have been twenty seven ninety nine. Um, the size of it is one hundred and fifteen by one hundred and fifty centimeters. But as a Ben special off today, he just took the P and P off. So, if you want to buy it and save your P and P today and today only, it's twenty four pounds and four pence. We have read out earlier loads of reviews, loads and loads of you use it all the time. You put your, you've made, maybe you've made some half square triangles, maybe you've made that quilt. You want to decide what order to put them in. Brilliant value for money and so useful. Um, if that was before the PMP came off, I'm just going to get, I've got some little bits of fabric here. A little snip just to show that it actually does stick because I've put the charm packs away now. So maybe I want, you do have to, you do need to have it on a wall behind because you need to push it on. So maybe I want that one there, but obviously these will probably be squares of fabric and I want that one there. And then they just stick on. And then maybe I want um, another piece of fabric. And this is actually cave, so that's quite good, isn't it? So I'm going to put this one, maybe I think, oh, well, I wonder what it would look like if I put that in as a board around it. So that's just a small idea for you. Obviously, what you would do is you would have lots of squares and patches and you'd put them all over it and then you can have a look at it. You can take a photo of it. It's very easy to move around. So if you've made blocks or you've just got pieces of fabric and you want to decide how to create it, it just sticks. And obviously, it's brushed cotton. It doesn't really, it's not sticking, sticking, but it just stays on enough for you to to be able to hang up also for quilt assembly it is brilliant so you put them all together so maybe I, I made a quilt with half square triangles it was a rainbow one in it had like 10 blocks in each row and then there were 10 rows so I had a hundred of these squares and I spent ages sorting out the order and then I had to take a photo I had to pile them up but what I could have done is just stuck them all on the design wall take off one row at a time sew it together and then put it back and then sew the next row together so it's really good for quilt assembly sake but that's our special price basically it's free p and p because ben's taking the 395 off but that's only for today because he's a rascal he is he is he is um right what should we do next we do book i love the name of this book so this is called, well, you will be able to sew your own clothes by the end of this book. It's by Julia Uzor, who was the winner of the Sewing Bee three, three years, maybe, four, can't remember. I remember, yes, but three or four years ago. And what a great claim, but it's a brilliant book because she is fantastic at dressmaking. Um, and I remember when she launched the book, she spent a lot of time working on it. So it goes all the way through. Now I love the way it starts on things like using fabric, the right fabrics, how to take measurements, because that's something we get, we often assume what our measurements are. And then she tells you, right, so this is the size, how that she's graded it. So you decide what size you are, how to blend patterns. I mean, it's got everything, full bust adjustment, low bust adjustment, how to sew, edge stitching, stay stitching. There's loads and loads of different terms and different ways, sewing a seam. So this is all the basic technical stuff, how to put bias binding on, um, glossary of terms. So that's all the technical stuff. Now, projects. This is great. See this, the QR code, scan here to download patterns for all of the projects. So take your phone, hover it over there, download them. You've got all of the patterns. You can then print them out or whatever size you want and you've got them forever. So these are all the patterns. So once you've printed them out, we've got, the, we've got a top. And she's made it into a dress as well. I like that, that's nice, isn't it? Um, tiered skirt, a sweatshirt, that's nice, that would look good in our sweatshirt fabric wouldn't it? Um, a pinafore dress, oh that's nice, I love a pinafore, but how unusual, I like the, um, the cross on the back, but I think it's great that you can download all the patterns, print them all out and stick them together. I have this book, it's worth its weight in gold from Collected Time. Oh, brilliant, thank you very much for that view. It really does make a difference. I mean, I'm going through it now thinking, I think this is worth its weight in gold. Have you made the pinafore though? Because mm, I love that. 
it, that's really good. It's lovely to have your recommendations. Look at the dress. That's beautiful, isn't it? Because you, you lot are the experts and you wouldn't say that otherwise. It really has got so much detail and all of these patterns. So $15.99. Oh, look, you've got a little jacket. Um, little dress. A wrap dress. It's quite, you know, it's, it's all quite sort of traditional as well, in that it's not really old fashioned, but it's the kind of garments that will just last. Timeless, that's the word. So I, I'll, give, I'll give that one to Ben. Timeless. Oh, and then we've got a little bit of upcycling on the back. Make a shirt into a skirt. Very important at the moment, isn't it? Add flutter sleeves to a dress or top. That's nice because I've got a few sleeveless tops I don't really like. But she shows you how to put the sleeves in. That's actually quite useful, isn't it? Oh, I that ready for anything. Make your old jeans into a tote bag. Perfect. Seems I collect old jeans. That's great for me. That's lovely, isn't it? Scrap fabric belt. Oh, there is so much. A little headband. There's so much in here, isn't there? And then you've got... Oh, I don't want to rip that. But those are the patterns. So does that mean all the patterns are in there? All the patterns are included. Right, so all the patterns are in here that you obviously trace off, but you can also download them as well. Oh, because you might want to just, because obviously you probably have to trace these off because they're probably double-sided. But if you want to print them off, you can. What a fantastic book. I want the pinnacle. I like that. I think you'd look lovely in that, Ben. Um, should we do one? Should we do another book? Jules, Sewing for the Soul. So, no, I love Jules' stuff. I've made lots of her. Um, Jules Fallon, I've made lots of her clothes. And I love this because it's not just sewing, it's got other stuff in it as well. Yeah, you're, like, you're going to like this. Ben hasn't seen this one. It's done... It's... Um, you are going to love this book. It's done in season. So we've got a shirt dress. Perfect for the spring, isn't it? Still a bit cold. You need it slightly thick, but it's got um, short sleeves. You just never know what's going to happen. So the shirt dress, everything you need. I mean, and if you've worked from any of Jules's designs, you'll know. Little t-shirt, because you need a little t-shirt, don't you? And it's um, a woven one, not a jersey one. Um, with a bit of embroidery on. Lovely. Lovely. Then, look, Ben. Mm, I knew, I said you'd love this. Chocolate orange cake and homemade mocha latte. See? And, look, I know, because that's what happens in the spring, doesn't it? And then in the summer, in the summer we're going to make some palazzo pants. And then we're going to make a little shared summer top using that shearing elastic that um, Mark was doing earlier. And then when we've done that, we're going to have a little cami and shorts. And then we're going to make a lemon drizzle cake and with a little glass of elderflower cordial. Yeah, this is Ben's got this book now. Right, how excited are you for autumn then? So autumn, we've got an oversized shirt. Over, I love that. That's really nice, isn't it? And look, I mean, I'm, I'm flicking through this quickly because I haven't got long left. But you can see the quality of the um, diagrams and the walkthroughs and the instructions. And, and her stuff is brilliant. Classic T-shirt. And upcycle blanket made from old jumpers. Then spice sugar crust apple cake and hot cider nog. Mm. Look at that. Oh, that's that's lovely. Right, we're just we're gonna have to do winter. Winter coat, we've got to do it really fast. We're never gonna get to the recipe because we've only got two minutes left. Drawstring trousers, you need those for um, Christmas stocking, obviously. Fruit cake with hidden surprises and mulled wine. Right. <laughs> there we go. What a great book. Anyway, I've only got two minutes left. So um, I, haven't, I haven't got through everything. Please do go on the website. It's all on there. Sobinstreet.com. Click on Watch Live and scroll down. Uh, thank you for joining me and Mark and Ben and Charlie and Becky today. We've had a fab day, haven't we? Some of it's gone a bit mad, but we've had a great day. Thank you for all your petticoat comments. Love that. It's snowing down south, being my favourite. 
Now, tomorrow, you have very complex menus. It's going to take me ages to read this. So, it is a snap clearance. They've decided the shelves are too full. So, I think Stuart's in tomorrow, isn't it, Stuart? Stuart's in tomorrow. <coughs> and it's clearance, 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 clearance. Of all different sorts, we're going to have... Um, Patterns, prints, books, fabric, everything. Loads and loads of clearance tomorrow because we just need a bit of shelf. Just, it's just a snap last minute one. So if you fancy a little bargain tomorrow, please do tune in. Um, have we got the menu for Hobby Maker? They haven't sent it? Well, who knows then? At one o'clock, they will be moving our Hobby Maker. It'll be something to do with card baking and paper craft, I should imagine. And there'll be a bit of sticking and gluing don't know anyway but it will be fun i can guarantee that thank you so much for joining me today i've had a lovely time i will see you back here mm, can't remember what the one day next week can't remember which one um have a great weekend and happy sewing